<laughs> Just in time to catch the start of the coffee stream. Hey, sorry. I was fucking around with the lights. How are you doing, friend? Uh, and Bacon, thank you for 200. How's it going? I have tiny stories and an excellent game to show you today. I'm so fucking... I am legit excited. Not, I am excited to announce. I am actually excited. Oh, you're doing adventures on the Sea of Thieves today? Feckin' cool. Uh, I gotta wait till uh, Friday to finally stab stitch a gym in the genitals. But not in a fun way. But it's happening. But we didn't get to do it last week, so don't tell me anything about the, uh, the venture. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> just jumping out. How are you doing? Uh, Bacon, Ultrazini, Night Vale, and Stepper Gen. What, old oh, friend? <laughs> How are you doing? And the retro jokes will make sense soon. I promise. Ehrman, hello, Watto friend. What's been going on? Uh, <laughs> so I had a, a full technological breakdown of systems yesterday, which was funny. Uh, and the planning for the Great Bezos heist continues. Um, what I've started doing is I'm listing all the people who are helping as like my heist crew. So it's genuinely starting to feel like a, a cheesy heist movie. Oh no! Uh, Mega Boss, I'm uh, sorry that happened. Remember, it's always okay to scuttle and change servers. No one can take anything from you in Sea of Thieves that you don't let them. Wait, no, that's not what I mean. Anyway, Mega Boss, uh, I hope it gets sorted. And I hope you're doing good. Uh, I keep looking at. Um, Title, I uh, not title painting at uh, last stand. So I've got a few more. If I can finish it like four more times, and I've done every achievement in that game. Uh, Eremon just finished uh, Return to Monkey Island. Oh, wait, cool. Oh, nice. I I'm looking forward to doing that one, Eremon, but I think we'll probably end up doing it as a. I think we'll probably end up doing it as a stream together, like end of this year, next year. Because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, you know what I mean? Ah, A mega boss that's feckin' lovely. Biggs, Watto and welcome, hello, hello. <laughs> Bacon, how could you spoil such things? Stuff and things and sailing? How could you do this to me? <laughs> but how are you lot doing? Let's... Well, uh, we'll wait till uh, most of the crew is in before I start story time and whatnot. Fearless, it was fucking cool seeing you last night. Though I did feel a little bit bad for that. Uh, that student kid was clearly not ready for our enthusiasm about Gendoms. And Caffeine? What ho from across town? Hello, hello? Brian, do you think you could please warn me before you're about to light our righteous way? Oh, God! <laughs> Alright, fine! Whatever, man! Uh, but yeah, I have stories. Uh, there are adventures. Um, and game news seems pretty calm today. So, that's not terrible. Uh, there's a crap load of sales and bundles going on right now. Um, I don't know if it's still ongoing. But uh, there was a sale of weird, interesting Japanese games on Steam. Uh, so I spent like five or six bucks last night, picked up a few uh, a few bangers. And um, like Humble is absolutely jumping today. A 
far too many emotes. If you couldn't tell by the, uh, the screen glare of leaping between sites that do and do not have dark mode. Uh, if somehow Vermintide 2's bundle wasn't enough, they're doing a Payday 2 bundle. Which, it's just a thousand years of content. Ah, oh, no, so Caffeine, we didn't uh, traumatize a, a, a poor Babu. Uh, I went to the um, the Seattle Indies mixer last night. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it, so I didn't make any, like, grand plans. But, like, the stream yesterday was cracking. The game was amazing. And I was, I was teetering on the fence about whether or not to go. And then, yeah, ended up careening forward and had a great time. I uh, saw a bunch of the uh, the Seattle Game Dev crew, caught up with everybody, had some great conversations with people. I always feckin' love going. So, it was real nice. It was real nice. Um, but yeah, uh, what we are talking about was um, uh, there was a, uh, a student looking to get into more of the programming side of games who uh, approached Fearless to talk about C-sharp stuff. Uh, and then I went over to chat with Fearless because I hadn't talked to him all evening. And yeah, this this kid was not ready for us. <laughs> Though the uh, uh, the uh, one day producer of video games was. And that was real cool. Mm. Sorry, where are my manners? Uh, so, Shadows of Life. What I would welcome. <laughs> So, Quasi, that would be feckin' cool. I see it kind of like a Calvin and Hobbes style. It's like a, like a bunch of kids all dressed as Vikings. And I'm like, alright, let me tell you about the games industry. Uh, I met another expat last night uh, who's looking to get work out this way. So, I was chatting about, like, all the surprise bullshit about, uh, you know, emigrating to the US and stuff like that. Are we cool? Uh, Big, uh, sorry, friends. Uh, jumping back into chat, uh, Big says they're about to start making a series about Magic the Gathering, which I know some of you are very big fans of. Uh, where Bigs breaks down like meta, uh, MTG decks, and play it in rank to see how it goes. That's fucking cool. So yeah, so caffeine. Did we traumatize a student? Possibly, but they took the initiative to be in not only in that space but to uh, survive it. So props to him. Um, I just, I, I realized I was being very because I was excited to see everybody and that that momentum definitely carried through into conversation. Um, and we, we ended up back on one of my favorite topics, which was GDC. So we chatted about that for a whole bunch. I was fucking great. Uh, and as I was always saying to uh, the lovely Mother Hubbard who came in on on time, um, we have made more steps towards the Great Bezos heist. I have a, I have another heister on the crew. Hello, River. Yes. River's come to hang out with us today to watch me fail, Solzy and Wise. It's hello, big girl. River the Famous. Yeah, I've still got my Shinsen IO uh, manual on the feckin' desk. Uh, it's too big to put anywhere. Wait, did I show you all this? Um, so basically, back when uh, Exapunks came out, which is one of Zaktronics' bangers, uh, you could buy a physical copy of the in-game zines. Uh, if you haven't seen Exapunks, it's meant to like, evoke like the feel of like 90s hacking. Like, you know, reading zines with all the exploits of how to bust things open and reprogram them and stuff like that. It isn't directly that, but it's close to it. Um, and I found a site online that let me buy a couple of those. And they also had the Shinzen IO manual, which is this thing here. Which is like a, a fake, like, instruction booklet 
for uh, programming stuff inside, uh, programming different chips inside Shinzen. And I feckin' love Zaktronics games, and I'm a sucker for physical books of in-game stuff. So, the problem is, there's no, it, it, there's no way to put it. It's just, it's the wrong size for everything. <laughs> William Amos, excited to see Fenders in ah. person, perhaps at extreme levels thereof. Say it ain't so. I'm sorry, Bacon. I cannot deny the uh, the accusations that have been put before me. Yes, I do get incredibly excited when I get to hang out with both Longshipian friendos and games industry friendos. Um, I, I don't know how to break this to you. I, I The enthusiasm is real. Uh, oh, so Mega Boss, are you working on your uh, your your Gundam entry? Um, I I got to see the first of the Gundam entries today, and it is fucking incredible. Like, even if you're not making stuff for Sun uh, for Saturday, don't miss it because there's so many bangers. There's so many bangers. Find some more tunes. Uh, you know what? I, I just fancy some smooth jams before we get started. If that's cool. Uh, Mega Boss. So uh, between, hey, humble store purchase made for twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. Whoever that was, thank you. Uh, although it does seem like River is able to de detect the dramatic duck. <laughs> Read into that how you will. Um, no, but seriously, whoever that was, thank you. I know it's a pain in the ass using partner links and all those actual, like those extra steps of Fafamancy. So I do appreciate it, yo. Because you get video game and I get to eat some more. <laughs> um... Yeah, oh, feckin' nice. Also, Earl, how are you doing, friend? Well, so and welcome back. Hello, hello. Um, but yeah, so, my, uh, my funny story... <laughs> my funny story from last night was... Um, so, I have a monthly phone bill. Uh, I pay it manually because that way I can kind of keep track of where all the, the money and stuff is going. Uh, that way I don't end up... This is the irony of the story. I don't end up with, like, you know, automatic payments failing and then I suddenly don't have, you know, phone signal or what have you. Everything has been very hectic in my life. Outside of stream stuff, it's been full on. But I'm surviving. We're okay. However, it appears that in... No, this is not cutting the mustard. Mustard is uncut. This is this is this is cutlass mustard. Better. And I am a sucker for the Final Fantasy jam. What can I say? Okay, so I head out to the Seattle Indies thing last night, and I was I was in transport. I was in transit to location when I was suddenly made aware of the fact that I had forgotten to pay my phone bill. And I realized I had no methodology for checking accounts, sorting anything, that I was entirely reliant on the internet. And entirely reliant on the internet to convey this very means to other people. So I I had to I had to offline raw dog life uh, as I was heading over to the Seattle Indies yesterday. Let me tell you, it's not good. It's a mixed bag. I'm I'm a very connected person. No, I was paranoid that it had gotten bounced because like my card wasn't working or something like that, but I had no way to check. Thankfully, it all got sorted, but I just kept running through this scenario of like uh, of everything bad happening in Cascade as I'm careening towards uh, a hangout with the rest of the Seattle lot. Mm. All right, so jumping back, jumping back. Uh, so Mega Boss, uh, between now and Saturday, or I mean as late as Saturday if you want. Uh, send me pictures of your mech. 
send me the three best pitchers you've got. All right. If you send me more than three, I'll pick the three best. Uh, and we'll go from there. I mean, Lamelot, I've become reliant. I am, I am chronically online, which is a good thing. But when it's taken away by means beyond my controls, I, I experience the fear. I guess it's more of a short story than a funny story. So, video game news-wise, not too, too much going on, which again, is good. Uh, in the games industry, some days no news is good news. Uh, Zalavir has announced that there is a game coming out, um, a surprise game launching on October 25th, which I have no idea about. None at all. <laughs> um, and Netflix has announced their intention to move into game streaming, which... Yeah, <laughs> From what I'm reading, they have their head on straight about it, so might be interesting. I mean, for those of you that haven't had a chance to try the uh, NVIDIA service, that's very good. So, this could be a banger. Um, it was quite fun that the, uh, the Netflix uh, game streaming announcement put a bunch of nice clear broadsides at Stadia's sinking corpse, which was entertaining. <laughs> Earl? Nice. Uh, and sorry, what Earl was saying is that uh, the Humble Bundle thing they picked up, the Proc the Dramatic Duck, uh, that's Payday 2 plus uh, 68 DLC packs, which, if you're keeping score, makes a nice 69 item bundle. Nice, nice, nice. If you pay at least 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, I'm in two minds about it because there's a few of those DLCs I don't have, but I haven't gone back. Um, Payday 2 is a little impenetrable. Um, in the position I'm in, which is, I played a lot of it. Right, what's my, what is my fucking played hours in Payday? Payday 2 played hours, 100 hours. Uh, so I've played... I played a lot, a lot, but not as much as uh, a few friendos who've gone hard. And there's so much content. Now, you all know the story that, like, Payday 2 was the game brought out of retirement to save Starbreeze, and it succeeded. Like... It's a format and a formula that people like and people enjoy. I just, I know that I'd need to either start playing with some green beans or I'd need to find people who have played too much and are coming back. Um, but no, Payday 2 is a fascinating game to study, even if you don't play it. Like, a simple concept, cooperative game, that is so wildly successful as to be able to bail a company out from the brink of death. Like, feckin' yo. They've worked with famous musicians, they've worked with movie franchises, Hollywood actors, and they've made it work. Now, that's probably because, rather than trying to include famous people and famous elements, they essentially make those a selling point. So characters to play as, uh, character packs to purchase, etc. Though the concept of a heist definitely gets um, creative the further down the hole you go. But yeah, there, there really isn't a title like it out there that's survived as hard as it did. Uh, and they did manage to come back from the um, uh, the microtransactions route, which was really good to see. Um, like I think they still have... God, I think there's still uh, items available for, for trade and sale. I haven't even checked the marketplace these days. Let's 
sorry, here's me trying to check Steam listing stuff. Sorry. <laughs> I know, drastically exciting. How are you all doing, friends? It is lovely to see you. Uh, today we are going to be playing The Last Hero of Nostragaia, which was one of my absolute standout bangers from PAX West this year. And I've been legit looking forward to sharing it with you since. So, this should be fucking brilliant. There we go. Hello and welcome. Red Burning Dragon, did I say hello? I hope I did. God, here's me trying to be a, a better person on this Twitch.televisión, and then I start going into my own little, like, memory hole of days spent with uh, Payday 2. Um, Payday 2 is kind of a beloved mess of mine. Uh, I got very, very into it when I was at uh, the Creative Assembly, and I was playing a lot with international friends, so... The kind of peeps who would be up in the wee hours when I wanted to play video games. <laughs> Shadows of Life says they're totally not nervous about the game they're DMing tonight. Why would you ask? And Wolfcred, thank you for filling the pine glass. I mean, Shadows, the great thing about um, running a tabletop campaign is players can't see behind the screen. Like, be calm, be cool, let no one know that you're completely making everything up on the spot. Because in the end, the experience is what matters. It's it's kind of it's fascinating that in a in a way similar to video games, in that it doesn't matter how janky or hacked your code is behind the scenes, if the user's experience is good, you're you're solid, you're sound. You know, in a DD campaign, it doesn't matter if you improv an entire session, make everything up, and all the roles you're doing behind the scenes are completely fake. If the players have a great time, you win. It's less less stressful than karaoke. Ah, <laughs> oh, Wolfcrad, that's some that's some glorious layering there. Okay, yeah. Sorry for sorry for staring off into the middle distance about uh, Payday Two. Um, when I went to work in Improbable, it was our lunchtime game, and it was a lovely level playing field. So like, I was playing with my direct boss, but also one of our cool art peoples, and then we'd kind of have like a rotating fourth. And yeah, doing heists, making cash. Oh, it's feckin' good. It's just, it's been one of those games that's kind of been there for me, you know? I'm not saying it's perfect, I'm not saying it's brilliant or inspired. From a business standpoint, it's brilliant and inspired. But from a personal standpoint, it's just been so interesting. Um, I tried to jump back into it, what, last year? Because we were going to see about getting Fiona into it, like, because Fiona and I do enjoy co-op shooters together. I know, how cliche. <laughs> the couple who shoots together. But, I thought it would be an interesting game to get stuck into, but I forgot how impenetrable it is for first-time players. Like, at this point, it's, it's MMO tiers for the amount of content in there. Ah, Wolfcrad. What a, a gorgeously decorated pint. Blazing dump. Ah! Gop here a dumpy, gop here a dumpy, gop here a dumpy. Well, not too violently shaken, but uh, yeah, Mega Boss representing House Chaos there. And the four houses. Order. Chaos. Calm. Oh, and a, a lovely little uh, shamrock topper there. <laughs> Always makes me laugh. Oh, sorry. I, I was a bartender for a hot minute a thousand years ago. You know, just I, I was never a good bartender. Uh, you know, I worked at Young's Pub in London to make rent. It is what it is. Um, but uh, I still remember one of the senior bartenders trying to teach me how to draw shamrock on a pint. Uh, of Guinness, because 
Pouring a pint of Guinness is a three step process if you do it right. Like, side pint, pour, settle. Sorry, pour side until certain point. Let it rest, let it breathe. Then, finish off the topper and try with the last pints of the parts of the pour to draw a shape in the top. If you do it right, you get a little shamrock on there. It's fucking great. The problem is, problem is, <laughs> um, that <laughs> if you get the measurements incorrect, one side of the shamrock can look much larger than the others uh, due to the timing. And when I proceeded to hand my uh, my mentor, my senior bartender, uh, my attempt at a Guinness pint, that I I thought I'd done a good job, uh, he proceeded to question why I'd drawn a cock and balls on his drink. I was not a good bartender. Uh, I worked um, uh, kind of a, a chain old man pub in the UK. Uh, Young's is a brand of ale. I mean, shit, it might not be anymore. It's been a thousand years. But it basically just used to involve pint glass, pull, 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 done. That was my job. I had a really strong arm for a bit. Yeah. Oh, uh, so Fearless, the game developer icon uh, is basically you have to be uh, credited to a title in the back end of Steam. At the back end of Steam. Uh, in the back end of Twitch. So when someone uh, sets up a. Uh, I don't know if it's an account or a, a, a skew or what have you. In the Twitch developer backend, you can list Twitch accounts as part of it. So it's harder for big companies to do that, but yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, so Wolfgrad, like, I've never worked a kitchen, so I had no idea, but... No, that sounds feckin', that sounds on point. A little bit of colour, just to break it up. It's a professional. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't work in um, the service industry for too, too long. Uh, I got fired from that pub, because uh, I took the fall for somebody's feck up. Unknowingly, I was I was used as a, as a scapegoat of sorts. That's my scapegoat noise. Um, uh, one of the other bartenders let a, a huge tab go, and um, <laughs> told it, uh, told management it was my fault, and so they just got rid of me. Uh, then I would get a job in film and television uh, as a runner, and the rest, I mean, you know that story, back to front. Worked film and telly, moved into kind of like the tech support side of that, and then ended up... Um, yeah, then ended up in picture games. Ugh. And now somehow I am hanging out with you lot on the daily talking about picture games. Do not ask me how we came into this. Do not ask me how this came about. Willimus. 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 Favour 6, how are you doing, you feckin' terror? Uh, thank you kindly for... Bleak, 36 months. Feels like you found us like two seconds ago. Time is, time is very spongy right now. <laughs> anyway, how are you doing, friend? Come on in, come on in. Oh. <laughs> There's too many good games. It was interesting though, last night I was um, talking to peeps about um, like varying uh, publishers and whatnot. Uh, a few friendos who've been on the publishing side of video game stuff are kind of looking to get out of it. Um, the ones that have had a hard time are like, it's very stressful and bad. And the ones that have had a good time of it are like, kind of bored with it. Which was interesting. Sorry about that. Need to stop getting uh, distracted.
Oh, no worry. Uh, to many, I would say... That is odd. <laughs> that is odd. But, Faber 6, that sounds feckin' cool. And, um, see, this is the problem with... A lot of you have different Twitch names and Discord names, so I'm never sure always, like, who specifically I'm chatting to, but, um, uh, someone was suggesting, a, an Alton Towers mission in the future, and it's like, I can't even see past, like, the end of this week. <laughs> the idea of going back and being able to show people, especially, because I spent a lot of time in the area, like, around there, in the, the London commute zone. God, I don't even know if the hub and places like that are still going, but... Sorry, I'll close the door. Because apparently these wankers found a sledgehammer. <laughs> hey, and secretly, Robin, like if uh, if that's going to be your sphere, then feck yeah, I'll send him across. <laughs> I mean, shadows. That's feckin' cool. Um, sorry, it's it's one of the challenging parts of doing this professionally is <laughs> when people's usernames, Twitter handles, uh, Discord names, and all of that are different. And we had a thing the other day where uh, a friend I was getting uh, targeted by a, a bot attack, but because <laughs> I did not know their digi handle on. Uh, Discord. I had no idea who it was. I had no idea. And so I was like, what's going on? Is this like a feckin' thing? <sighs> and Imperios, what ho and welcome! Hello, hello! How goes it, friend? Oh, no! Okay. Yeah, no. These smooth jams are going to kill me. Uh, let's let's see if Everhood cuts the cuts the mustard on that one. Because frogs are friends. Okay, that should help. Right, where were we? Um, like I said, game news is quiet. Love it. Um, I guess the two kind of things have been like, the the conversation around VO stuff is still happening. Uh, and I did have to explain to someone last night why I don't trust uh, Jason Schrauer, or Schrauder or whatever his name is. And it was a difficult one to put into words. Uh, the gentleman who works for Bloomberg, who does a lot of insider reporting. And the reason I don't trust him is because he's a journo first and foremost. And there is no benefit to him supporting anyone in particular, uh, anything that kind of fans the flames of a story is is valid, and we're not going to be covering the Bayonetta stuff too too much unless there's some big developments in it. But the uh, the Bloomberg article turned into this very much like he said he said she said, with a lot of unsubstantiated statements being made and then being reported because. Clicks are what drives the profession, thus creating kind of like a storm in a teacup is far more successful than statement and done. So I'm still kind of grumbly about that. Um, and I guess Rooster Teeth made a, a big old, uh, well, the, Rooster Teeth had an internal document that got posted. Um, so that whole thing's still kind of unfurling. But with Rooster Teeth, like, they are, to my understanding, like, I don't know if Rooster Teeth Games is still in operation. Like, I actually haven't looked into it. 
So I, I don't know if they still kind of eclipse into our space. But of those, of those big kind of like YouTube success stories, they're one of the few ones that are still kicking around, right? We were talking about this the other night of like, Maker Studios died. Um, Machinima was dead a thousand years ago. Um, God. It's such a different landscape out there now. But yeah, that's... Friends, that's the feckin' long and short of it. Here's me getting through all my stories in half an hour. Who would have thought we'd actually reach a point where there was less waffle than than time? I didn't even think it's possible, but here we are. All right, so for today's game, we are gonna be playing the last hero of Nostragaia. Now, I can't imagine I haven't talked your ear off about this already because it is, what if, Stanley Parable, but Dark Souls. Um, we are playing a stick figure hero thrust into the land of Nostragaia. And according to the narrator, it is our fault that the game is being de -rest. This is our fault. It is our retro style that is corrupting the land of Nostragaia. And we must be destroyed, for heroes are not welcome here. I mean, Favor 6, it had to happen eventually. Eventually, we had to run out of things in the games industry to talk about. We're going to have to actually play a video game. Oh, Fearless, well, thank you. Like I said, this one's definitely been something to look forward to because it's so... It is meta-narrative, but incredibly hostile. The narrator hates us, and makes that very clear from the outset. And the idea of taking that meta-narrative and making it combative rather than collaborative, I think it's going to be interesting. Because, like, okay, we did the Stanley Parable together. Like, depending on what path you choose, the narrator and Stanley Parable goes from being your friend, being your enemy, the antagonist, the the confused idiot, the the bumbling the bumbling fool, and the the lord of machinations. This, the narrator here has much more of a clear through line. It is your fault that things are broken, and that is carried through mechanically to just about everything. Honestly, the only reason I didn't manage to clear the demo at PAX was because I got too distracted by, like, the cute, quirky little side bits. Oh yeah, and Favor 6, I do not blame you in the slightest. Um, even pre-Plague, the uh, VR arcades were uh, uh, a quick short stop to Pink Eye. So, I do not blame you. I tell you, one thing that we did get talking about last night was the, the fascination of um, the, the big company metaverse stuff. That was fascinating to talk about. Because I was talking with people who had like direct interactions with big companies and stuff. And how... the uh, I guess the metaverse is the most famous of the, uh, the attempts at... I was explaining to people that currently VR chat is a much better example of what people want. I don't just mean the smart. Uh, I mean like... Okay. You get big companies and they get enamored with the idea of technology, right? Uh, really obsessed with that kind of like R&D mentality and that big picture type element. But ignore that a lot of the time with video games, great success comes from a small concept expanded upon. 
And it just, it seems like it's an impossible mindset to get those larger teams into. Because uh, what I was talking about was the, I think it's a Walmart or it, uh, it's an American grocery store. And that in VR chat, there is a whole lot community who either goes shopping in this place or like works the checkouts or the customer service. Kmart, thank you, Robin. There is a whole RP Kmart, like a 90s Kmart. And that is a brilliant starting point for a concept. Like, if you could put big company money around a concept like that and build outwards, that's a much better idea than this constant pushing off, ah, oh, the metaverse, the metaverse is going to be everything, everywhere, all the time. Yeah, but what is it? Everything. And then you see a dodge of a question there, Mr. Mr. Zuck McBig Company. What, what is my experience in that? Oh, well, you have a character and you can do anything. But see, again, you keep saying anything. Like, we of the video gaming space know there are always limitations. So what are my, what are my limitations in the space? What do I do? And I also went on to like discuss like things like um, the club and Wizmod and other like non-conflict experiential group games that back and kick ass, but again, tight focus that could be expanded upon. It was a real good conversation. I mean, I will be amazed if we see Facebook's metaverse reach it to consumer levels, but. And Phyllis, I, I do think that the Valve approach in that regard is a very good one. Like, find users making cool stuff, bring them in-house, give them money and support. It doesn't always work, and again, like, with their acquisition of Campo Santo, where they just bought Campo Santo and gutted them, it's not always a banger, but... The thing about the tech side is that... Sorry, you all know this. I'm telling you stuff you already know. I just, I like talking about this. Tech companies are very much about the big idea that equals the money. So in tech, you don't even need to have a product to make money. It's sad, it's dumb, it's stupid, but that's how it is. You can walk into a big meeting and say, I have invented the perfect electronic ham. And then you can say a lot of things about electronic ham, how far off it is, how well the company's doing, and then people will be like, I want this eham. Here's two billion dollars. Go for it. And so what happens is that the PR and marketing style around tech is pitch a big, big idea. Uh, let's take Magic Leap. Magic Leap promising this incredible AR experience. That's how you get funding. That's how those companies operate to generate revenue. That revenue being like speculative investment and things like that. But As we well know in the video game space, video games are a messy, stodgy, confusing, interwinding process where often, like, what the game is can change multiple times and throughout. And that kind of big concept, big pitch, very rarely, very rarely pans out. It's so counter to the tech company's style of promotion. Yeah, the Eham of Birmingham on Web3. He would talk, you heard it here first, folks. The real secret to Web3 is gonna be ham. Electronic ham, just download it. Download a ham. Please give me $2 billion for Eham. Um, but a lot of these big companies absolutely do not know how to grow a product internally. They know how to flex. They don't know how to nurture. Now, A company like Facebook is big beyond comprehension. They can't make quick, agile decisions like what I'm suggesting. I understand this. But in a in a conflict, no question, in a direct focus environment, something like the metaverse should be grown out of a small experience. Download more ham. I should have downloaded more ham before we got started. Um, but uh, I don't want to try downloading ham whilst I'm streaming in case we drop frames. Um, in our early prototype eat ham, it can be quite heftier download but you know you're downloading ham what's not to like <laughs> but yeah sorry so the idea of something like the metaverse creating a small tight focused experience 
and having that be the test case for a lot of their technology, rather than trying to make this big overarching, it does everything tech, which does not play nice. Yeah. Anyway, TLDR. If they focused on something like a 90s blockbuster as an experience and had people come in through that, that's a great start. That's, that is a thing that you can pitch to a person. Oh, what was it somebody said? It's not like Lego. It's not like Minecraft where you're asking people to go into an environment and then they find the fun from it because there's a core loop at the beginning. Essentially, what you're doing with a concept like Facebook's Metaverse is telling people to go to the beach and make a sandcastle. Like, what do you make? Anything. Yeah, but what about anything? Anything. Yeah, but how do I anything? Lost Flowers said, my first problem was, could you uh, solve the light speed problem? Well, no, um, so, Lost Flowers, we're not talking about streamed ham. We're talking about downloaded ham. So, like, I understand Google uh, just stopped doing their, um, their salted meat service. And that the, you know, the speed of light problem is a real one. But we're just looking to just directly download ham. So, honestly, like, if we can, if we can go, like, like, P2P ham services, that's pig to pig. Um, we'll be able to cut out a larger portion of ham hosting costs. Well, it was Stadia bacon. Sta Stadia. Stadia steaks? Stakia? Damn it! Alright, there's a Stadia meat pun somewhere. I just can't grab it. I would also download the shit out of some ham. Anyway, sorry if my, um, my rambling's kind of going off into incoherent territory. It was just... I do not believe that any of the large companies attempting to create an everything experience will ever be able to do it. And I don't think it's a question of technical ability, and I don't think it's a question of money. I think that they are unable to create a focused, small experience. Because that's how these great experiences build outwards, you know? You don't make... <sighs> Sorry, you already know this, friends. You already know this. But it was just, it was interesting to talk to peeps who were genuinely excited about the idea of the everything game. Not the, the bo not the bollocks around it, but the idea of this interconnected experience which can house a lot of different games together. And some people have called it an inevitability in games. I do agree, but that's a that, that's a um, a technical challenge more than anything else. Anyway, I can never spell Stanley. I'm actually, look at this friends, I'm actually gonna bang out a tweet. See if we can uh, tempt some friendos to come hang out with us. And a sorry, Greenfire. Watto and welcome. Hello, hello. Oh, it's not nostalgia. It's Nostragaya. I had to learn how to say that proper.
Uh, so favor six, essentially yes. Although, okay, so the everything game. The everything game as a concept um, could be done by uh, creating some kind of active 3D UI. The, by what I mean by that is that a, like a three-dimensional interactive space where you can chat with other users that is itself used as a launch window for other titles. I think that could be very, very tricky to do outside of like VR elements because the interconnective tissue is a bit too weird and too jarring, but it's not impossible. Uh, to uh, to Barnes Emma, Watto and welcome. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, a bigger mode steam. Um, but I would not want to try and... I would not want to try and ply that over Steam as a whole. That would be a mess. Because the irony is that if someone does succeed in creating the, the everything game, the metaverse, is that very few people will want to play with everyone else on a large scale. What people will want is to create little pockets, little groups, little kind of like tribal spaces, but with a, a genuine connectivity between them. Uh, so sorry, the next spooky game. Well, uh, tomorrow we're playing Eternal Threads uh, or Infra. We might do like a, a coin flip to see uh, how we're feeling on that one. But Eternal Threads is kind of like a reverse murder mystery. In terms of spooky, spooky games, I don't know. Uh, I do know that um, every year a large proportion of my friends do nothing but spooky games and that always gets a bit trying, you know. Real life's fucking scary enough as it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I do have some interesting titles potentially that we're saving. Uh, and Fiona has expressed an interest in a return to Phasmophobia. Galaxy VR would be a hot mess. Yes. God Galaxy VR would be a hot mess. Like, I, 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 I can't think of a way to bring that together in a way that wouldn't be heinous. Oh, and Caldera, did I say hello? I hope I did. Sorry, I've been chatting mildly incoherently on about several topics uh, while I'm just getting us ready for the last hero of Nostragaia. Thankfully, the game is much funnier than I am, so... <laughs> I can basically outsource your entertainment for the afternoon. Kind of like, you know, dropping kids off at uh, Chuck E. Cheese. But it's sarcastic and violent. Incoherent mouth sound is how uh, Caldera does most communication. Uh, so God Beardman says, after the everything game is created, I don't see why it wouldn't be a streaming situation where everyone tries to make one. Oh yes. Well, so what would happen is we'd have the everything game, and then there would be seven everything game competitors that would be dropped all at once. Of those, maybe one might succeed. Which then begs the question, what happens if you have two everything games all at the same time competing? It's not really the everything game, is it? This is why the term metaverse is a great one for sci-fi uh, and for tech industry wankers. <laughs> I don't have a better term for them, I'm sorry. But when we actually apply these things to video games and to people that actually enjoy being in digital spaces, it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It kind of falls apart. Now, the idea of being able to layer multiple systems over each other 
for a collaborative experience type stuff. Like Wolfgrad saying they want to be able to play uh, Hitman in the lobby everything's of the area, uh, the lobby areas of the everything game. That would be fun as feck. The idea that you're just hanging around waiting for stuff to happen and you get like a, would you like to join this game of assassins? And you go, yes. And it's like, this is your target. Uh, you, someone else is your killer. Do not get caught. Yeah, and Mega Boss, um, I'm pretty sure there's a Call of Cthulhu, um, like, tabletop sim set for that one, which is feckin' fascinating. Look at me, actually doing a tweet, like I know what I'm feckin' doing. Uh, so Robin says they want to make an arcade and VR chat, uh, but they'd have to mess with Udon. I mean, that is a potential component of uh, adding streaming elements to your title. Uh, sorry, to your platform. I'm sorry, okay. Rewindy, rewindy, rewindy. So, elements like NVIDIA, what Stadia attempts to do, etc. Being able to stream those titles to a uh, device or a browser, not too shabby. Being able to stream those into an experience could be very powerful. Um, what was I doing? Oh, I was looking for a gif of the last hero of Nostra Gaia. Okay, uh, so Mega Boss, sleep well. Have a lovely rest of your evening, and I hope things go. Uh, I hope things go good. Sorry, it's me being a terrible conversationalist today. Lord Traden, Watto, and welcome. Ah, and there are no gifts. Bad press kit. Bad press kit. You have failed me. Right, so before my banter gets any worse and I start talking absolute gibberish and bollocks, um, let's get into game. So friends, this was the last hero of Nostragaia, and it has been a long time coming. I guess we did still talk for an hour, but I guess the difference was is that most of my talk was, again, incredibly incoherent. But yeah, so Robin, I guess that'd be the question is, how would you have those games running in world? That's the challenge, right? Having a, an arcade in VR. Do you have multiple instances of emulators running within the space? Like, how, how you want to get them working? Uh, excuse me, video game. Excuse me. No doubt I have to get levels balanced and all that nonsense. Excuse me! There we go. Love it. Uh, and once again, dear friends, if I could uh, abuse your uh, your friendship, if you would not mind giving this tweet like a little little punt and a kick, I would be very very grateful. Uh, Lord Traden, you did hear the uh, Everhood game music. That's what we were listening to while I was having a natter. I tried doing the unchill as I usually have while coffee, uh, but it did not work. <laughs> it was too calm. It was too chill. All right. Uh... Oh, 
Okay. Desync. You better believe it. Low quality mode. Okay. This should be good. Right. To turn it up for myself, I believe. Um. Uh, so Katera says their sister has taken to make them stream house flippers on the Discord screen. Silly thing is that we live in the same house. She just wants to be comfy. That's fine. I, I think over the last couple of years, I think we've all come to understand ourselves a lot better. And how, like, digital experiences kind of fit into our lives. You know, it's okay to be in two separate rooms playing a game together. Or be on Discord, not really saying a lot. And just... Playing games and being in that space. Uh, and Lord Traden, thank you for the additional punt. Okay. So give people a couple of seconds before we get started, because this this goes hard from the get-go, and I don't want anybody to miss out on the good stuff. Uh, Lord Trident, low quality mode is not the 2D sprites being uh, previewed, but we'll get we'll get to that later. <laughs> All right, let's get the let's get the heist planner out of the way. Stealing money from Jeffrey Bezos. Stealing money from Jeffrey Bezos. And we do need to go through character creation, so this might take us a little while, friends. Right, obviously, as always, I want your your thoughts, your feelings, your comments on character creation. So I definitely definitely want input. But yeah, friends, without further ado, I present to you. The last hero of Nostragaya. Brightness adjustment. Set this low, great hero. You need not see the corpses. Uh, I have to turn it up because of the lights. <laughs> uh, show intro tutorials. Yes, please! All right, so what is our name? We're gonna need a, a name for our character. Oh yeah, Traden, and remember, no metal sliders. Okay, we'll get to the we'll get to the beard and stuff in a second. Ugh, Willemus, god darn it! If we don't have any better ones, I'm just I'm just gonna. Deal. Stabonius is pretty good. Stabonius, Lord of Stabathon. Because it would be Shadows, the return of the Mac. Stickamus. Jeffrey! Jeffrey! Uh, Stabonius is currently winning in my little mind. Twigum. Sir Twigum. Oh, that's a good one. Alright, can anyone beat Sir Twigum? Rodimus is good, Eriman, but unfortunately it reminds me of uh, Rodimus Prime, who was a knob end. Uh, Park saying big nose. I like big nose. I like big ears. And Lizzie, what's and welcome. Thick Larry. Sir Twigum's still winning. Okay, well, so we'll start with Sir Twigum. And then let's have a look at some of the other... Okay, so it's a Twigum. Alright, so we've got our, our skin colour slider. As you can see, a great range of, uh, of representation there. Body shape, again, no middle sliders. I prefer that shade. Age, old as. Accessories, all. Uh, okay, maybe slightly less. 
Uh, how do you all feel about tattoos? I'm thinking actually more of a... I know I said no middle sliders, but I do think that that's got more to it than that. I certainly enjoy it. Now, uh, park programs, while we're not going for the name Big Nose, we do absolutely need a Big Nose. Nice style. Jaw width. Hey, if chins could kill. Now, I probably should have censored this part. Um, I do understand that, you know, a Twitch frowns upon frontal nudity, but let's get the endowment to where it needs to be, you know what I mean? And for hair, just kind of like a modest undershave. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's a good, I think that's a solid character creation there. All right. So without further ado, the well-endowed tale of Sir Big-Nosed Twiggum. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna pick our class. So we got Data Din, a noble and stalwart defender of order, favors vitality. Uh, Data Din's are champions of fidelity. They are well-rounded and versatile. Formatter, a brutal savage who wields heavy weapons. Yes, favors strength. Yes. Formatter's pulverized pixels of all who stand in their way. No weapon is too big. Wink. Uh, the resolutionary. Swift and evasive outsider favors dexterity. The rev, the resolutionaries. Pray for my dyslexic ass. Uh, see the world differently than others. Get it? Uh, they strike quickly and bring about change. The sorcerer. Sorcerer, a channel of Nostagaya's primal energies favors source magic. Sorcerers are not bound to the constraints of reality. They access something deeper. <laughs> and last but by no means least, the Random Master. A scoundrel who specializes in critical hits, backstabs, parries, and favors luck. What do they mean, pick your class? As if we have any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, Wolfcrat, it's an RPG. We're role-playing as people with class. Uh, randomizers employ tactics that confound others. Luck and uh, chance are opportunities. Alright. This one's got an axe. I'm not made of stone, friends. I'm not made of stone. Data Dins represent. Data Dins represent! I mean, I respect, but it's, it's, it's all about, it's all about dat axe. Dat axe. All right, confirm. Name, Sir Twiggum. Class, the Formatter. No weapon too big. That's what the endowment slide yes, is for. Yes, indeed. Oh. It is called Nostalgia. Where the... Wait, wait! Cut, cut, cut! Was that your customization screen? Oh, almighty save me. I don't know what you are, but you're no hero. So... I'm not playing the intro. <laughs> I will say Lost Flowers, like the resolutionaries and the uh, the sorcerers, I thought were the pithiest. And so it was, the would-be hero became. Had it dignity, it would impale itself on its own appendages and rid us of its pixelated shame. Ho! Huh. Brutal! Yeah, we're no hero, which means we get no intro. So, uh, yeah, and uh, it's standard Solzian control, so... Block. Parry. Little stab. Big stab. Makes little feedy noises when it's running round. I shall not. This is... I mean, I'm not saying we're going to do a full nude run here, but... No. Sun's All out, right. bum's out. The 
the welcome host was absent. No one to tell the newest spawn what to do or what it was. I think the mug says just says heroes. A to read message, light attack, heavy attack, shield and dodge. You are not alone. We have walked before you. Go back to, go back to where you came from. Also help me. So help me. If you can't see it. Nostral Gaia oh. had become slightly unwelcoming to new heroes and those who assist them. The person hanging from the ceiling uh, is wearing a, a sign that says Hero Lover. And it alarms me, but uh, that message may have been written in poo. Ha! <laughs> Boosh! Heels. Two-handers, don't need a shield. Uh, to Forsaken, Watto and welcome. Greetings to the last hero of Nostral Gaia. Fuck these chairs! Oh, some herbs. Fuck these chairs! No weapon too big. Uh, so, Forsaken, did we meet at um, uh, PAX? Because uh, I did want to say thank you um, to the Thunderful crew for letting me have hands on. I've been waiting for this since PAX. And I gotta say, I, it, was, it was hard holding steady, but I wanted to make sure we were showing it off on launch day. Also, fuck these chairs. Fuck these chairs! Yes! Ah, now it's a Solzian game. Fuck these chairs! This is why I can't go back to Ikea. No! Hey, Favor6, thank you for gifting a, a sub to Forsaken. Yeah, feck them chairs. Alright, what have we got here? Oh, yeah. So I think this guy... The would-be hero began to suspect that perhaps it wasn't loved. Oh! Feck you, me! I can't believe I let him stab me. Yeah, in fact, that one chair in particular. The confused stick figure would find no answers in the narrator's library. A spreading pixelization had twisted everything and everyone into retro decay. My timing's off. Oh, fuck. This is just rude. Sir. That's what I get for trying to be clever. They are, and they're wearing targets on their chests. Um, so, Forsaken, I, I hope launch has been going well. Um, I was out drinking last night with video game peoples, so I've not checked, like, morning coverage and stuff, but I hope it's been good. I know, shocking, Lizzie, that I would be drinking on a school night. Shocking, indeed. No, it was good catching up with everybody, and um, this the Seattle Indies meet is always such a great time. <laughs> I'm sorry, Forsaken was saying that it's been great. Uh, nice to get into that. Yo! Here's House Carl rocking it. Uh, I'm sorry. Asari just gifted us up to Lord Traden. Asari, that's fucking cool of you. Alright. 
Son only. Nostal Gaia's memories had flattened like books without pages. Oh, how the narrator mourned. Pixels were the problem. Two for one, two for one, two for a pand. I am four seconds. Seattle is wonderful. I really do love being out here, but because we have like both a very active streaming community and a very active game dev community, so I can kind of I can have proper chats with both. What the fuck is this? Turn back, shit no. Do 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 do. <laughs> and so the stick figure proved its ineptitude. <laughs> um, so not only did I just get heckled, but what you didn't see was an achievement pop up that goes, Well, it's a souls like. Audacity. That bit wasn't in the demo! Alright, now I've been challenged. I also noticed the um, the 3D assets in here, more like the traditional high quality. And then as we move further and further in, the wall texture flattens out. Yeah, maybe, Lord Train, maybe that message was correct. Unless I'm a coward. All right, where was the guy down here? Back you, mate! Ah, oh, chairs again! I thought I'd handled you, chairs. Looks like I'm gonna have to learn you twice! God, that's satisfying. Feck. Your couch. Yeah, no, so Lord Trident, there's a lot of subtle details in this. And whilst the, um... The narrator's the easiest thing to kind of focus as an... Man, my timing is just off today. The narrator is the easiest thing to kind of focus on. There's so many little touches in this. And as we continue through it, like, I'm, I'm just looking forward to sharing it with you. Because, forgive me if I'm a little quiet at the beginning of the game, because there are so many little touches that I don't want to out and out spoil. Now let's go get our pixels back. Um, so the items I've been picking up, I believe, are data. So let's have a look at our inventory. Uh, so we've been picking up uh, access, which refills our access. Later on, we'll gain, like, castable spells. Um, Merge Heroic Journey's Portal allows online play. Uh, and these are... I believe a few, uh, a few spots of armor here. Little touches, he says with an endowment slider set to that level. No middle sliders. No cowards, no middle sliders. Nope. 
Maybe we'll come back and fight him in a little bit. I am not ready for that. <laughs> we'll, we'll run in, grab the bits, get out. I, I thought I was in the clear for that dodge there, and I absolutely fecking wasn't. <laughs> dodge! Dies. Oh, sorry. And again, sorry. Thank you for giving us up. And Bacon, thank you for the bits, friends. Um, like I said, forgive me if I'm a little quiet to start with. I just... I don't want to... I don't want to spoil this for those of you that are watching. Uh, if you've been looking for a Soulsian game to get your teeth into and you want something with a bit more heft, I very recommend this. Oh, feck you. Feck you, first basic enemy. That's what I get for trying to be conversational. Uh, so I'm going to grab our souls, sorry, our, our pixels, and then uh, continue our adventures forward. Well, see, Lost Flowers, that was the thing. I was dodging. It's just that big guy gives no hex about my existence. And that halberd he wields is brutal. No. I'm not dying to you budget yarn and bastards. Anyone ever think about how Yarnum sounds like Farnum? I think about that a lot. <laughs> oh, and to um, uh, to Fallen Saken, uh, I've been pushing people towards the uh, Steam page, but is there uh, any other spots you'd like people to to check out? I realise I didn't ask before we uh, we got stuck in today. You know, always got to make sure, friends, we're uh, we're pushing people towards the the right page for for games and whatnot. Tell me. Whatever darkness that guy is spitting forth is going to kick my ass. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Get to Oh, I can't even cheek him through the door because he despawns. Clever, clever girl. Oh, I mean, Forsaken, I am really excited to show this off to people, so do nay worry. Like, you want to talk? I want to talk about this game a whole bunch? I want to feckin' listen. Because I know I talked about this a lot, like, in and around packs, but my... My goal with the last packs that happened was to try and get demos with the games I wasn't quite sure of. Because I saw some of the pre-release assets of this. Ooh. Gilded Axe. Oh, so this one's not a strength weapon. This is a dexterity weapon that has a special ability. Try it on some, on some small babies. See what that gets us. What was this peculiar stick figure? And had it even noticed how retro everything was becoming? Of course not. It was made out of pixels. It was part of the problem. So this is the Gilded Axe. Uh, this memory lingers in an undiscovered region. A pixelated golden axe, the relic's memory yearns to be found. Within a desecrated place of worship, I lopped off the heads of the innocent. Yeah, affect those boxes. They know what they did. The narrator decided to make some 
story edits. Let's go back to Axe Watt. Axe Watt breaks. Breaks face. The Dagger of Cycles. Suddenly, an ambush caught the hero unprepared. Oh no! However could this be? Nice try, narrator. Some of us played the demo. Uh, also, you'll notice that some of the uh, assets are moving towards the old classic letterboxing. Like, check out the um, uh, check out the torch on the wall. Again, I'm trying. I'm trying not to spoil things, friends. It's just this is very subtle. Okay. Ah, uh, so we got some shuriken code. There we go. Shuriken consumes access. That we can do. Uh, but on the uh, the weapons, let's have a look at the... Yeah, so the Dagger of Cycles. You are missing an ability. A pixelated timeless dagger. I felt as one with the construct, where time was kept within time, and the Tower of Chronomancy toiled its first toll again and again. Yeah. Of course, I never get tired of the little feedy sounds. In fact, those books. You know what I think? I think the world is sick, and you're like the final pixelated tumor. The narrator vowed to save the world. The narrator vowed to cut you from it. Fast as little stick leggies would carry. Must continue to destroy boxes violently. Suddenly, a simple sentry transformed into an impossible adversary. One written to crush the stick figure on sight. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Don't give up. We need you. Wee hee 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 hee! Staging room NPCs only! Oh crap, crap. Taste of my shurikens! Oh, I felt that in a cheap seat. Ha ha! Slain! Very proud of myself there. All right. So this was the this door here is why I failed the uh, the packs demo because we're going in there. Whether we're supposed to or not, I don't know. But I managed to get the key. I ran back. It didn't end well for me. Again, I'm trying not to be spoily spoiler soon. Uh, Asari is uh, pointing out the poor books. Where is the librarian? Uh, wherever the librarian is, they can't stop! But... And the books did not move, and the stick figure was mildly disappointed. Homing arrows. Um, the painting. Head back to the... Shoot me in the bomb! Uh, so which painting? Like the big Moogle? Uh, the strange one here? Large Moogle. 
Oh. Um, legally distinct Moogle-like character. Okay, so we just got the key to the Hall of Heroes staging room, so we can go check that out next. Ah, a beacon. A conduit through which heroes once communed with Nostalgia. Don't you dare lay your pixels upon it. Oh! Okay, friends, Forsaken has thrown down a feckin' challenge. If I can beat boss first time, uh, they'll drop a key in chat. All right. All right, you're on. You're feckin' on. <laughs> By the almighty. Impossible. You're... You're... What in the void are you? Shrug, shake hand, stick person gesture. Woohoo! Oh, you don't know what you are or why you're here. Do you want me to guide you? Nod. Yes, thank you. You are no hero, and I am no travel brochure. Now, <laughs> I have no idea what your little gestures were meant to convey. Probably rude, but I will tell you what you are. Proof that Nostalgia is dying. Oh, this is great. This is just like uh, visiting my family. <laughs> All right, so first things first, level up. Strength! Stamina. Strength! Equip load. Okay. All right, friends. So if I can clear this in one, if I can clear this in one, we get a steam key. But I am going to go check out the uh, the hall of NPCs first. Because I want to. Hey, it's my stream. I'm abusing my powers. Gotta, gotta shake off the cobwebs first before I take on the boss. Okay. Lost Flowers thing looks like a pixel pup in here. And Pog... You could say this is a text-based adventure. Oh, I have made mistakes. Ow. Ow! Okay, that's just rude. The stick figure wondered why Nostalgia's denizens had turned on their heroes. The narrator loved the old heroes, but conceded the mobs were right to loathe the stick figure. That's just mean. Okay, so live zone. Remember to smile while you stab them. Um, and okay, remember to occasionally miss. Oh no, so uh, Lizzie, um, uh, Forsaken. Who is hanging out with us here uh, is one of the team working on Heroes of Nostragaia and has said that if I can beat the boss first time, uh, they will drop a Ooh. steam key in. Die with gratitude. Ruined feather. Oh! Fireplace stone. Cycle bin. Oh wow, well, so there's a lot to explore. Not quite ready for that just yet. Sincerely hoping I find something that's like a. Uh, it's not stable. Oh, that's cool. We can't open certain doors because they're too unstable. That's fucking clever. All right, enough faffamancy. Let's see if I can do this. See if I can remember the patterns. All right, so the bet is on. I mean, if you'll want to throw a quick uh, one-minute prediction uh, up to see whether or not I can do it, 
I don't know if any of you want to bet against me, because there'll be a free key in it if I do it. So... Have we got enough to level? We do. Ah, uh, and sorry, I just saved. Of course, that one's locked. Stick figure gesture. Reminds me of uh, Stephanie Sterling's wrestling sona there. Stick figure gesture. Stick figure gesture. All right. Be a hero. Be a hero! Alright. Let's do this. You are not worthy. You are not prepared! Um, well, for, Forsaken, let's, let's see if I can do it. No! The hero was rejected! The spirit had a final form. A final form! Oh! <laughs> all right, all right. So you got some new fancy moves since Pax, huh? Well, you're not the only one. There's the... <laughs> Stop dodging me throwing stars! Oh, Amos, you're fine, mate! Downswing. Oh no! Broke my damn face. I'm sorry, friends. I'm sorry. Uh, Vanderbeast, thank you for filling the pint glass. Even though I do not deserve it. At Martin, it works. Boss, bosses require patience and timing. Oh, I didn't even notice I, I, I survived it with a sliver. Alright, now at least I have to win back my honour. The spirit had a final form. A final form! Fuck, I knew that was gonna happen and I let it happen. Oh, 
Oh, feck you, you great big lamp! Piss off, you big lamp! Finished him. <gasps> the Shield of Inspiration. You did it! Congrats! These extra tutorial messages will now stop. The last hero of Nostragaia is a mystery. What are you? What happened to this world? What is expected of you? You won't be handed the answers. Can you uncover them? Can we? That's a genuine question. But we've got a cool shield. Uh, so the Shield of Inspiration. My siblings and I encouraged fledgling, fledgling heroes through their doubts and towards their purpose. Purpose ultimately found rest in Nostra Gaia's heart, somewhere beneath her central shrine. Interesting. I mean, second attempt. Yay! I, full second, we, we made a deal. If if you wish to, if you wish to give a, a key to these lovely Mother Hubbards, I won't stop you. But I can't say that I I want it for them. I can't say that I battled. Um. So Martin. This game is actively trying to be a Solzian title. It is actively aiming to be, perhaps parody is the wrong word, but existing in that space. Like, look at this setup. This is this is no accident. Uh, homage. To receive the spirit's blessing is. Um... It was undeniable that the scattered bundle of sticks remained pathetic, but something was amiss. The narrator, never confused, was curious. Curious. Pixel born, pixel souls. Souls pixel. Um, so Lord Traden, I don't know if homage is the right term. This isn't... I mean... Hey, if the game describes itself as satirical, then that is valid. But you know what I mean? This isn't... While the narrator is obviously going to be heckling us for the rest of this feckin' game, this is a title that takes place in a, a Solzian game. It... I mean, look at the setup. Look at this. The location, the... The design, the whole shebang. Marvelous. Who the heck are you? Look upon the world around you. What you have restored by your touch. A hero is known by their actions. Yes. I know what you are. Or rather, what you might prove to be. You do not know yourself, though, do you? Memory of what was is vanishing, but do not despair. Through your journey, you may yet discover your nature. Your touch upon this beacon has caused a remembering of what was. That jagged blade you scavenged, can you, can you hear its whisper? 
Rummage through your belongings and find it. Okay. So select your weapon. So inventory. Uh, this relic uh, has a pixelated memory. You can help this relic remember or get stronger. Uh, the location of the memory could be anywhere in the world. Relics when the correct location will quiver in your inventory. To find location, listen to what it tells you. See how this old relic mentions an old man? Try standing beside the old man selecting uh, remember. Inventory. Here we go. Remember. There we go. Oh, cool. So it has a spin slash and a regen of stamina. Plus a boost. Remember, relics will become stronger. As you remember a different... As you remember different relics, you will gain permanent insight bonuses. So it's highly advantageous to remember relics, even if you don't equip them. See your player stat screen for your insight bonuses. Cool. Uh, unlock by remembering increased health, increased crit damage. Feckin' yo! Okay, so the, uh, this relic's memory has been restored. Ours is a world where memories of other worlds collide and collapse and create something new. My wielder explored many powerful realms that were all part of the same story. His story. To unlock the future in Nostra Gaia, we must understand its past. Feckin' yo! So, like... If we have a look at what we have at the moment... Uh, so we have the Shield of Inspiration. My siblings and I encourage fledgling heroes through our doubts towards this pursuit. Ultimately found rest in Nostra Gaia's heart, somewhere beneath her central shrine. So that one's the central shrine. Uh, what about this one? Uh, within the desecrated place of worship, I lopped off the heads of the innocent. And the dagger talks about the, the Tower of Chronomancy. Fascinating. So there are, there are definitely places to find. Um, so, let's see what we've got. Oh, there's even the little, like, twisty down. Let's see if there's someone hanging out, uh, either by the tower or inside it. Locked? No. Did not expect this. Peer down. Nostra Gaia's heart is constricted. Barely any memory goes or comes out. Interesting. Aha! Check it out! And by Nostra Gaia's heart, we can remember the feckin' shield! Yeah! Beef shield! And it goes on to say, before the cycles were broken, my siblings and I were generously given to new hero spawns to motivate them through the tribulations and moments of despair. Beneath the central shrine of Nostra Gaia, all memory leads back to its heart. It is within the heart that the hero's ultimate purpose is fulfilled. That's feckin' cool. Oh, that's a good point! Uh, I didn't even notice that. The texture quality of the items improves as they get remembered. Oh, we got a message box. Oh, we could leave messages for people. Uh, let's see if we can equip that. Yeah. And an, an archaic and mysterious communication tool. Let's, let's try giving it a shot. Let's see what we can do with it. Can I place messages here right now? Okay. 
Um, oh, uh, Aperios wanted to let us all know that the Silent Hill announcement will be coming soon. Brace yourself for a, uh, as Aperios guesses, NFT Battle Royale Pachinko card game on mobile devices only. Yes. Do, do not, do not raise your hopes, friend. For hope, <laughs> hope is the first step to disappointment. Uh, oh, so the heart of a hero. New Heroes once tutorialized that the heart of heroism is not gold and glitter, uh, prompt and celebration, but humility and uh, ultimately sacrifice. Okay, so the heart of the hero talks about tutorialization. So let's head back into the tutorial areas and see what we see. See if we can unlock that. Because that seems feckin' cool. Abandon hope, all ye who catch Remarkable. the announcement. I had feared such depth to be lost forever. You may be whom I've been waiting for. Nostalgia is dying. The great forgetting is taking us all. We degrade into pixelization and then... Oblivion. Heroes, the great ones most especially, were meant to save Nostalgia, but they have forsaken their purpose. They now choke the arteries meant to carry memory back into our world's heart. I remember their failures, but I shall not lecture you. Now go ahead, were, mate. We're actually listening. They did must be yours to discover, yours to make meaning from. The first great one wails from within the depths of Nostalgia's minds. Good Two luck. bells! Alright, so that's where we should progress to, to take on our first target. I'll assume the big doors here are locked, but Assumption makes an ass out of me and you. Yeah. Um, but I want to head back to the tutorial area and see if we can awaken the armor. Yeah, and Favor 6, you're entirely correct. It isn't a Solzian game unless NPCs you interact with have at least some kind of creepy, off-putting laugh. Yes, so Martin, that's the, that's the unlock system, is we have to take the items back to the place where they are remembered. Uh, so the shield spoke about the heart of Nostragaia. When we went underneath the area, we found the, um... We found an entrance to the heart. That allowed us to then unlock the shield's true potential. Try remembering. Yeah, right. Diggy diggy hole. Diggy diggy hole. Uh, let me just save here real quick. You have zero items that can be remembered here. The Hall of Heroes. Brave of you. Oh, sir. Sir. Cease your wailing! Oh, my life. You know what? I'm, I'm offended at myself for getting my ass kicked by Hatton. So Hatem twat over there, sorry. I have been I don't I wouldn't say homesick, but uh after hanging out with um with Ben, I've kind of been uh I don't know. Missing a lot of stuff of late, so I started rewatching uh, Misfits for a little bit of just like ambient Ambient Britishisms. And that has resulted in quite a few terms coming back into my vocabulary that are not good. All right. Oh, crud, the bed. I guess, I guess my equip load is very heavy right now. 
gonna work out work on uh, not chunk rolling. Oh wow! How to get how to get m m multi band band band. Oh, Restless Roots. I'm sorry you're having a hard day, friend. Uh, the game is brilliant. Uh, the company is wonderful. Uh, the only thing lacking today is my ability to converse. As uh, I didn't want to spoil any of the little um, surprises from the narrator in the opening section. Oh, and Fiona is cooking up something that smells amazing. And <laughs> I am super jealous right now. Uh, and I wouldn't say... I'm not necessarily having problems with the camera. It's more... Yeah, I've moved... Uh, I need to put more points into equip load. Because my character is now chunky and tough, but you notice they've got, like, the stunted roll. Aw. Oh, well, Restless, I'm real happy about that. This game's feckin' good. And... Ooh, the helpful cane of... The modest cane of helpfulness. I wonder what that is. God damn it, topless Abe Lincoln. Don't run at me like that. Okay. Hate, hurt, heroes? Uh, a forgotten scrap of metal created and ravaged by pixelation. Some relics are too far gone to be restored. Uh, that one might work for for our strength build, though. And, uh, you know, blocking. That's time that can always be cement to uh, doing more attacks. Oh, aren't you clever? Mr. Dodging Around. Mr. Dodgy Dodgerson. Of the New Hampshire Dodgers. I think the Dodgers are actually a sports team somewhere. Aww. Asari, that's feckin' lovely of you. And obviously, Asari, thank you for the bits. Asari, we just said internet hugs for those who need them. Got those on tap. Yeah, thank you, Lizzie. Um, the fact that they already got killed by Thor I thought was uh, rather entertaining. Uh, Lord Trayton, I think you can dual wield. I mean, if it's anything like uh, the the Solzian games of old. But because my character is uh, currently uh, all beef and trousers. Oh! We can backstab. Okay. A pixelman could get used to this. Oh, there you are. So, in theory, we should be able to awaken the armor if we can get far enough back. Definitely gonna need more coffee today, though, let me tell you. One cup is not gonna cut it this afternoon. New heroes were once tutorialized, uh, but the heart of heroism. Okay. Nothing so far. Alright. Uh, sorry, friends. I think we could get right back into the tutorialization of it all. 
Or I'm leading us on a wild goose chase and we're just farming pixels at this point. Yeah, both are good. location. Okay. Uh, sorry, there is multiplayer to this. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, um, but to my understanding, there is both uh, co-op and the ilk. Yeah, the Hall of Heroes was not the right pass. No, so Favor 6, it wasn't there for the first boss, but... Uh, I mean, I'll check again. Um, like, there's no place to kind of... Um, uh, to rest at, so we've only just got to trundle back. Honestly, I might start having a look around where the uh, NPC rest area was, because it looked like there was more to explore there. But yeah, from here on in, friends, we're... This is uncharted territory. Nobody else has played this. Like, out of uh, at least everybody on Steam, no one else has jumped into this this morning, so... We're breaking new ground. And how detailed or in-depth or uh, difficult these problems will be to unfurl in Nostra Gaia, I don't know. This could be a very straightforward meta-narrative game, kind of similar to yesterday's, but with a Soulsian vibe. Or this could end up being something altogether more fascinating. Uh, though, t I, uh, I don't know when we'll... Fuck those books. I don't know when we'll get to the point of being able to uh, to put our skills on the line for another key. Have to, to fight hard. To be worth such boons! Such rewards! Oh shit, Lost Flowers, you're right. The first boss did have a text box saying, try remembering. See, this is why I'm glad I'm playing it with you lot, and I definitely need more coffee. Oh. Alright, this might be a weird thing. And again, this may be uh, leftovers from my kind of... Uh, I guess it is a little bit of homesick. I just want a bacon butty right now. Just bacon. I'll set up for ketchup. Just a big, decent, tasty roll. That's all I'm after. Remember shield? Good. Alright. So let's try the boss room. Uh, and then we can try um, the Hall of Feckery. Uh, I just need to put uh, points into equip load for a bit. So we can just start getting swollen enough to, to hit stuff. Okay, so, level up, quick load. See if that helps. There we go. I got my good speedy rolls back. Alright. Uh, remember heroism. Oh yeah, just Lizzie, I've just got cravings for just like, just a basic ass bacon butty. I mean, that's the great thing about being based out in the US is that like, I'm never hurt for good food. Like, we have a Viking themed sandwich shop down the feckin' road. Uh, which does um, a Sani that I'm kind of addicted to, which is the Fidel cash flow. And it's like... Like two kinds of ham, many cheese. I 
It's like pork belly, ham, Swiss, like pickles, and this great mustard. It's just so good. All right, Fecos. Who wants to die? Yeah, I can get dicks anytime I want, Lizzie. Which is both a great cure for uh, having a bad day and a great cure for a hangover. I'm, I'm not hungover today, thank feck. Um, I did resist the urge to go drinking with uh, industry friendos after the meet last night. That is how much, one, I value this game and how much I value you lot. I could have been royally hungover. Yeah, Lost Flowers, there is a big guy we haven't killed yet. Try left. Oh. Alright. Try being evasive. Yeah, can't ask me questions. I am evasive. Trying to see if there's like a window we can get into, or if I'm being led astray by uh, sinister messages. This place feels very Yarnum. Oh crap sticks, how do I jump in this? Huh? I might be in trouble. <laughs> Shit. Yep, it's trapped. I have been trapped. Can't believe I fell for this. Feck you, tiny messages. Uh, yep, I got crab potted. Feck sticks. Oh, and those look like horrible, mo horrible monsters of death. Ooh. Well, that could have been a lot worse. I'm gonna go vote that down. Uh, and KC, I made it. I made it. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily aimed for the bushes, but I didn't die. Descend quickly. Annoying enemies ahead. I downvote this Mother Hubbard. Yeah. Let's, uh, we can put, like, liar ahead. Format. Uh, blank ahead. Where's liar? Uh, emotions. Disgust ahead. Psychosis ahead. Disgust ahead. There we go. <laughs> Not quite there yet. It's a bit pixely. All right, so I'm gonna kill the uh, the monsters, the heinous monsters of. Uh, okay, and Forsaken will be at this for a while. So if you uh, if you have the chance to get to pop in later. Oh well, you're feckin'. Okay, that's disgusting. They've put a human model over like a dog anim. Thanks, I fucking hate it. There we go. Da -na 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 -na, that creeped me out. The blood of Nostragaia. Mmm, delicious. Everything bleeds. Uh, consume to apply source damage to your right hand weapon. Woohoo! Yeah! Hey, Forsaken, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for dropping a key in chat. Uh, whoever gets that, please let me know. Uh, and do say thank you to Forsaken. And yeah, Forsaken, you're more than welcome to come on by whenever we'll be playing this for the rest of the day. Because 
Uh, shock and surprise. This is a very good game, and I want to play it. Oh, okay. So this is the back end of this guy. Well, joke's on him. i got ninja stars now. Hey, this is a Souls game, alright? There's no such thing as a cheap win. Also, they're big old feckin... Yes! No, 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 no. There's no such thing as a cheap win. Oh, yeah, no, um, the eye beams they've got, the kind of the uh, man who fell to earth stylings are feckin' haunting. No, and again, Forsaken, thank you for the key. Uh, I hope launch day goes feckin' splendidly, and may this game sell a million copies. Is it feckin' deserves to? Aha! The easy target armor. Try love. Oh, hardy bloody ha. Try finger, but hold. So this is kind of like a little cheeky shortcut. All right. Uh. This memory lingers in the Hall of Heroes. That is the Hall of Heroes, though, right? Uh, so Mental Monk says there's been a Silent Hill 2 remake announced for the PS5. I mean, yay! A lot of people will get to play Silent Hill 2 that might not have because that's so feckin' expensive to find, but didn't we already get a Silent Hill 2 remake? Hey, look. It's not a NFT riddled pachinko machine, so I'm not against it. But... After I was splintered... Uh, after I was splintered, uh, as so often I was, I would take back to the repair shop and be restrung for a further encounter. Okay. Now, obviously, Lord Drayden, we would never, ever suggest uh, downloading emulators to play games online that you did not own, because that would be against uh, the Twitch terms and conditions. Obviously, we're not suggesting that. But... Does the PS5 just exist to be a remake machine? And does our character know how to jump? I don't think it does. I'm just, I'm sitting here and I'm pondering it, and Returnal might be the only unique, original, non-remake game for the PS5. Okay, sorry, I know there are more original games, but you know what I mean. Games that are the kind that will inspire you to pick up a brand new console. Now, the Demon Souls remaster was definitely one that was worth it, and I'd be very interested to play it. Just... Uh, Lord Change says Stray might count. Well, Stray's multi-format. And again, I'm not challenging anybody that has a PS5. I'm not saying um, uh, that you are by any means bad or wrong. I just... 
One of my personal rules when acquiring a console is that it has to be three unique experiences on it that I can't get anywhere else. I guess uh, Horizon uh, Journey to the West. Horizon Forbidden West, sorry. Journey to the West is... Uh, a tale as old as time. Okay. So what's a tether set? Sometimes you may want to backtrack. Tether a beacon so before you do, later you are finished backtracking, you can walk to your tethered beacon. This will allow you to pick up where you left off. Okay. That's kind of cool. What's a return icon? Uh, released when a withered heroic icon... Release a withered heroic icon back into the world. Your own heroic icon will become stronger and increase in its uses. Wait! I am confused by a great many Deciphering things! Deciphering where to remember a relic will not always be easy. Once restored, they will each yield answers, piecing together the mystery of what Nostalgia is. And through those insights, what you must be. Through your deeds, we will remember more. Okay. Yeah, uh, Miles Morales was on PS4 as well. Uh, Varvel says Gran Turismo, Ratchet and Clank, Returnal, and Ragnarok are the PS5 games on remakes. Okay. So Ragnarok's probably a, a a worthy contender for for those spaces. And so, oh. at an old man's behest, the stick figure raised its frail limbs to limply push onward. The hero's journey, too arduous for its meager pixels, would prove a humorous spectacle. It's feckin' brutal, but all right, mate. Oh, wow, we're into the town proper. Heroes not welcome! It's giving me real Mogworld vibes, you know? Uh, the idea that the introduction of player characters to a, a once peaceful land, turning them into the games they become, is what makes them a miserable affair. I am one Soon the walking scribble would understand all that was lost. Ah, Yarnum. Because he went, Yah! Yeah, I'll cut through these pixels with ease. Feck your couch. Feck your cart! But don't feck the brewery. The booze is sacred. <laughs> Sorry, Barbels was saying they've got more uses out of their PS5. Or Shaft Village. You carry one relic that can be remembered here. Oh, that's cool. So it's not... Alright, kids. Alright. Calm down. Calm down. Alright, now then, now then. There we go. No, just a Varble saying they got more uses out of uh, their PS5 as a Blu-ray player than as anything else. In fairness, the PS4 has always been kind of like a more of a home entertainment hub for myself than anything else. But, uh, get your quest and leave. Keep moving. All 
Alright, let's see what we can find. Let the guinea pigs cry out for more salad! As the slums get more and more pixelated. Oh yes, a caffeine and a vehicle for Gundam Insanity. Is that... Is that a low poly brothel? Oh shit! This I did not expect. Aha! Oh, this looks right fancy. A ruined boastful mug. What the hell is a ruined boastful mug? A once common mug, now glitching with sequence of indecipherable runes. This is not how this item is meant to exist. Marking yourself with these runes will up your critical chance. Okay. I think we got a feather that did something... Alright, so that's not stable yet, so we can't open it. I wonder what we need to do to, like, to give it stability. And Wolfie. Uh, Watto and welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, I, I'm hoping that when you say you gain a few new bruises, that was for, for good and or fun reasons, not bad ones. Uh, welcome to the last hero of Nostragaia. Uh, a... A satire-filled, Solzian title. Very evocative of... Oh, look. A uh, very evocative of the Solzian series. Uh, and Restless Roots, I didn't expect I would have to say out loud the term low poly brothel. But here we are. <laughs> and Lizzie is correct. If any of you ever receive injuries doing things that may or may not be illegal, don't tell me. Oh, cool. It's the people dogs. Hate this. Ha! What is your deal, weird dog people? Uh, Wolfie says they were very legal activities. Yes. And we will ask no more questions. Oh, I went to fencing club. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have not gotten permission to enter the low poly brothel. So, uh, did anyone see... Is there Has there been any other announcements other than the PS5 remake of... Uh, Silent Hill 2. Oh, Jesus. Uh, all fruit. Uh, 50,000 memory. Good thing we don't have to eat. Fireplace stone. Instead of a hearthstone. Excuse me, I was currently wrecking your town. Interrupt me. And finish ruining all of this furniture. Oh, it's a man it's a man dog. Oh, feck you, man dog! Uh Wolfie says nope, they just uh, practice a uh, martial art from about four hundred years ago. You've been practicing a martial art for four hundred years and you're still getting bruises? I'd ask for your money back at this point. Sorry. I definitely need more coffee. The Legend of Independence. Uh, 
An ancient legend about some past hero's uh, autonomy. Uh, this can inspire confidence, inspire a confident smith to reforge your weapons and to be more something powerful, but not lose scaling. Interesting. Wellity, wellity, wellity. We meet uh, again. Yeah, it was a bunch of Silent Hill news. Who'd have thought? All right. Don't worry, friends. We found just an unassuming and insignificant house. All right, so what was... Ooh. And who's that? That is Mean Machine Dean. Part man, part robot. All grumpy for reasons unknown. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Dean, Watto and welcome. How are you doing? How was your day? Tell us about your stream. Come on in, friends. Come on in. Uh... Just check out this new armor we got. All right. Um, so, I was stripped from a corpse of my wearer beneath a statue of the Great One, whom the rotting NPCs longed to deface. The fence is better and lighter, so let's feckin' go. Um... <laughs> mean Machine Dean was saying that was a perfect description. I do try, friend. I do try. Uh, and was just playing this. Um, was doing really, really bad as a tie, but it's great fun. Feckin' yo. Um, I got hands-on with this at PAX and have been enamored with it. I love meta-narrative games. Like, anything that uses the language of video games to itself tell a story. Uh, yesterday we played a game called Title Pending, which was fascinating. And I've been waiting for this for quite some time. Now, I've just gotten past the like the the core bonfire spot, if you will, getting into the town. So I'm into the game proper. Like the narrator's kind of eased up on heckling us, and things are unfurling slowly. But I'm frankly fascinated by this game. And I'm trying to keep me weight down. There we go. Now I look like an aggressive skeleton about to mug somebody. There we go. Um, so yeah, so uh, Dean, Pope Griffin, it is lovely to make your acquaintance. Um, I sh Thank you both for the follows. Uh, to introduce myself very quickly, I'm Will. It's lovely to meet you both. Uh, I worked in the games industry. Whether I do or do not still work in the game industry is a, mir is a, a murky question with many answers. But I dream for a living, so... This is, this is what I do to pay the bills. So, hello. <laughs> uh, so, Dean, how far into this did you get? Uh, and sorry if you want to head on off and... Um, of course it's locked. Of course the uh, unassuming and insignificant house is locked. Shenanigans. Okay. So, I'm not too, too, like, either far uh, ahead or behind you. Uh, excuse you. Someone's tippity tapping up there. Ah. <laughs> Pull the lever, crunk! That person really just bring a broom to a fight. Okay. Uh, so, um, so Pope and uh, Me Machine Dean, I do like wrestling, uh, but I would not be able to call myself a true wrestling fan. I don't know a lot about it. So this, uh, this was a t-shirt that Loading Ready Run did for a while back in the, uh, the glory days of Overwatch. And that particular year, um, even though I had informed my bank that I was working and that I was going to be going to Seattle for work, they locked my card. 
and so I couldn't pick up any stuff or merch or anything from PAX. I was reliant on, like, basically friends feeding me. And um, Graham gave me this shirt and one of the spooky coffee pins. Just gave them to me. And uh, so, while Overwatch may be a very different beast now, uh, I still wear this with a, a little bit of pride, you know? This was a, this was a gift from a kind person. Sick. Oh, he's throwing bombs at me. That that is rude, sir. All right, I need to get around so I can beat that guy to death with my. Damn it! Oh, damn it, man dog! I can hate man dog. Oh, it's another NPC waiting room. Although, this does look like a craft room, so... Nah, this isn't the right place. Because they vibrate when they're ready. Um, so, uh, Dean and Pope Griffin, um, I'm just getting the skinny from Aperios now about these Silent Hill announcements. Uh, so parents are saying, so we've got the Silent Hill 2 remake trailer, and a new mainline Silent Hill game trailer. Okay. A uh, silent game being produced by Annapurna. What? 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 Okay. Okay, so... Um... Uh, the uh, the mental monk popped in and told us about the remake, and I was like, meh, big shrug. It feels like the PS5 is becoming kind of a remake machine at the moment, so neither here nor there. But a new mainline Silent Hill game sounds excellent. Annapurna getting a crack at the Silent Hill license is something that I wholeheartedly support. That's excellent. Like that's something that we deserve. I'm a big fan of the kinds of... The styles of games Annapurna puts together and how they do it. Um, but a Silent Hill film... I mean, yay? But the interactive Silent Hill show by Bad Robot and Behaviour Interactive affected by viewer choices is canon. And Bad Robot knows what they're doing then when it comes to, to video gamey stuff. Alright, fuck you. Bad word, bomber man. Prickly mirror code. What in the hot heggity is that? An unsanctioned algorithm for harnessing source causes damage to enemies in close proximity. It's a bomb. Uh, requires. Oh, requires thirteen source. So we can't use that yet, but if we get smart, we can get uh, Explodo. Okay, uh, Dean, thank you again for the raid. Uh, I will do my very best to be entertaining for, for Pope Griffin and the rest of your lovely viewership. Uh, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. So yeah, so uh, Pope, if you ever want to, well, if there's any questions you've ever had about the video games industry, um, hi, I could probably answer them. Unless it's, how do I make my shader good? And then I'm like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, we got Wallasaurus in there. They can answer. Oh god, Wallasaurus, I wish I could have, like... I wish I could have Naruto summoned you last night. Like, I wish I could have been like, psh, 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 boof. Which probably would have been very jarring because of time zones. You probably would have been in bed. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I was talking to uh, a young lad. A British lad who's currently in Seattle hunting for work. And was like, hey. I want to be. Uh, I'm still trying to be a, a character artist. How do I go about that? And. Like I came up with some. Some 
some good concepts for things they can do portfolio wise and they got speaking to some people who actually like run their own studios and teams like that but i was like none of the people in that conversation were artists by trade all right elevator still locked so yeah i wish i could have yeah frog scroll summoned you there and hookshot good morning uh, Pope's like, yeah, how do I project a shadow PNG into a mess in Substance Painter, as opposed to relying on bump map and lighting? Oh, Pope Griffin, that's such an interesting qu- Oh, would you look at that? It's a tiny alien! Hello! Pay no attention to the fact that Will doesn't know how to do technical art stuff. I'm just here being your little friend. I actually think this was an emotional support, um, thing I bought from- I bought this at the supermarket when Fiona was hungover. That was a good time. You're right, Pope Griffin. I didn't expect that. I walked straight into it. I uh, know. So my area of expertise is community management. And oh, well, this is dark. But hang on. Yeah, uh, the Gilded Axe. Okay. So to those of you who've just joined us, this is the hero for Nostragaia. Um, it is a satirical, like Stanley Parable meets Souls game. Where you play a pixelated hero, uh, and the narrator fucking hates us. Um, it is fucking brilliant. But one of the uh, unlock systems in this is inspired. So, all of the items and weapons in Nostragaia, the the relics, are trying to remember what they were. As you try and restore the land with memory. What you have to do is you have to take objects to the place where they, uh, to a place of notes, so they might remember themselves. And not only does it make the weapon more powerful, unlocks an additional move, but the more things that you remember, uh, or the more items that you remember, the more cool shit that you unlock for yourself, regardless of whether you use it. I feckin' love it. Uh, so for here, we can remember this gilded axe. Yeah. And now we not only get a lore drop, but also the quality of the object's model increases. So now it's a high def model. Uh, the four great ones held dominion over Nostragaia. Gorm the Consumer, Lounge Shorts Leonard, uh, Wondish Gonsenberg, the Fanatic, and Mercurio, the Pipe Layer. Ha! <laughs> The pipe layer. Really? Really? When they who grind usurped the vacant quadrant of power. Okay, that's cool. Uh, the remnant great ones uh, shunned it, for it was not a manifestation of legacy, only addiction. Spurned by its peers, the grinder's insatiable search amplified within the minds. My hero sought to carry the favor of the great ones by vanquishing their twisted counterparts within the depths. He failed. I was scavenged by terrified NPCs who brought me down upon the necks of their desperate ritual sacrifices. The Almighty remained silent, but the wall of the church rumbled from the ever-growing abomination within the mountain's belly. Yo! Lounge shorts Leonard's. I wonder who that could be in reference to. It's, it's Leisure Suit Larry. Just in case anyone wasn't. Yeah. Um, but sorry, jumping back in, so uh, Pope Griffin was saying that they're mostly a self-taught asset developer for Second Life. It's all YouTube and messing around, so hardly called themselves seasoned. Hey, it's no worry. Weirdly, I met one of the OG um, devs from... Uh... Ah, it's the shame is... Increased damage to humanoids. Increased parity, uh, party damage. Parity? Party? Whatever. Uh, we'll stick with the... We need a we need a strength weapon to really kick some ass. But yeah, uh, this game is feckin' cool. And the idea of, like, grinding to increase stats from the perspective of the world that you do it in, that's pretty cool. God. This is kind of like... If Neil Gaiman wrote Dot .hack. Ah, oh, feckin' man dog's back. Oh, that's a great description of this game. 
Or maybe Terry Pratchett might be a better one for the snark. Yeah, it's like if Terry Pratchett wrote dot .hack. There we go. I don't know if the, the devs are still hanging around. So, Gaiman, Hack, uh, Southern UK Metalhead. Uh, I grew up in uh, West Sussex. Uh, but I lived in um, London probably the longest amount of time. Uh, I moved out to Seattle a few years back for work. That turned out to be a disaster. Um, but that's how I ended up streaming full time. So, you know, silver lining and all that. Well, that's a boss. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So the broom doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does some kind of like poison over time? Oh, fuck you! You absolute bastard! Flinging poo bombs at me. Oh, they're not damaging bombs. They're make me not run good bombs. And now, Lost Flowers, we'll go back and see if it checks. London Astoria, Borderline? Uh, I've, Pope Griffin, I've definitely went to the, the Borderline in Soho a, a bunch of times. I once wiped out a table there trying to do a handspring. <laughs> uh, I worked at a uh, post-production house in Carnaby for a while. So, yeah, Tottenham Court Road and Soho was kind of my backyard for a bit. Oh, yes, Lost Flowers, A Tower of Time. Chronomancy. That's a great idea. Uh, I'll, I'll head back and check it out now that Explody McBad word has been uh, slain. God. Pope Griffin, those ring a bell, but I don't know if it's just been so long. Because, like... God, I'm trying to put everything into timelines. It's like, I was working at Molly's and then North 1 until, God, until, I guess the recession hit, so, I think I moved out of London 2013, 2014. <laughs> and yeah, um. Uh, Pope Griffin, my other claim to fame is uh, I worked at the Creative Assembly for a, a myriad of years on the Total War franchise. Um, yeah, my 15 minutes of fame was getting attacked by dogs. <laughs> I did an unboxing video where I got literally attacked by dogs. Oh, what about Willemus? All right, well, Willemus isn't... Willemus isn't a thing that I'm necessarily known for. It's a thing that people will occasionally DM me and go, What the fuck? Oh, look, it's budget patches. Will is also canon in the Sonic universe. He is just shy <sighs> Not about shy it. shy about it. Okay, sorry. So, Pope Griffin, you're basically getting the full introduction to me, like, in hyperspeed. All right, so... Um... I was the face and voice of a character in Sonic and Friends All-Star Racing Transformed. And uh, back when Hot Pepper Gaming used to be a thing, I did the, the challenge. Uh, I wept openly on the internet. Alright, let's talk to Not Patches. Hello. I said hello with my own mouth. That was amazing. Come on, could you? Golly, you look so heroic. <laughs> Willimus, 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 Willimus. You lot. Willimus. Feckin' lot. 
Oh, Hookshot says I actually haven't left London. I'm still stuck there. I've just been put in some kind of like Murica simulator. It's very realistic. Aren't these walls the most wally walls you've ever seen? <laughs> Okay, so not budget patches, but definitely of the wally walls. Um, I think I'll stay in this corner. <laughs> it really is wonderful to exist. Do you have a quest? Whoa. <laughs> One day, I might try to do something. Talking is fun. It's my job. Hello. Okay. I, I was about to kill this guy, and you know what? Props to him. He's just just living that little best life. Yeah, sadly, it doesn't look like this is the. That's not the the Tower of Time that the uh, the dagger was talking about. But we'll keep looking. We'll keep looking. But okay, sorry. Bacon Avenger, thank you for the bits. They do keep my dumb ass alive. Uh, and Pope, like... It always amazed me... That the metal scene in London was so small. Because you wouldn't think it would be. You'd think it would be massive. But, like, what have you got? Like, Crowbar, Boardline, Lecky Ballroom, Lectureworks. I don't think I actually went to Astoria. I think I talked about it. Um, my frequency used to be a little... Um, uh, a wonderful little, um, it was a Polish pub that every Saturday would get converted into a metal bar in Hounslow called The Pit. And I lived out of there for fucking years. Yeah, it is super weird, the whole two degrees of separation. And again, you'd think with the size of London, it wouldn't be so common, yet here we are. Wait, shit, did we know each other from The Pit? Fuck. <laughs> Termite walks into the bar. He sits down and asks, Hey, is the bartender? Look, I know the joke is bad, but I am known for my antics. <laughs> and puns, feckin' thank you. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, Pope, I lived in Staines for a little while. It is a small world. Um, like back when we had like the feckin' hob and stuff. I think so! Shit! It's a small world after all. I I remember the hat. I'm just trying to remember the face. There's a problem with a lifetime of drinking. Ah. Uh. Do you remember when uh, Rex opened up a tattoo shop? That was like spitting distance of where I was living. And yeah, and that is the one downside about having an iconic uh, headwear or the ilk. Is you take it off and people are like, wait, what? What do you mean you have non-hat attire? Uh, ch uh, Chef Master's lid. See if we can get a backstab on this. I was think it's bullshit that uh, I can get stabbed while I'm falling over. Bad guys can't. <laughs> I mean, Pope. Uh, sorry, friends. Now it's just me and Pope reminiscing about uh, people from Stains. Uh, Rex was. I think we've all known someone of that caliber. Someone who is charismatic, vastly optimistic, maybe not the best at business, but a lovely person. Um, and yeah, of one of Rex's endeavors, he opened a tattoo shop around the corner from where I was set up. Um, the, the Okay, the bizarrity, Pope Griffin, that we probably have either met or drunk together in Stains blows my mind. Um, and so, it's lovely to meet you. Yeah, best friend, worst business, business partner, that was Rex, yeah. Um, I'm glad I got to know him, you know. 
Um, but I didn't get to know him proper until he was doing the tattoo shops. I didn't know him too much from prior because he'd been around the scene, but like I didn't really know him. Yeah. Cheers to you. Rest in peace, you glorious weirdo. I cheers him with a proper drink later. Um, but uh, so, friends, when I talk about <laughs> small world, still don't want to paint it. <laughs> still don't want to paint it. Still a lot of work. Leave the greys on. Um, so, I mean, Pope Griffin, you'll know this, but friends, when I talk about working in uh, a games retail store, I worked the game station in Staines for a bit. Um, because it was during the recession, like, I needed work, uh, film and television wasn't hiring, and once I stopped being an arse, I just started applying for retail jobs. Yo! Oh! And a sorry, that's fucking cool of you, thank you for gifting a sub to, to Pope Griffin. The feckin' bizarrity of being like, yo! <laughs> Meeting another person from the from the Staines crowd. God, what a time. Yeah, sorry, now I'm just in reminiscent mode. And Kybal, what ho and welcome. Welcome back. Um... Yeah, so Pope Griffin, basically after... Uh, after the recession kind of kicked her ass, what happened was uh, I was uh, dating a lass whose family lived in Staines and we were about to buy a house. We're going to buy a house in... Feck it. I think it was... God, I can't remember where now. That's probably a good thing. Because uh, the house in question would actually burn down uh, during a nightclub fire some years later. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so we moved out of my flat uh, and moved in with her parents because we were in the process of signing the deal. And then I lost my job and then they lost their job. So I was stuck in Staines living with my partner's parents. I was the epitome of a disaster. Yeah. Okay, uh, Pope Griffin, we've been rumbled. Kybal's right. Staines isn't actually a real place. It was a place that was made up for the Ali G film. God darn it. They had a chance to rename it anything, and they still kept the Staines in. Yeah, and friends, this isn't a joke. There is literally a small town in the UK just called Staines. But alright. Um, and yeah. Oh, it's St. Ines on Thames now. Okay. Gentrified. Proper good. Stains is like Soho. It's a myth. Why would, You'll never let me forget that. Uh, so, uh, Pope Griffin, we played through um, Watch Dogs Legion. And it was me and my partner playing, uh, play, uh, playing past the pad on stream. So we'd take turns driving around. And the thing was, I was determined to show them London and all the places I went to. They cut Soho, the entirety of Soho, out of um, Watch Dogs Legion. And they made Camden weirdly tiny. Uh, I can't remember what they renamed Cyberdog to be. It was like... Yeah, I, I think Cyberdog was something like, uh, like Robocat or something like along those lines. And... That's a boss. Let's, let's see if we can find a nearby... Uh, Ooh, the edge of entropy. Memory's location is known by an is known by an undiscovered relic. You are also missing an ability. A pixelated blade that's curve edges that's curve that's curve nears the edge of chaos. My owner had all but given up before finding salvation at the shrine where Hoover had transformed. Oh, it's a dex. Where's my strength weapon? Hey, oh yeah, and nice. Red Burning Dragon, I wholeheartedly agree with you. It's great how much better uh, Watch Dogs 2 and Legion stories are from 1. Yeah, I don't remember a river at the end of Slime Lights Road. Oxford Street, entirely gone. You would have thought they'd kept that one in. It's a bit known, that. Um, but I don't know, yeah, if you have a watch of the clip that uh, Favor 6 threw in there, you can just watch me unravel in real time. 
Because it was like the uncanny valley, but for locations. Alright, let's see where else we can... That's locked. Because I kind of want to go back and spend my souls before we keep going. There we go, that's what it was after. Yeah, so here we go. So this is the shortcut back towards. Unburdened. Oh shit! It's the shovel from Shovel Knight. Strength and dex. Done. It's not a relic item, but it's a shovel. Oh shit, this guy's back. What up, this guy? Have you found any answers yet, fledgling? Or any new questions? The citizens of Nostalgaia did not always loathe heroes. We once loved them. And what shall we make of you, I wonder? You walk the hero's path, but you do not quite fit the hero's mold. Perhaps that will serve you. Are you here to save us? Or are you part of our doom? To understand where your path <laughs> leads, you must understand its origin. Nostalgia chose you. So listen to her relics. Okay, so jumping back in, uh, Kimball says, No code. The studio started by the UI lead on Alien just announced a new Silent Hill game. Oh shit! So they're, are they the ones doing the mainline Silent Hill? Are they doing the one that Annapurna's uh, paying for? Man, these are way better uh, news. And sorry, I just... Uh, Pope Griffin mentioned the Trocadero. Uh, a glorious and wonderful... A glorious and wonderful uh, time. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, which game are you playing? Did you get the code for this? Because uh, this is definitely one of those games where you're... I think they mean you to kind of go and beefcake out. And here's me just upgrading damage again. Yeah, and uh, for those of you who, don't, uh, who weren't aware of it, the Trocadero was a gigantic um, arcade setup in the centre of London. Originally home to uh, Sega World. Um, which, by the way... You ever want to go down a fascinating, like, research hole? Look into the, the history of Sega World. Ah, such good times. And it used to be, yeah, one of the most mystically magical places in, in video game nerdery. I don't need to stab these people up, but I want to try out my new shovel. For great shovelry! Strike the earth! But yeah, no, Kimball, that's really cool that we know um, Friendo's working on that. Eh. I win. And Midnight Skyus, Watto and welcome. Um, are just uh, reminiscing about uh, stains and place of London yore with uh, Pope Griffin, who it turns out we were basically like one degree of separation from a thousand years ago. Um, ah, so Kimball, I have played Stories Untold, but I haven't streamed it yet. I've been saving it. <laughs> God. Uh, so, I will say, uh, so Pope was saying that it's bizarre, we, we knew the same person, we probably drank at the same pubs. Um, and I will admit, um, Rex has poorly thought out ideas. The, the drink along with movies, the Blues Brothers night was possibly one of the best piss ups I had in Stains. Uh, so, uh, Pope Griffin, I was dating Talia. I don't know if you knew them. Uh, what had oh. its story been? What telling had spawned it? Whatever its origin, Nostalgia did not want it. 
And we're actually still friends. Yeah, that person's gonna boss mode like something fierce. Oh, sorry, Asari's playing uh, the Elden Chronicle. The mountains are no joke. They do not heck about. Uh, considering the amount of NPCs, this might not be a... I definitely need more stamina. It could be. I mean, so Pope, we were definitely more of the um, the nerdery than the metal. Uh, it was uh, it was Leon that ended up dragging me to the pit and making it kind of like part of my regular routine, you know? Because, God, at the time, I think he was still bartending the pit. No, not Leon the drummer. Leon the bartender. Yeah, I know. Two Leons in the same area. Uh, I will say, this one has murderer and, like, die traitor and stuff written all over it. And the, uh, the definite Ornstein and Smaug stylings there. Uh, and I should say, I know of Leon the drummer. I don't know him, know him. Uh, do you remember that Wolverine-looking guy who ended up on Big Brother? <laughs> Oh, I always forget his name. A hero will come. A hero will come. Leave my door. A hero will come. I'm holding up a here to the end of the shovel. Slaughter. Oh, how my beloveds used to slaughter so. Don't make it weird, dude. Yeah, and he was! He was freaking lapping it up at the pit after. Sorry, friends, I'm trying to I'm trying to regale you all with the stories of old. So basically, in our little metal club, and I say metal club, again, once a week, the pit was a converted with well, the pit was usually a Polish pub by day, it was converted into a metal club once a week. And it was real good because everybody knew each other. Like there was a bouncer on the door, so we didn't have any like knob ends coming in to start trouble and stuff like that. It was a great spot with like like, baby metal fans, not, well, though, baby metal was acceptable, but fans, are, like, young metal fans, and then, like, the old, the grizzled, the classic, all together. Yeah, Dave and Tim, if I can bless him. Um, all jammed together in glorious celebration, and it was such a good time. And, yeah, there was this one guy who went out of his way to look like, uncannically like Logan. I'm talking, like... The white vest, I almost called it, uh, I almost called it something else there. The the white vest, the sideburns, the whole shebang. And he ended up on the British version of Big Brother. And I, I think he lasted at least a week or two before he got uh, bounced. And he just lived off that for the longest time afterwards. Who is there? It's me, Ooh, Shovel Murder. A hero. <gasps> My God. Beloved. Stop making it weird. No, no, no. no. I, I, I cannot let you in. I, I love you too much. My everything. My stars. We cannot risk it. No, no, no. Unless... Should you come upon something with which I could restrain myself in your presence? A, 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 a manacle or, or, or a shackle or, or of some fidelity. Bring it to me so I shan't ravage you unduly then i would open my door and serve you you made it weird i said don't make it weird all right so i guess we gotta we gotta chain up uh professor thirst trap over here so they don't uh uncontrollably ravage us oh found the beach Yeah, I said don't make it weird. He did the opposite of that. I won't lie, the frustration is feck off. Frustration is real. The 
Smith's Such hammer. Such ruin. Such waste. What did you find? The hammer of a smith, my high fidelity friend. Are you a hero? I... I I'm an apprentice smith. Or, I was meant to be. I've sought some memory of Nostalgia's craft and tradition, but all I've found is forgotten. With no masters to teach me, I'll never become a smith. Uh, Kaimo says the Elden Ring board game is coming to Kickstarter in November. Uh, by my understanding, uh, it won't come with any instructions on how to set it up. You just have to work it out. Knock it off, dude. Yeah. It's uh, just Pope Griffin, it's so fascinating. Because you're right, like, I've not found anything else like the pit. Um, now, I've been really lucky. Um, I got. I got into video games. Um, yeah, after after the recession kicked my ass, uh, I got offered a minimum wage job at Sega Europe in Gunnersbury. So it was just like a big grey office job, but it was testing video games. It was brutal, but you know, I I did all right at it. I then ended up getting hired into Creative Assembly. Um, was commuting down to Horsham, which fuck that noise. Um, and then yeah, that would end up being kind of like my my video game career. Uh, now I'm out in Seattle, and I haven't really kind of connected with the metal scene out here. Um, I kept meaning to. Um, we've got a goth club called the Mercury, but there was this guy who was a complete cockwomble who I didn't realize had moved out of the area, but I was kind of avoiding him because I was a little bit worried that I was going to glass him if I saw him. Yes, the guinea pigs like the story. Um, but yeah... Both the video game communities and the streamer communities out here in Seattle are really close knit. So while it's not the same, I kind of have that vibe. Like I can go like last night was the Seattle Indies meet, which sounds like a fucking miserable activity, but it's just like people who are industry legends, people who are like students and green beans, all just hanging together and just neck in pints. Um, the streamer meet does always end up being either a monstrous piss up or a, a bit of a party. But again, it's lots of people who... There's lots of people really close-knit. And so I've been lucky enough to find that same kind of community stuff. Uh, the problem is is that we don't go feckin' ham to, uh, to Slipknot once a Saturday. God. Friends, metal is a strange genre. There's a lot of metal that is not good unless you are shit-faced with your, fr with your mates on the floor and it's a great time. On the dance floor, not actually on the floor. That's a different level of drunk. Uh, Phyllis says they've got friends who are big into the Mercury and a couple even DJ. That's fucking cool. It was just, um, yeah. When, uh, when Shitbones was still in the area, uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to accidentally run into him on a night out and then just Uh, Kybal saw a metal band tonight and had a great time. Uh, you, I think you told me who it was. I'm sorry I forgot. God. I mean, here's where it all gets bizarre. I was reminiscing with um, uh, a PAX. I was reminiscing with one of the other expats about how fecking good uh, Sticky Mike's uh, is or was. I can't remember if Sticky Mike's ended up having to close, sadly. That was one of my favorite setups. Uh, and Pope was going on to say that, honestly, it's the natural evolution. The metal scene was pretty much the nerds of the 80s and 90s, and now it's kind of turned into a, a, a geeky butterfly of acceptance, which I'm into the whole, I do wholeheartedly, absolutely. Yeah, Lizzie, before time shitbones. Jimothy shitbones. Well, Fearless, that's what I understand, but... I haven't super duper looked into it because it's obviously an exercise in misery and futility, but I think he's fucked off. But yeah, that was one of the reasons why people would invite me to the Merc and I'd be like, yeah, nah, I'm good. Yes, baby boy. That's why I've not been to the Mercury, so I didn't glass a man. <laughs> Go to jail. But that ain't no crude tool, friend. It's the Smith's Hammer. The instrument of Nostalgia's greatest craftsfolk. <laughs> Any apprentice would know it, even in its current state. A shame it don't remember itself. Um, yeah, and Pope Griffin, and I hope things have been going good with yourself. Like, 
you know, it's it's really feckin' weird uh, that people are watching Ted Lasso and telling me about it, and I'm like, oh shit, that's that's fucking Kingston where I used to. No, not Kingston. That's Richmond. Uh, I was staying in Isleworth when I uh, when I first moved up to to London proper, and so that's where I met Leon at the feckin' comic store in Richmond. And I worked the old ship for like two weeks until I got offered a retail job. Like, it's so it's so weird. Yeah, good old they walk among us. I have to pour paychecks into there. Uh, Kyle was saying that metal kind of fractured into different genres. Metalcore is currently suffering, but black and death metal is getting a resurgence. I see. It's something that I would definitely ask you about, Kimball. I don't have a, a knowledge of tunes. It is fascinating that new metal is cool again, um, because that always used to be the butt of the joke, and I've always liked it. Uh, back when we formed the Council of Metal a thousand years ago, uh, I was the avatar of new metal. <laughs> Joyce cracked me up. That ain't no crude tool, friend. It's the Smith's Hammer, the instrument of Nostalgia's greatest craftsfolk. <laughs> Any okay. okay, so we need to get the hammer to remember itself. And if we can do that... Strength and dexterity. Remember. Oh! We can get it to remember itself in here. Not too shabby. Sorry, Moose, I missed that joke the first time. That was fucking brilliant. Yeah, I need to avoid tearing someone in your glass hole. Online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. What did you do? I. But have the metal genres fractured enough to create I'll some sort my of periodic table? To honor and carry forth our traditions. The hammer has bound itself to me, or. Bound me to it. My skills are meager. But should you find a workable anvil, you can use this relic to summon me. I'll improve your arms best I can. Feckin' yo. Alright, so we've got to find this, uh, this kid in Anvil. Uh, so Kimball says, it's weird what's becoming popular in metal. Uh, Lawn Ashore are heavy, but super popular. I mean, interesting. Like, again, y'all would be the people I would ask. Uh, Pope Griffin was adding that for the longest time, metal went kind of underground, sailing into, like, doom, grind, odd yet heavy and experimental, and now it's climbing back through, like, death metal and black metal and 90s retro. Fascinating. See, the thing was, um, so Pope Griffin, I lived out in New Zealand for a couple years. Uh, I was working for a company called Rocketworks down there. It was real cool. But I was in a, a town called Dunedin, which is so far removed from anywhere else uh, as to be... It's, it's a whole own thing. Um, but what was fascinating was that there was this one little... I, I, I hesitate to call it a club, but one little place which would have live metal like two nights a week. And it didn't really matter what you were going to see. It might be, might be sludge, doom, thrash. You didn't know, but it would always be something interesting. Do you know what I mean? And it was really weird that for a for a time I didn't really have to seek out different gigs and tunes I just kind of rolled up there and whatever was playing uh, one time we got to see uh, a punk band play out of uh, the front of someone's house which is still one of my feckin favourite gigs I've been to but that's another story friends Okay, what in the, s the higgity heck? Dinobot just posted the go live message from yesterday. I was wondering why I had DMs. Yeah, the fighting cocks of the uh, of New Zealand. Shit, yes. Are we are we just having like a 
Are we just having like a little uh, memory and revival moment? Uh, the Fighting Cocks being a uh, a very interesting venue in Kingston. I've gotten drunk there more times than I can account. It used to be one of my but that same Leon, one of his favourite pubs to go get <laughs> riggedy shit faced in, which I do respect. I mean, if someone says you want to pipe at the Fighting Cocks, you're like shit, yeah. Whatever happens, it's gonna be memorable. Anyway, we're gonna find this. Uh, this uh, apprentice smith and anvil. Uh, Kaim says the metal game that's interesting called Metal Hell uh, Singer, uh, with music that's streamable. Nice. I had seen Metal Hell Singer, but I was hesitant because of the streaming part. Uh, we were talking yesterday about Brutal Legend, and people were asking like why we haven't done a stream of it, and it's like it's honestly it's just because. It's a DMCA nightmare. Ah, oh, shit. We found a tavern. Now it's a party, friends. But yeah, um, kind of, I've been looking at Metal Hellsinger. I'm not great at streaming rhythm Perhaps games. Perhaps but... some fragment of it was heroic. A yeah. tiny, imperceptible, forgotten fragment. So much was forgotten. This guy's so rude. It's like, what did I do to you? No reason to be mean. Uh, so Pope Griffin was saying the Metal Hell Singer has a streamer mode to remove anything DMC likely and keep the rest nice. <laughs> Oh well, I guess feck those bins. For great chivalry! Strike the earth! Teeny tiny cardboard box. Venus. Strike the earth! Stop it! Sadlin was saying the Metal Hell is very good and very hard. Sadlin, how are you feeling, mate? Uh, and uh, sorry for the uh, the background. Uh, Amos is our our youngest pop. He is lovely. Uh, he is currently having a bit of a regression day, so uh, he is currently providing uh, a few extra challenges to Fiona's day. All right. So what did we find? So we found meat. Consume to fully heal health and cure all status. Closing your eyes and imagining you were within a tiny box can help you when you are feeling shy. Consume to reduce the range at which enemies will detect you. Um, always seem to land on the desired outcome. Consume for a better chance. And how long it lasts for? Of finding items. Let's keep going. But yeah, I haven't had the chance to properly play Metal Hellsinger yet. I'm looking forward to it. Um... But also, I've had to ease up on the amount of mouse and keyboard uh, FPS games I've been playing, so. Uh, as I was saying to some people last night, uh, basically, I went too hard on Neon White and then on... What was the other title we got really into? Oh, uh, Hyper Demon. And unfortunately, I paid for it. Watch out for uh, Watch out for nostalgia. Watch out for bad game design. <laughs> oh that's mean. I'm gonna put it though. Hey, they gave me the tools to be a jerk. Pick your house. It's not actually bad design, I'm just being a I'm just being cheeky. Amos, baby boy, what are you up to? What are you up to? <laughs> I'm fearless, that was a fun time. So yeah, so Dan Floyd's a good friend though, who uh, streams under... Uh, sorry, who has a very successful YouTube channel. 
uh, which is uh, New Frame Plus and then Play Frame. Oh, this is the... I wonder how we stabilize doors. Sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, Dude Got Playing Neon White, which is a speedrunning uh, FPS game. And because I'd been heavily competing with the rest of the longship, which is our little corner here. Yeah, thank you for the shout out. Uh, that's uh, Floydo's uh, streaming space. But because I'd been competing with Sadlern and the rest of the uh, the longship, my times were brutal. Baby boy. <laughs> oh, cool. Man dog's back. Oh, damn it, man dog. Alright, what do you think? Friend or foe? Memory of an important NPC. Don't seem to be attacking. Oh, we can interact. Uh oh. Hurt us. Must try. Hurt us. Why does everyone in this place have some kind of bond when hero hurt us? Heroes, pathetic. Our bond. Okay, why does everyone in this feckin' town have some weird-ass fetishes? Why am I responsible? Bunch of thirsty numpties, I tell me. Oh! Okay, apparently I'm a feckin' stupid. So I picked this up earlier, and it's... Master Chef's Iron Apron. It's Master Chief's Green Armor. God, why am I stupid? I'm going to have to go make myself a, another cup of tea or a coffee or something in a second, because obvious jokes are going over my head. But all right. Let's see if we can wake this person up inside. <laughs> yes! Our bond begun. Why are you all weird? Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Sounds like he's into it. Apparently so. And <laughs> Restless Roots. I keep calling Relentless Roots. Restless Roots was like, well, at least he's happy. You know what? And for all that uncomfortableness, they did ask permission. I did that voluntarily. Uh, forgotten Night Helm. Let's have a look at this one as well. Um, so this relic's memory has been forgotten. Fascinating. And it just says Ash. Ash? Ash. That's fascinating. So some stuff can say... Oh, yeah, I said Relentless Roots is when you get caffeinated. Alright, we're seriously opening this little world up, though. So, like, now, if we wanted to start, like, grinding this area, we absolutely could. Suddenly, um, a cow. <laughs> Are you proud of yourself, narrator? Are you proud of... Oh, wow, there's like a huge cliff face. Just drop a cow on us. Jerk. What happened to there is no cow level? Oi, you! Get back! Oh, you know what? I don't care. Kill the alerted! Remember, friends. There is no cow level. Oh, okay. That person's a lot tougher than I am. But now the furniture isn't. 
memory of an important NPC and some more access. Uh, actually, I wasn't paying attention long enough to see how long the... Um... Hey! Uh, well, Pope Griffin, have a lovely rest of your evening. The Cow King is not real. It can't hurt you. Until it does. You can always be the first. Um, but Pope Griffin, it was lovely to, I guess, re-meet you. Um, yeah, I'm here like five days a week if you want to talk video games and hang out. You are cordially invited. Oh yes, and we have a really good Discord as well. Like, legitimately a good one. Uh, our, the longship as a whole is built up of people uh, across like UK, Europe, the US, so, you know. Oh yeah, and if you're into Sea of Thieves, by the way, we have a lot of, a lot of competent sailors. Um... Feckin' yo! What a, what a feckin' great little evening! Okay. So the stink bombs stop me from running. That's their power. Oh, and I think what would have happened is that those guys would have ambushed me from the rooftop if I hadn't gone up here first. Okay. God, it's just, that's so surreal. When you consider how massive Twitch is as a place, and of the people I find, it's some other good friend though. So, jumping back, jumping back. So, I was asking Satan how they're doing, and they're like, the shoulder hurts, but their keyboard nerd friend gave him a program that lets you swap the left side of your keyboard with the right, so I can type one-handed. Still super slow, but I'm doing better with it. Ain't they worry? I'll, I'll do my best not to ask you long, drawn-out questions <laughs> that involve lots of typing. Nah, but Sadlin, I, I I hope you heal as fast as you can, friend, because this sucks. For great chivalry! Oh, ho, ho, that's a twofer. Oh, oh, Pope Griffin, I'll uh, I'll have a look now. Uh, Pope Griffin added me on the Instagrams. Uh, in fairness, I don't really use Instagram apart from... I don't really use Instagram for anything more than... Oh, no, that's someone completely different. I I mean, Griffin, you're not wrong. It is absolutely better than Twitter. Unfortunately, I'm kind of... I'm locked into Twitter for the rest of forever. So I've just got to like it and or lump it. But I did just find a new weapon. The relic can only be remembered through sacrificing of a hundred and... Oh, cool! So this particular weapon can remember... But it costs memory to do so. Okay, so not everything is locational based. This could be interesting. Yeah. Pope Griffin, have a lovely rest of your evening. May the Codex be ever in your favour. Okay, so the Calibre of Memory says, My hero spawned alongside her rival, the wielder of bad dream. In wisdom, they forsook their conflict for the salvation of Nostra Gaia. They hoped to succeed in dethroning corruption where rivalry would only weaken their noble cause. And it all seemed possible. The lair of the adversary lay before them, but friendship revealed its treachery. I was dropped as a broadside of bad dream shoved my hero through the slippery gate, a portal into an inescapable pocket of eternal torture. Fuck. That's dark. Oh, uh, sorry, yes, I did see the, um, it was like a full-sized Hulk Buster uh, Lego kit. Seems really feckin' cool. That guy is either a friend or a messy fight. Ten 
Jae-yong! What? I just got yelled at and I got an anti-hero pothead. Strike the earth. Smash the furniture! Yeah, I guess I just got invaded? <laughs> you can say a lot about this game, friends, but it is not dull. God. What the fuck are you? Golly gosh, look at you! You really are retro, huh? Takes Me? one to no one. I'm the Reservoir of Pain. <laughs> Pleasure to make your acquaintance. The what? <laughs> what now? It's difficult to know who you can trust. I, I get that. Cryptic old men who can't remember their purpose. Forgotten relics wailing on about their tortured memories. And nobody telling you exactly what to do. You've been left to figure things out for yourself. And that's terrible. So, let me help. Nostalgia was a gauntlet where heroes would journey, suffer a bit, unfortunately, and then sacrifice themselves back to the world's heart so that new stories could begin. These new stories were inspired by what came before. They built on the beauty of the past. But heroes quit letting go. They grew obsessed with maintaining their dominance, living their own legacies. And without new inspiration, Nostalgia is being forgotten. Anywho, if selfish heroes won't give themselves back willingly, a real hero will have to make them let go. Then, Nostalgia's heart will open again. <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like we should kill it. The first great one chokes Nostalgia from the depths of her minds. All you gotta do is kill it. <laughs> I can't believe nobody told you that explicitly. That must have been really hard for you. The Reservoir of Pain. Yes, we shall we shall get the heavy the flavor. The first great one ch all you I that must have I don't I don't I uh Okay, it's the first character who has told us anything in a straightforward and concise manner. And in the same breath, I desperately want to kill it. It's not stable. Okay. Why does it have a butt? No. 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 The memory of an NPC boss zone. I guess that's more... Can I kill it? Should I kill it? The lanky bundle wobbled and climbed, ever eager to reach some height unsuited to it. Why are you so mean? Is that a gold shortage, hunters wanted. It's gold there. Well, we know where the quest markers were being made. There's the manacles. And the legend of independence. Alright. Uh, this object lacks fidelity. Ooh. Alright, so we're going to be backtracking to check stuff out, but... Feckin' yo. I'll rest so that way we can get a bit more uh, scample up the mantle and all that. Alright, what do we need? Yeah, that deck scaling is going real nice. Oh, I was going to go make some tea, wasn't I? Alright, well let's talk to the blacksmith. Uh, and then we'll take the manacles down to the other creepy kinkster. Hey, oh! Yeah. 
Whoa! <laughs> you found a workable anvil. This forge used to refine the ore extracted from Nostalgaia's mines. Mostly theatrics, really, for the sake of you and yours. But some materials were used for meaningful things, like improving our hero's arms. <laughs> Took pride in our work back then. <sighs> no sign of a master smith. Well, I have some crude skills. I'll aid you. Best I can, hero. All right. So, hone weapons. All right. Uh, we do have some. Uh, we do have some souls. That uh, sorry, some uh, memories that we can remember. So we can we can max out the unburdened. Currently, this doesn't do too too much, but it hits so hard. And infuse weapons. Uh, so infuse weapon with the. So okay. So this would make it purely either a strength or a dex weapon. Okay. If you find another anvil, especially with a master smith, remember to summon me there too. All right. Uh, so Red Burning Dragon says, remember what uh, the Reservoir said? Uh, I think the narrator is a hero of past who ascended to a higher plane of existence. It seems that... Hey! Month to month plan was just purchased for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. Yar! I don't know what that means, but it seems right pretty. Um, whoever that was, um, I'm guessing that was a, I'm guessing that was humble monthly, right? Um, like sincerely, thank you. Uh, right. I'm gonna go either make a coffee or a cup of tea. Might make myself a quick sarnie. Uh, and then let's keep going. We're going to head back into town. We're going to give the creepy widow the shackles and then go from there. Uh, Kimball, uh, I'm sorry I missed your message, but sleep well. Congratulations on kicking ass um, with your uh, your Gundam Halloween entry. It's uh, definitely put the fire under me to, to get it going proper, you know? It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Because I think we're guaranteed to have about like three or four entries. So it's going to be a good day. Right. Do not go anywhere? I'll leave you with the uh, the rhythmic hammering of our little smith, and I'll be back in just a second.
Alright, let me just get my Sony. This is how dedicated I am to kicking ass today. I've got a whole ass cafetier to myself. We're doing this. Okay, and I have returned. I have a gigantic sandwich. I have enough coffee to reanimate the fucking dead. We're doing this. I'm gonna put my hoodie on. It's actually started to cool down in Seattle, which is nice. Um, it's get, it's, I love the hoodie weather, shocking no one. Uh, but holy crud, it is smoky today. Like, even for us up here. Like, I hope those of you in the greater Seattle region are doing alright, because, oh boy, it is not nice. Like, to an extent, like, I can even see, like, a bit of the the, the light rays in the house. Alright. So, what were we doing? Oh, we were going to go back, give what's-his-face his feckin' shackles, and go from there. I gotta fight hard enough to, to earn this sandwich. Hey! This resub is brought to you by Will's Sandwich, the tastiest sandwich around Will. <laughs> that is its official review. Uh, no, I've actually I've gotta move everything around. I, I'm really bad for just putting things in my workspace and being like, oh, I'm gonna find a place for that later, and then forgetting about it because I'm a dingleberry. Uh, Akira Zero, how is your day going? Uh, how do you feel about Soulsian games? And this is the last hero of Nostral Gaia. I'm just gonna beefcake my sword up. Let's see what else we've got. Uh. Okay, so Legend of Independence is more powerful but loose scaling. We probably want scaling later on. Okay, and the manacles will be taken down there. I wonder if. Alright, let's horn the blade. Alright. So now it kicks a little bit more ass. And yes, that does appear to be the Shovel Knight shovel. Uh, and it wrecks face because it's a strength deck scaling. And those are two of the things I love to do. Way cool. Hmm, sorry. My manners are all over the place today. Uh, so Kira Zero. I hope the commute's not too brutal, but that's really interesting. Uh, Akira Zero is working on developing their got it game engine skills. I don't know if secretly Robin is still chilling, but I know Robin and I think Occult Game Dev as well and some peeps have had experience in got it. So, yeah, if you want any people to chat to about that, we have a bunch of peeps in the long shit. If you find another anvil, especially with a master smith, remember to summon me there too. Uh, Kirazura says they're getting better at it, uh, getting uh, slowly weaned off of Unity. That's understandable. Um, I need to do a humorous follow up because I felt a little bit bad about the last one I did, but uh, I did a. Um, God, I hate that thing. 
Uh, I did like a, if you'll forgive the terminology, fuck, marry, kill uh, for game engines of Unreal, Unity, and Goddard. And I wasn't necessarily surprised with the results, but I didn't realize how badly Unity had hurt so many people. Uh, Night Valen, that was a butt. Wish it wasn't, but it was. Yeah, those dinguses up on the feckin' roof throwing slow bombs at me. Teeny tiny cardboard box. Darn it, man dog! I just killed Mandor. What did you think were you going to be able to do there, buddy? For great chivalry. Just living out my own weird little... Kalima. Okay, well firstly, that was rude. Hmm. We haven't learnt how to stabilize things yet. That'll be an interesting one. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to, to casually reference uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Wait, did we go down this weird little spot? No. Alright, we didn't explore here. So much to find. So little time. Oh yeah, so uh, Akira Zero and those of you who have just joined us... Uh, so this is the last hero of Nostral Gaia. It is a satirical Soulsian adventure with a <laughs> with a narrator who is perturbed by my very existence. Uh, also, uh, Midnight, one of the reasons why I keep making that joke is uh, I've become a bit of a, a box wine fiend during lockdown. And one of my favorite maneuvers, rip the top off the box, jam your hand in through the carton, you scream Kali Ma as you squeeze the last life out of the bag. Because I'm really cool and hip like that. You know, making those cool hip up-to-date references like Indiana Jones the Temple of Doom. And Akira Zero, that's really cool to hear. Like... One, getting to do game dev -y stuff with friends is always fun. Um, and having peeps who are willing to like walk you through the beginnings of an engine. Because when you take someone through the beginning parts of an engine, you just want to do it for them. You just want to help them get to the making part, but you've got to let them learn. So that's quite cool. Um, I have not. <laughs> yeah, midnight. All along, I was the dork. Um, for all oh, for all my talking, I still haven't downloaded UE5, and I still haven't started fecking around with it. That sounds way cool. Uh, again, sorry, Akira Zeros. They're making a 2D Raiden clone. Yeah, that's a good place to kind of like... Cut your teeth. Now with destructible asteroids. Oh, fancy. Forgive me while I'm stuffing my face, friends. I did not realize how feckin' hungry I was until I started eating. And now I'm just like... Rah, 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 rah.
I do feel a little bit bad for all the jokes I've made about Goddard over the years. Now it's becoming more and more of a viable engine to work with. I I, I feel I, I feel like I've leveled a lot of unfair criticism. I used to joke that how do you know how do you know someone's making a game in Goddard? Don't worry, they'll tell you. And that <laughs> Goddard developers uh, are to the game dev scene what vegans are to cheese. Um, and I regret those jokes wholeheartedly. Not that Goddard as an engine or as the people who make it even desperately care about my opinion, but I feel like I need to apologize to them, you know? Anyway. Cheers all. Um, Hookshot was saying that Unity has them hooked in. Ah, what you did there, I saw it. But also understandable, because I know you've done a lot of and have a lot of projects already ongoing. And there's no such thing as just casually swapping engines. Yeah, and Fearless, that's completely understandable. Like, I don't know if UE5 is better, but I know UEs 3 and 4 were an ass to work with if your goal was to make a 2D game. I know a few friends who were working on a strictly UE 2D, I think it was like a stealth em up game. Looks gorgeous, but oh boy, it has taken them about three years longer than any of their competitors. God damn it, man dog. Like, I killed it, but I feel like I still lost that fight. <laughs> uh, Hookshot was saying that currently they have three projects all running in Unity, plus heaps of middleware they've built just to be able to drop into stuff in their next title, so they're kind of they're locked into it. Yeah. Like, changing engine for your good selves would be a massive undertaking. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> My hero returns! You're still weird and gross. Alright, here's your manacles. A hero provides. My hero provides. And a sorry... Have a lovely rest of your evening. Uh, thank you for chucking in. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope oh, things are going well. My hero! Why oh, you gotta make this weird? I kind of don't want to go too close. Lest I get, how did he put it? Ravish. Welcome to my shop. Uh, a forgotten primal element ravaged by pixelation. Some relics are too far gone to be restored. So we've got a torch. We've got a vibrating sword. Okay. Katana. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure what these runes are. Are these things we can just add to weapons or equipables?
An easy maker chainmail. Okay. Honestly, I might pick up the katana because we can just get it remembered. And Flair, I do not understand why. I think we're almost reaching like a homogeny of AAA art style that is just getting blander and blander. As the teams get larger, so too does the... Um... Ooh. The Shield of Nostalgia. Oh, sorry, uh, Flair, how are you doing, friend? Watto and welcome! Uh, I haven't told these lovely Mother Hubbards about the Great Bezos heist yet, uh, but you'll be proud to know that we're up to at least uh, five heisters. Like, this is this is actually a viable thing. Uh, and uh, Akira Zero and Peeps have been chatting about Goddard, which, other than recommending it, I can't really say too much. So we're going to buy the sword. I'm going to use the sword to remember. I feel like I'm going to need the torch later. And the sliver of tradition is always nice. Uh, I can't use the other two because they're uh, mage, uh, mage weapons or equipment. So we go to the inventory, and then here we go. Oh, peoples and bin bags. But yeah, Flair, this game is feckin' brilliant. It's got a wry humour and sarcasm to it that I love. And play gameplay wise, it's feckin' good. Uh, now, this is the, the little hook to it, is the memory system. So, you acquire items in the world, and to unlock their powers, you have to you have to remember them, or they have to remember themselves, which means you either take them to a place or you provide them with something. This one's pretty easy because we just have to provide it with enough memory to restore it. But, like, I had this sweet axe from earlier on that we then ended up taking to a place like a church where a bunch of NPCs got beheaded. It was feckin' dark, but... When you remember the weapons, they get an updated model, more damage, and more abilities. But for every weapon that you remember, it increases your stats and skills overall, even if you don't equip them. Okay. We relics are bearers of tradition. Excuse me. We remain... We remain the living legacies of wielders. Ah, one of my messages was really good. Um, and long after they themselves pass from this coil, we are meant to be used by another and another and then another to further the goodness hoped for by those that came before and to learn from their mistakes. We reverberate with the past. The future may take form. To forget me and my kin is not only to lose what was, but in that loss, the source of what may be. Oh, you're right, dramatic sword, aren't you? Welcome. All right. I'm gonna buy a couple of these. I'll do like this and then, so damage to evil, damage to humanoids, but I don't know. Is these, are these equip slots? Oh, okay, yes, the runes are. Increase stamina regen, crit chance up. Wait, right, stamina regen, thank you, because I'm using a big weapon, and damage to people! Now let's try talking. As an FYI, this guy's been super thirsty oh. weird. So just brace yourself, I guess. I have long longed for you, my radiance. We all did. Once, 
I wish you could experience the parades and feasts we held in your honor. Banner maidens and clamoring children all thronging the streets to glimpse our salvation. Our markets overflowing with the bounty each hero's deeds had brought us. That was enough, but we have forgotten. I must never unbind myself in your presence, my everything. For should the great forgetting take me, I could not bear that these pixels I was should turn ravenous upon you. Okay. I can't help but notice you're still charging me, but you know. All right. Now, if we were going for the true Solzian experience, what I would do is farm the shit out of this area uh, and then buy all of his stuff and never speak to him again. As is the custom in these parts. This shovel kicks ass. Increased damage to humanoids, don't mind if I do. Though this place looks I thought the true soul's experience was to buy everything from the shopkeep then kill him for the last unique item. Or, in my original Dark Souls playthrough, uh, murder him first uh, and then steal his shit uh, after you realize that he was the only person who could sell you arrows and you can't get the dragon's tail. And yes, as people commented on earlier, I am considering my long-standing tradition of throwing cutlery at people to win. There's no such thing as a fair fight in a Solzian game. Only winners and losers. Covet. Hang on. What did we just get? The uh, requires ten decks. All right. Well, I mean, I'm working on the dexterity at the moment. It is giving me a whole bunch of bonuses. <laughs> and you're right. Everything's a fair fight. The losers can't tell you how they died. I don't think I'm supposed to be going this way, but let's do it anyway. This seems fine. Demon Tear Jerker. Eh. Alright, the Demon Tear Jerker. Oh, strength. Way better. Uh, relic can only be remembered through sacrificing a shit ton of memory. Eh, feck it, why not? What's resor what are resources for? What does our dev vision say about this? God. I'm almost a little sad, though, that there wasn't more to um, title pending. I wanted to be able to play that for a lot more. Oh, no, wait, there was more. Because I remember telling you all, like, yo, you should play... You should get stuck in. All 
Okay, the demon tearjerker, lol. Um, oh. Look at the sword. Demon tearjerker, devil may cry. Fuck! Nostagaya was eternally reborn in the image of heroes. Though the current journeys remain intact, uh, a service to those who had run them, each iteration would incorporate the triumphs of heroes past. These new insights, new possibilities, new obstacles, and shiny new aesthetics made the world fun. When Mercurio abandoned the great ritual, the rebinding of the world broke. Nostragaya shuddered, distorted, and gasped with each subsequent attempt. The evolution of heroes' legacies no longer emerged naturally, so they began to impose them. So this basically seems like a Solzian title. Alright, which is better though? So currently we have the Unburdened Shovel. 255, and this is 299. <laughs> uh, that's cool as shit. Let's dance. Catchphrase. Ah, darn it. Sorry, I was trying to think of like a, a of a mimetic uh, of a mimetic variation of Devil May Cry's jackpot, and all I could think of was catchphrase. That that doesn't will. That's not a catchphrase. That's not how it works. Uh, but we've got uh, NPCs equipment. Concept, nostalgia, recursion. All right, we'll put it here, and we'll go for like victory ahead. Watch out for sword! Suddenly, sword! Oh wow! Look at sword! I want that. <laughs> I'm a winner! Chance time! There we go, Red Burning Dragon. A winner is me! No, that's not a good catchphrase. Yeah, chance time. Gacha mechanics! No, shit, that doesn't work either. <laughs> I never expected to be a person with a catchphrase. You can never, you can never control these things. Despite not being a person who plays Solzian games exclusively, I have there's so much I owe to Solzian titles. Right, now who can we crush with this great big sword? Your catchphrase is Argh! Help! I'm in need of a catchphrase and I'm very confused by basic concepts. Oh shit, you know what it is? The low poly brothel is probably where we're gonna um, unlock some uh, hidden memories. But I'm really digging the concept of this game, which, so far as I can tell, is this was a Soulsian game, like a proper Souls like, but it had one cool mechanic. Oh, hello. Hello! He is not in there, okay. Um, so the mechanic of this particular Soulsian game was that as each person um, like rekindled the flame or completed the game or what have you, uh, that their experience would be added to the world and then would be folded into other people's games. Honestly, I've always loved the concept of that. It's a development nightmare and I have no idea how you would do it, but it's something I've always been kind of fascinated with, you know? Um, I think it was because... We had that promise with, I want to say, Fable 3. Alright, can't break through the wall. We had the promise with Fable 3 of the legacy weapons. 
Um, which did not work. I mean, they were they were fine as a concept, but I had really hoped for more. And I think ever since I encountered that, I've just been enamored with the idea of games that that grow with us. Do you know what I mean? I love the idea of a game that you play through to completion, and because you've played it, it enriches somebody else's experience. Um, one of my favorite games of recent memory has been uh, Keeper RL. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more stamina. Um, and Keeper RL has one cool function that I haven't seen in another title. So, it plays kind of like a... Oh! Down in one. Uh, it plays like a Dwarf Fortress Dungeon Keeper mash -em up However, the point at which it really shines is the fact that... The boss of your run-through will be another player who has completed the game. Mm. So Restless Roots... That's the thing. It's fun, but how in the feck would we implement it? What kind of game would it be? Um, Dragon's Dogma had the, the sidekick system, which had some dumb name. But essentially you could hire your friend's characters to fight for you, which I thought was really cool. I'm gonna go upstairs and murder those guys before we continue. Like, I thought that was genuinely inspired. But it did lead to situations where, if you had a friend that was very good at Dragon's Dogma, you could bring them in game. <laughs> Dead. You could bring them in game and they would be this incredible overpowered warrior to fight for you. Cause I'm on the back swing. Remember kids, if you've got time to cheer, you've got time to fight. Um, but yeah, so it created a certain level of unbalance. Keeper RL had the idea that you would always face off against someone who has built a dungeon that won the game. So your final castle that you have to siege, the final battle that you have to do... Actually, you know what? I'm just going to put something like creepiness ahead. Uh, so we want emotions, happiness, joy, hilarity, love, curiosity, confusion, bad... Uh, disgust ahead. There we go. They'll understand in a second. Um, so I thought that was really inspired. And I love the idea of a game like this where it takes elements of your friend's run-throughs and adds them together. Uh, I believe it was Quadrilateral Cowboy uh, allowed you to leave post-it notes in the world that your friends could see. Which was fine, but I forgot that I am friends with a lot of people now on Steam. So when I got some messages from Secretly Robin being like, Yo, why are there post-it notes covered in ASCII penises <laughs> around your gate? And I'm like, um... It was very funny at the s when I first did it. It's like, how can we let people's games share with one another in such a way... ...as to improve upon the experience, not detract from it, you know? I know a, a few. All right, so hone weapon. What do we need for this? Yes. And yeah, I think the only thing we've got is. Oh yeah, so the the Legend of Independence changes the scaling, but makes it hit harder. I think we will eventually. If you find another anvil. Especially with a master smith. 
Uh, that'll probably end up with doing less damage, not more, but yeah. Uh, so Akira Zero says, "What if you could put the same kind of idea in Dragon's Dog, uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma with XCOM? Could you? Yes. Should you? That's the question." Lacking any depth of its own, the sticks began poking into the depths of our world. Oh fuck you, mate! Rude. You explore outside. Words can hurt, narrator. Words can hurt. the hell did we just pick up the the sliver of what's your what's it now that's what we get for not paying attention oh the sliver of tradition sorry i think i need one more to upgrade the sword some more but yeah so akira zero that's the question is, how do we integrate games like this and make it fun? So Nostra Gaia puts forward the idea that, imagine a Souls-like game, that when you finish the game, ah, there are the characters, the grinders, um, that when you finish the game, everything that you have done in that run up until then becomes part of the, the overall experience. So if you think about the, the cycles of Dark Souls, you're continuing on from another player's cycle. And what seems to have happened here is that these players have actively broken the cycle. Instead of doing what they're supposed to, you know, end the game, enter into the heart of the world. What they've chosen to do... Cobo, it's on attacking me. Um, so yeah, instead of... No, this person probably will. Ah! God, I love this sword. Oh! Chance time! Yeah, we might have to work on a new catchphrase for this weapon. Um... Okay. No! Curses! The Cobalts have chained AI! I don't want to kill Cobalts. Try hole. Wink. Let's see if we can use the, um... Oh wow, five relics can be remembered out here? Ow. Okay. Sorry, I, here's, I am, here I am careening around. Um, now Bressus was suggesting that level sync to what's appropriate for the game at that point could work. And I will say, the idea of a... Uh, in Pokemon, that the, uh... That Victory Road is comprised of people that you know who have beaten Pokemon can be fascinating. How's oh, it here? Hey, 
I will. Why are you not blocking with your shield? Because apparently I decided to put it away because I am a dingus. Oh, uh, bear with me just a second, friend. Sorry about that, friends. Thank you for waiting. Uh, also, I paused this. This game doesn't pause. Oh, and Restless. Have a lovely rest of your day. Like, to be continued, friend. Um, Alright, so we can now travel around a little bit better. I'm just going to murder some folk real quick. I like this sword. It's a right good sword. And I don't think we got... Okay, hang on. We've got to kill Man Dog. Thankfully, I've got that big swing. Um, oh, yeah, so, okay. The idea of being able to take elements from one game and invest them into another person's. Like, creatively, I fucking love that. Um, but it's how would we actually implement it? Um, because either we need to share the data between the players, like, passively or actively. Now, the idea of a game like this that you play through and then pass to somebody else afterwards is pretty feckin' cool, not gonna lie. Alright, I gotta learn how to use this feckin' sword. <laughs> Darn right, you got an X above you! Just an unassuming and insignificant house. God darn it! The Covert Cultists Cover. Before the Age of Tyrants, my siblings and I were carried by NPCs who played the role of baddies. Of course, even baddies loved the hero then. Ugh, our brandishers would kidnap willing NPCs who pretended not to notice our, symbiolo our symbology into the cult beneath the village, foreshadowing of a confrontation that would eventually determine each hero's fate, and so on and so forth. God, this game is real feckin' cute. And I do love the concept that up until everything went wrong, even the enemies in this world really loved the heroes because of what they added to it. I think that's a really cute concept, you know? Really? Hell with Beresy. So we have one object that can be remembered here. Oh, and we have five objects that can be remembered up in the... Um... That could have gone better. Hoping you were going to do that sooner. I'm also not entirely sure as to the regions, but I feel like something something's going to be remembered in front of this honeybee area. Sorry, Deus was saying it's no more than you'd find anywhere else in humanity. Everyone loves unicycling bagpipers dressed as Gandalf riding through town because what other town has that? That's true. Although it's heavily implied in this that the the hero's path is what leads to the both the enriching of this world and also its maintenance. That's why the current What's tyrants a thing to be rendered as you are in a world degrading to pixelization. And to be that world's only hope, <laughs> the almighty inspiration must be desperate. Or very, very wise. 
No one has looked at me and said wisdom, so good luck with that, mate. Alright, so this takes us down to here. That we've got to open from the other side. I think this brings us into town. Sorry, hold that thought. Doing a sneak with a massive sword. I'm right, sneaky. Yeah, sorry, my brain's kind of whirring on like, because creatively, as I said, I love the idea of shared world experiences. I don't always want to play with people in a co in a cooperative experience. For me, I tend to play at my own pace, especially for multiplayer games. And it can be hard as someone who doesn't have a massive amount of time, you know, outside of work, to be able to dedicate to multiplayer experiences. You know, I'm not a big fan of playing things like... I don't want to think of a good example, but... Ah. Oh, are you kidding me? So, I'm going to need you to just die. <laughs> Frankly, it's getting embarrassing for both of us. I just... I keep thinking about titles that I've tried. I know Smedley tried to do an organically generated MMO, which was mildly fascinating, but sadly, I don't think it hit the beats that everyone was hoping it would. Uh, that one failed so poorly, it got pulled off of Steam. And admittedly, it wasn't fun, but... Still, it had premise, had heart. Wait, where's the elevator? Because the elevator leads up to the mines. God damn it, rocks. <laughs> oh, look, free XP. Delicious. Uh, jumping back into chat, so Akira was saying that they love Inscription. You can create a card for someone else to play against the boss. It's not a bad shout, and we did see a situation where um, cards from other parts of the uh, the Daniel Mullins verse started appearing, which is very clever. But... I don't know, if we want to go for something deeper than that... Now, there... Here's the thing. How do you add to a world in a meaningful way... Without horribly, un without horribly unbalancing the game. I guess that's the kind of questions I'm asking. Because what people are suggesting about potentially like an XCOM game with shareable characters, that's great. But XCOM is very much built on your kind of your character's success, right? Uh, XO, I hadn't heard about that one. Uh, and I've been kind of getting like drips and drabs of the Konami announce. Uh, some individuals that myself and Kimble know are working on one of the Silent Hill games. Uh, and I don't know if they announced the new mainline Silent Hill game. I don't know if they announced if that's going to or not going to be a PS5 exclusive. Oh, AR, definitely not what Let It Die did. Although Let It Die's interconnectivity was quite interesting because it was other people who have been killed in the Tower of Barbs popping up in your game. So I thought that was fascinating. So that not only you have to slay your old self, but you also have to find other people who have been beaten. That 
How is this hearth not a place to remember something? It's a nice, it's a nice little fireplace. I'd love to remember some shit there. So AR, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. So you're saying that there are some people in Let It Die who would die in specific places to mess people up. Uh, how did that work? Because by my understanding, like... Oh, where did we last rest? <laughs> Forsaken stranger, thank you. Where did we last rest? I was getting too cocky. No! Ugh. How did this happen to me? Um, but yeah, so AR, if you wouldn't mind like expanding on that one, because I'm, I'm not uh, challenging you by any means. I'm curious. That's what I get for going for a big long wander. Overconfidence, a slow and insidious killer. Overconfidence has absolutely no downsides whatsoever. In fact, I recommend it all the time. Signed, that one guy from Darkest Dungeon. And Bacon, thank you for the bits, friend. Okay, so AL says they would go get high tier gear, go back to the beginning and die, which would put a ghoul near the start of the game. Say the exit to the tutorial, the top level gear, so new players have no chance. Interesting. Because by my understanding, you don't get anything for your your character murdering people, right? Oh, got the disgraced glare. A look I have been given many, many times. Stranger! Oh, and again, sorry, uh, Forsaken Stranger. Waho and welcome. Um, I will try not to get my ass handed to me again by losing concentration. Like a sharp hit. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, Deus, it's one of those, I wish you weren't right, but you are. Okay, so the Forsaken Stranger is also playing this at the same time, and uh, is using the same sword. I see you are also a person of taste. I mean, when you can make baddies do that, it's very hard to make a business case to not use this to wreck people's face. Uh, anyway, uh, hi, I'm Will. Lovely to meet you. Uh, I used to work in video games, and now I do this for a living. It's the, the standard pitch. So if you want to talk uh, video gamery. I am your person to chat to! I'll give, I'll give two, okay, no. I'll give two-handing it uh, another try after we've dealt with Mandog here. These, the, the Mandog is no joke. 
Oh, the old, the old one two. Unfortunately, they don't survive long enough to get uh, jabbed in the uppers. Yeah. And so Akira Zero, I guess that's the interesting thing is how do we how do we as game creators have that same kind of like non-direct interconnectivity without it potentially ruining the experience? Oh, don't try and be cute. Do you think you're cute? Actually, I think I'm so-so, but I've decided to carry myself like I'm cute. <laughs> Sorry, just quotes popping into my head. Alright, let me get my, uh, my pixels back. And break somebody's fecking face tonight. That's how it's done. I found a strange one that tried to do interconnectivity was near automatic tomato. I don't know what I did there, but I broke that person's face. Okay. Oh, and how we got the weirdo. Now, Akira Zero, you're right. Roguelikes could be a good space to, to experiment with that. You know, your run, good or ill, could be passed into to someone somewhere. Okay. So Exo was saying that from today's Konami showcase, it feels like, you know, Konami as a whole are trying to relaunch themselves back into the world of games. It does make sense. Level up, do 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 do. All you can upgrade is strength. What about quests? What if I didn't want to buy the potion? Are they supposed to be stick dudes? Alright, let's head back into the mines. Friend! I'm gonna try not to kill any kobolds, which means I can't use my ninja stars of, of shenanigans. Uh, if I do everything correctly as best I can, I should be okay. The only reason I hit the cobalts here is because that dingleberry pushed me out of... Uh, pushed my aim off. Oh, it wasn't... Okay, it's that guy that propped him to attack me. Piece of shit. Oh, you feckin' piece of shit. Oh, it's on. It wasn't on before, it's on. Wrecked by the first hero. I got wrecked by the first jerk! <laughs> uh, and XO, I am having a very good time with this. Just uh, occasionally keeping an eye on our stuff, seeing if uh, anything that can be uh, awoken in the mines. The thing I will say that's kind of fascinating is that... No! 
I am going to use you as a one-person sheath. This is, this is on. Or, maybe I should take a breather, sip some coffee, and just talk to you lot. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, Forsaken, um, that was actually a medical grade oof. Like, textbook medical tier oof. What is happening? What is happening? Yeah, Caldera, I think maybe a 20 minute breather isn't a bad shout. I'm just, I'm making dumb mistakes. Like we've already breezed through that area. Well, so the, uh, sorry, so jumping back into chat, um, cause Exo was saying like without, um, uh, kidnapping Hideo Kojima and forcing him to make more Metal Gears, there's not much they can do. Problem was, after, after Hideo Kojima's success, Konami stopped putting people first when it came to, like, marketing, because Kojima became too powerful within Konami. Like, I don't fully resent them for what happened with Metal Gear Solid V, because had Hideo Kojima been left to his own devices, like, Metal Gear Solid V wouldn't be out yet. I mean, in fairness, Konami would have run out of money before it got made, and this game would have just ended up dying. You know, the things they did with Ground Zeroes, and basically forcing him to finish up law, uh, release. Is... Again, it's not something that I hold against them. But since that point they've been unable to really focus or grasp you know the fact that they haven't taken the 360 ports of their core metal gear series and released them on steam is money on the table and i don't mean to be blasé it's just the 360 is a very easy console to port stuff from it's not like the ps3 or anything like that so a lot of a larger portion of the work is done people would buy those you could sell them all for thirty to forty dollars a pop separately, rather than the trio pack they were released in, which, by the way, was fucking lunacy. You know, the fact that at the time the console re-release of uh, Peace Walker wasn't just a standalone game showed you how out of touch Konami were with their gaming franchise. Now, if this is their intent to relaunch, that sounds good. And it seems like Sony is the one footing the bill for this, like, Silent Hill revamp. Because it's been well known that Silent Hill is a brand. It might not sell amazing, but it's got weight. Yeah, XO. 360 to PC is Microsoft to Microsoft. It's a platform already designed to play nice with home computers. Like... Sorry, I, um... I forget what I was watching. Some kind of, uh... Oh no, it was still Misfits, uh, and instead of calling um, calling them PCs, they were calling them home computers. You got them home computers? So it's entered back into my lexicon, uh, which amuses me greatly. It is a wonderful term to use to annoy your friends. Uh, you got one of them uh, home computers, what plays games? PC, yes. Yeah. But... I, I would love to get a moment, I would love to get a day or two to just be a fly on the wall at like Konami management because, yeah. I mean, the move they made to Pachinko wasn't a dumb one, but it definitely was unpopular and then once everything went down, uh, that being the feckin' plague, uh, Konami were left with a business model that was just not viable anymore. Like, no one's, no one goes to Pachinko Palace. They may have seen a slight resurgence, but at least as has been explained to me, like, 
the group of people who were very heavily set in that style of gambling have since ceased. They've moved on to like online casinos, mobile phone gambling, that kind of thing, which isn't good, but it means pachinko parlors just don't turn a profit like they used to. And Fearless, I do not disagree. I do not disagree. But again, it's just... Some of their offerings over the last few years have been very weak. But they've been the kind of... They've... I'm trying to think how to... Alright, I just want to have a quick look at our, um, our player stats. Alright, so we've uh, remembered... Decreased relic requirements. Okay. Oh shit! Oh shit! Look at these! Okay, unlock by increasing your luck. Five creates critical hits. Uh, extra items from pickups. 25% damage uh, for three seconds on attack. Increased drop rate. If you can get. If you can get your luck up to 40, you take no damage. Holy shit. Sorry, let me get distracted. Um, now, Forsaken Stranger, I wholeheartedly agree. I remember seeing that cutscene of the incredible reunion between um, Snake and Big Boss. Oh, sorry, Snake and the Boss. And seeing it rendered with such incredible fidelity was just... You know, it really got you in the feels. And then to find out that that was a cutscene from a pachinko game, I thought was just feckin' nonsense. Uh, so Exo says, How would you remaster Metal Gear game without having communication for Kojima or his team to help? The thing is, a larger portion of those games weren't genius. They were the first. Um, as we saw with Twin Snakes, it's entirely possible to recreate the the vibe and feel of a Metal Gear Solid game with a different team. So long as you can like keep the the VO lines you, so long as you can maintain like the music and the style. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, good luck. Cook well. Um... To be continued, Akira Zero. To be continued. I mean, I always love talking about this topic, so... Fucking we. Um... But I guess XO... I mean, that's the difference between, like, you know, remake, remaster, etc. We haven't quite gotten a, a condensed language. But right now, if I say, yo, you've got to play Metal Gear Solid 3... Your ways to play it are limited. Right? The fact that you can't just play ports of those old titles is ridiculous. Now, MGS4 never leaving the PS3 is is a, trav a travesty. Um, but Metal Gear Solid 4 was definitely the overreach. Someone came up with a term for it, and I hate that I've forgotten it, which was when you don't want to progress forward because you don't want to activate a story beat and then come back to an area that you'll never be able to visit again. Uh, sorry, you get pulled out of the area that you're in and you'll never be able to return. Because MGS4 was just rife with those. Uh, and Fearless, here's the thing. I will still... I will give Metal Gear Solid Survive its due. It did some incredible things. And... There is a very good game in there. I don't think many people survived the, like, hour and a half long hyper overstory visual novel tutorialization rather than just letting you do the thing. But... Honestly, I don't think Survive was a bad idea. And there's parts of it that are still brilliant. Um, well, so Fearless, we will be doing a stream of MGS4 at 3 at some point. 
And I'm really looking forward to, to sharing it with people who haven't seen it. And thankfully, the 360 version is the subsistence. So the, the third person action cam and first person modes... Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I'm, not, I'm not dissing on uh, Hideo Kojima. It was just more. Metal Gear Solid 4 was a game that desperately needed someone with oversight to pull Kojima back from the edge on a lot of his decisions. But it was the completion of a long running series, and he had a lot of like weight and power. Plus, it was the reason to buy a PS3. Because let's be honest, the PS3 did not do good. Now, it's unlikely we'll see that ported because the PS3 is a piece of shite. Especially for porting and moving. PS4 onwards apparently is lovely, but that's another story. Um, you could definitely see in Metal Gear Solid 5 that no one being able to tell... Kojima no. There being no producer who had power over the project meant that it would have gone on ad infinitum. If you play through MGS5, it is apparently one part of what would have been a three-act structure. And the first act is like 30, 40 hours long. Uh, act two is kind of a lot of mini-missions that sort of peter out. like, And then the implied act three, feck knows what that would have been. And the thing is, when you take into consideration Ground Zeroes and how much content was in that, and then MGS5. And the MGS5 is only about, like, 60% of what was intended before they just had to tell him stop. Like, I'm just really glad that Death Stranding was focused and concise. I don't know what changed between those two projects, but... Oh, also, the Fox engine was built specifically for MGS5. And to my knowledge, it hasn't been used for a lot of engines. Yeah, I mean, XO, I, it, as sad as it is, the Dragon Guard series definitely died with 3. But, Nier has gained this whole new fandom, which makes me very happy. Uh, I don't know when we're going to do our run of Nier Replicant, but we will be doing it. The problem is, I'm going to need you all to bear with me while we do multiple runs, because we need to get the, the extra endings, and the extra endings are shenanigans. What I might try and do is... Um, uh, blitz through bits of it like off stream so that when we get through the first few run throughs we can kind of clear the clear the nonsense okie dokie lokies all right let's head back into the mines i've got some dingleberries to murder with a great big sword And Fearless, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I, I don't think it's uh, a, a genius revelation to say that the intent was that the Fox engine would be used for a lot of different things. Okay, that person is bullshitting chips. It's time to murder, 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 murder. Hey, big girl. But yeah, so um, fearless. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the goal was to create a game engine for making multiple Metal Gear Solid games going forward. But it is absolutely not what happened. It got used for MGS5, well, and technically Ground Zeroes. And that was it! Yeah, Red Burning Dragon, at least I'm not doing death push-ups. Hey, and by Friday I should be almost recovered from the last time you all made me do that. Why do you have guilty face? What did you do? Where did you find those? Did you just- did you steal things from children? No. Okay, so uh, friends, you have to imagine the situation. Fiona is standing in the doorway giving me the biggest guilty face of all time. And I'm like, wait, what happened? And has acquired- Wait, these have like- Candy- They're like little- they've actually got food in them! The Happy Meals. In a little pocket! It's the special Happy Meal. <laughs> I wish I had. I wish I had yummy down on a whole ass Sony now. Damn, I, I can't finish it. I'm full. Yeah. Oh man, this one came with fruit slices. You must have pissed somebody off. That's how they come now. They all come with fruit slices? Yeah. The poor children of today. <laughs> but no, those are super cute. We'll have to... You didn't, you didn't get these as a kid, did you? No. Oh, so this ain't the nostalgia for you. Oh, okay. This is the nostalgia factor. Okay, see, I don't understand. I'm learning. Uh, they're, 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 they're kids. Well, they don't have toys because I guess this is the toy. Yeah, you can get, yeah, you can get, adults can get Happy Meals. You're an adult, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can buy three Happy Meals. You know, within reason. You can no, warm no murder. No murder. Buy a bunch of Happy Meals and make sure that the children get none of them. Alright, so what does this say? <laughs> Alright. Try finger but hold. Get out of my house. Iron Jimmy. What's up, Iron Jimmy? Iron Jimmy. Strength weapon. My hero leveraged me to particularly to pry open an off-limits NPC door. Okay. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Oh, whoa. And uh, to uh, Rainier, what and welcome. How goes it? Welcome to the last hero of Nostragaia. Hey, I'm gonna need you all to fuck right off now. No! Kobold, more like no bold. All right, I didn't want to have to do this. What? <laughs> I am having fun. How's your day going, friend? And sorry, where are my fucking manners? I'm all over the place today. Rainier, thank you for 40 months of subs. Bye. We were talking about this at uh, the, um, the the Seattle Indies gathering last night. And it was like, ah, water, thank you. Uh, we were talking about this at the Seattle Indies meet last night. It's like, the amount that people have put into keeping the longship going over the last four and a half years, it'll be five years in April, I'm extremely grateful for that one, and I, I do hope that I haven't been skimming over people's stuff. Yeah. Midnight Skies, that was my that was my moment of hubris. I was gonna do the Devil May Cry spinny murder move and be all like, ha ha. Oh yeah, and um, Salem is right that uh, currently the uh, grown-up Happy Meal uh, program has been ruining McDonald's employees' lives. And I'm over here looking at buying the, uh, McDonald's Transformers. Alright. So we've got Ninja Stars. We did a lot better that time. Oh yeah, no, so Vulcanor, this isn't them. 
This is like a... Oh, I've stopped liking um, Cobalts, by the way. It's massacre time. I shall level quickly and murder with impunity. Cobalt's dead. All right, you bastard, come face me. All right, here we go. <laughs> Throwing stars. I am the Dark Soulsman now. <laughs> I did get good, thank you. Just gonna exclaim victory! Oh, Draconic Dude, did I say uh, hello when you came on in? I hope I did. God, why does it sound like a bunch of things are about to come kick my ass? Yep, there they are. It's alright, I've got an idea. Fucking dog done! Uh, wait, for a second, Phaedra, you found a better weapon. Better than Dante, Devil May Cry, or is it Demon May Tear Up? It's a big club. I bet is a strong word. I found three gold coins. Uh, try remembering heavy weapon. Oh shit, the crowbar! Uh, a heavy prying tool. Uh, but even it cannot budge Nostagawa's uh, forgotten objects. My hero was a free man. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Uh, as he leveraged me to try and access the forbidden rooms of NPCs, the scent of percolating beverages sweetened by milk from the narrator's own collection, oh shit, that's the good stuff, wafted from the hole we were making. Uh, I could not contort the door quickly enough for my hero to scramble through. The mammoth, the mammoth rumble of the grinder was heard growing closer again. My hero didn't want to become part of that thing and we had to escape. Uh, the grinder seems to be a player who grinds, which I find a fascinating concept from an NPC standpoint. Now, I 
wonder if we equip it. Nah, although that is pretty feckin' rad. Big sword. Yeah, uh, well, so Forsaken Stranger, I believe you're correct. Like, from what we've been led to believe, all of the bosses were once great heroes. Okay, we can't open it because it's not stable. And we don't yet know how to make things stable. Because there's a few doors and things we haven't been able to get through. I do agree with you. The the spectrum of what is considered a kobold is fascinating. Suddenly, oh. a fire erupted to burn the kindling down. The narrator is such an arse. Uh, but we did get another sliver of tradition, so... underestimates me and they turn their back and then I'm like wow uh draconic students have come across any cool demos lately I've not really been doing the demo dance uh, I tend to find that uh, for streaming demos aren't great with a few exceptions obviously oh all right fuck you I guess that was rude Apparently those guys can swing a little faster than thought. Uh, but what about your good self? Uh, what was interesting is the game we played yesterday called Title Pending. Apparently a lot of people had played the demo for it uh, already. Oh. So I guess that was definitely a, a success from the... Ah, oh, shit, the bed. We might have to go... Uh... These little shits hit hard. Alright, yeah. Let's, let's return out of the mines. If this is a true Soulsian experience, then what I need to do right now is get swole. That is a very good idea. Pop a homewood bone. Well, pop a witch's finger. Hey! If it, what is it? If it's stupid and it works, it isn't stupid. And I we should. I wonder if the smith's hammer choosing me ain't a sign there may be no masters left. Oh well. Yeah, I had a feeling, yeah. So that's going to cause it to stop. If you me. find another anvil, especially with a master smith. Okay. So we need a quick load so I can get better armor on. Oh, God. And this might be time to, uh, to pop some of the... Yeah, time to pop some of the... Uh, 
the extra memory. Oh wait, we need three and a half K for a heat. Okay, that was very silly. Uh, so Draconic Deuce has been hearing good things about Potionomics. That's the one that dropped recently. Uh, and you enjoy... Uh, Wavetail's the one with the really good movement system, right? Which one's peppered again? Sorry, I've not been batting for 100 today. So I will have to look it up. And you know I will honestly admit if I do not know a game. Saying pepper... Ooh. Most spilled coffee everywhere. That would have been bad. Uh, okay, so I've got peppered wish listed. Oh, yes. When is that dropping? Oh god, it was on Kickstarter. Wait, so they released the demo alongside Kickstarter. A curious idea, to be sure. And they made their goal, even though their goal was only about uh, 14,000 USD. Interesting, interesting. Oh, Draconic Dude, well, thank you for reminding me of that one. I, I do have it wishlisted already. Uh, and it does look fascinating. I oh, see, here we go. You got me distracted. Alright, I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> uh, jumping back in, so Keldara says they find it rather smart. I'd be much more likely to put money towards a game that I like the demo of. It's not a bad shout. I. You know what? And if the title is also promoting the Kickstarter, it's not a bad shout. It's just. Like, 14k is a very small budget to take a an indie game to market. Which means, like, either they're making it very, very cheaply and it's a new, um, it's a new dev or dev team, or they were mostly done and it's either a, a shot in the arm or it's a, a strong marketing maneuver, do you know what I mean? And Caldera, that could also be the case as well, like making a, a vertical slice demo that they could be looking to show to a potential publishers in the ilk. It's not an implausible strategy. Oh, we're going to be able to stabilize the bridge. Because the thing is, friends, I want to start, like, it seems like that's a... Uh, a stained glass window of the different players who rebelled. Uh, so fearless, I mean, maybe, but again, at least the current streaming platforms don't like you jumping between games a lot. So, for example, um, they say it takes about two hours 
for you to find uh, your potential audience in a video game stream. So, we've had a people... Okay, so like Forsaken Stranger, you were... You're new here today. Hello. I'm going to pick on you a little bit. But um, how did you find us? Because the methodology for which people like Forsaken Stranger and peeps find this space... It's... It's a bit of a time-consuming. Okay, Forsaken Stranger was searching for the game. Which means that we have to be live for X amount of time before people can be aware of it and can find it. If we're on games and demos, nobody cares. And if we're jumping between different titles in quick succession... Eventually you're going to start hitting games that people don't really want to watch, so they leave and they don't tend to come back when you rotate to another game. So you're always seeing a decline in people, and then... Like, from there... Steam Next Fest has created a situation where playing through a bunch of demos has been slightly more viable, but... Honestly... I think it is only really Steam Next Fest that's doing anything to make demos valuable. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, demos suck. <laughs> they suck to make, um, and they very rarely help you sell games. Because what happens is that there are only a handful of outcomes from your demo, and more result in lost sales than not. So, all right, user is, uh, a user is curious about a game, they try the demo. Either the demo is bad, and then the user will not buy the product because the demo is bad. The demo is good, um, but the user won't buy the product because they played the demo, and it didn't hit the same kind of beats that they wanted, or it hit the same beats they wanted, but didn't leave them wanting to pick up the full product. And the final one is the user gets the demo, they like the demo, and they like the demo enough to buy the final game. But that's usually something driven by the rest of a large marketing campaign. And despite what everybody says, it is very rare that a demo does not detract or remove from dev time. And because the demo has to be exceedingly polished, you essentially have to launch a teeny tiny little game, which may lose you sales. Now... This philosophy has changed, and Steam Next Fest has done wonders, but that was the reason why, you know, companies stopped putting out demos. Like, after the, the shareware era came to an end, demo discs were fascinating, but they were a lot of time, they were a lot of money, and they didn't get you a return on investment. Honestly, much better to hype the shit out of your game and sell a crapload of copies at launch, even if it's bad than to make a demo, spend extra time and money to create a mini game to share with people that is the equal level of bad and then dead. Um, so Fearless, we do have a few people that do the kind of the, you know, play for a while, see if you like it, and then, hey, throw some cash in. Um... It's, that is a philosophy that can work. It's just, these days, it's the case of how. Um, in mobile, it's called, like, hitting the paywall, and users can find it very, very jarring. Um, I mean, essentially, you could say that a, a game that is free with paid DLC hits a similar kind of beat, like, play it, experience it, and then if you want to put money into it, you can. But... Now, Clank says, Can a demo be useful in a way for indies to generate interest in the game that would have otherwise gotten buried? Uh, again, thanks to Steam Next Fest, yes. But without that, without a promotion that pushes people to look and experience a lot of demos very quickly, essentially, <laughs> if you make a demo for a game that's not getting coverage... What you've done is you've made two games that aren't getting coverage. Because you still have to support a demo. And if the demo doesn't work, if it has technical issues, if it has breaks and problems, users will go, yeah, fuck this, I'm never playing it. 
like, if you think people are cruel when it comes to early access titles and things like that, with demos, they just don't. Like, demos are treated not like a vertical slice. They are treated like a commercial product, but small. You know? Sorry, I don't mean to, to sound so negative on the, the demo sphere. I just, if any of you were making a game and asked me, should I make a demo? I'd be like, nah, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, God, I was going to add something very, very poignant and it disappeared. Heck, it's gone. Um, in the realm of streaming and showing these games off, YouTube has a much better time with those kind of short form experiences because, you know, if a demo is 30 minutes long, then boosh, that's perfect length for a, a quick little, like, one shot let's play. And apparently, uh, YouTube is very against long play series at the moment, so it works within the platform, like, feckin' we. But, yeah, so Draconic Dude, with the, the games and demos category, does work because you don't lose people quite as quickly. However, you don't gain people. Sadly, users don't look through the games and demos category looking for cool shit. Sorry, I should say users don't look through the games and demos category looking for streams to watch. It's... And if they do, it's in such a massive category that's incredibly hard for people to find you. Sorry, I don't mean to, to get into the weeds about... Um, uh, about Twitch nonsense and whatnot. I guess what I'm doing is I'm saying, like, Steam Next Fest is an incredibly powerful tool. And I'm so glad that it's something that we have as an industry now. All about timing. No, sorry, I just was rereading what Clank was saying about, like, generating interest, and I keep thinking about Star Mazes. Was it Star Mazes? God, it was a demo that we played a while back that was just wild and fascinating. No, not Star Mazes, that was a different... Uh, Star Fetchers, that was it. This, like, absolute acid punk experience that got released at the beginning of 2020 uh, did gangbusters in terms of reception but they've still not been able to release episode one and uh, sorry I'm not just trying to come up with reasons as to why demos are bad but it's just like okay have a look at this title it's very Homestuck meets Hotline Miami it's got this really weird uh, Q-op fight system that's surprisingly intuitive once you've had time with it. Like you get to flick the sword around and deflect bullets and be a cool kid. And you've got this weird kind of... I don't know. Like... Beyond the garden wall aesthetic in a thick urban acid fest. Like one of the main bad guys is called like a PNG of a horse. Oh no, stock photo picture of a horse. And so the, the situation that happens with this is when a game demo does good, but I don't believe that they were ready to capitalize on that success. Like... Yeah, last major update was from the devs uh, end of last year. Let's see what uh, see what the status is on this one. 
Now, I do believe a title like Starfetcher should be fine, but... Okay. Oh, feckin' hell. So, I don't even know this. So, in uh, October of this year... So, two years after the successful release of the demo, they finally did a... Uh, a Kickstarter. Oh, no. My apologies. The Kickstarter was back in... Okay, so the Kickstarter was last year. But then dissipated for... Oh, my word. See what I mean? <laughs> Actually, I don't know if I made a cohesive point there at all. But I guess what I'm saying is one, I wish that you I wish you all get to the point where it is a challenge to handle all the success that you have wrought. But also like that is no mean feat. Shit. All right. Sorry, and if that was completely incoherent nonsense, I do apologize. But yeah, kind of like no capes, no demos. And it's one of those things that I don't... I, I hope I'm not coming across too much as like an old curmudgeon. But, you know, when it comes to making games, we have to... We have to deal with the realities of making games, not just the idealistic. Like, I would love us for... I would love us all to be in a position in the industry where, like, we can just put out demos and they get found and it's successful and they don't cost you sales. But sadly, that's not where we're at. I mean, I know we all just jumped on the bandwagon to play the alpha test of uh, Dark Tide, but that's the thing. Dark Tide was already looking to be a success. You know, the keen was already done, and because the demo and the uh, the technical test was stable, like it didn't cause anybody. It didn't cause anybody who might have wanted to buy the game. Well, actually, that's probably not entirely true. You know, I've got to stop being so blasé. I nearly got murdered there because I was just swinging incoherently. And I saddle up like Hubba Break your booty. Well, whatever that is, it looks horrifying. Like legit horrifying. That is that that's bad. I don't like that. Please don't. So there's... Oh, okay, I get it. So there's people working the kobolds. As long as we don't get spotted, we can kind of just assassinate NPCs as needed. I have fucked up. Alright, here we go. What's up? I'm gonna cook fan on in here. Is it warm? Uh, yes. 
and the uh, air quality air quality alerts just went out. Uh, we have the worst in the world. Oh, nice! Yeah, oh, I love it when Seattle's number one for something. Uh, I did notice that um, uh, sky shorties look fucking red out there. Yeah, you can't really see the sun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then let me just pop a pop a stone, and I'll uh, I'll come be useful for a second. Oh, sadlin has got the Space Needle webcam. Oh, going. yes, it's a uh, it's not you can't see anything. Let's have a look. It's all right. We can have the uh, the nice soothing blacksmithing sounds in the background to offset whatever is going on. Loading the Space Needle Panorama Cam. Oh, no. <laughs> Friends, you wanna you wanna see this? It's huh. not good. All right, let's have a look. Um, that's introducing that great Seattle view. This is the view from the Space Needle right now. Uh, oh. oh, I think that's faced in our direction. Wait, is it? Yeah, it's getting up to us. It's getting up to us. Yeah, it's now right about Whee! now facing us. <laughs> This is some fucking. Oh, <laughs> this is so some Blade Runner bad. tier shit. Yeah, gotta love fire season, friends. Dead haze. I feel it's like silent. It's not the dank mist, though. Unfortunately, it is not. It is not the good Kush. It is not the good Kush. Uh, and it's not clouds. Um, Fearless would say that Silent Hill was trending today, and they thought it was because of the haze. Well, this morning it was foggy out. And then it descended into this, and I was like, wait, the fog didn't go- oh no. Oh shit, we're getting into downtown proper now. Fucking hell. Mm. I don't like it. <laughs> Forsaken says they stepped out one year and it looked like someone opened an Oblivion game. Oh god! I had one year coming back from a PAX. Silent Seattle. That's looking out into the bay. Yeah, I had one year coming back from PAX where I got off the bus and it was literally raining ash. The moon was red. It was weird. And I agree with uh, hey, Fearless on. that you know, come on, Bubba. Living in Seattle is very say, cyberpunk. Do you want to say hello? Want to say hello to everybody? Do you want to say hello? All right, uh, and I guess because Forsaken, this is Amos. He is our youngest puppy. It's okay, baby boy. <laughs> Being a say hello to everybody. Being a protest. <laughs> um, up in our area, it's usually okay, but today it's apparently just not having a good time. Yeah, that is that is the wee baby Amos. The wee baby Amos. He is allergic to everything. Uh, but he is a little sweetheart, even though sometimes he sounds like the end of days. <clears throat> uh, right, let me help you with fans and stuff. Uh, so, oh, friendos. All the, the fans are on. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, I've got things sealed. Well, I'll leave uh, the friendos with uh, Big Sword and Blacksmith, my new favourite musical duo. Mm -hmm. And I'll be back with you all in just a second.
I was just saying to Fiona friends, I don't think we need barbecue smoked house, yet here we are. Um, doesn't look like I'll be doing any painting tonight, unless I want that, uh, that barbecue smell Gundam. Uh, I've got an extraction uh, box in the back, which is real cool. Um, I guess if you're if you're new here, you may not have seen it. This is my little Gundam setup. So I have my extraction box for airbrushing and stuff there. That pumps out. I've got my good my good gas mask. Ah, and hookshot, welcome back. But like, I don't want to open the window for the extractor fan because it's just gonna get smoky. Oh. Also, what a feckin' lovely day, friends. Like, I'm obviously not stopping. I need to kill more Cobalts to, to get us through this next little set. I don't think we're quite at a speed bump section yet in the game, but you know what I mean. We're, we're definitely at a, a challenge part. God, equip load is so expensive to get through. Demeanor's probably not a bad shout. Can always spend more later. Um, sorry, no. I'm just I'm having a lovely little day. I was uh, when I was taking a break. I was kind of reminded that like there was a time, friends, when I didn't really get to spend as much. Oh, hello. What have we here? Oh, found Neil Illyria. Uh, well, I didn't get to spend as much time just, like, chatting video games with people and talking about, um... Ha-ha! Alright, we've got a shortcut through the pub now. Love it. Um, and I didn't get to really, like, do as much, like, industry deconstruction as I do now. And I'm so lucky that I get to do that. Like... Yo! Hookshot, I'm real feckin' glad. So, on the subject, uh, Hookshot was saying that one of the best things happened when the keys they gave away at PAX for Lightsmith was a streamer who played the game for six hours yesterday. It was good watching someone enjoy it for so long. The idea of giving away heaps of keys super paid off. Hey, I'm glad. And there's two philosophies that you can look at keys, either as, like, revenue expenditure, lost revenue, or outreach cost, which is what I tend to do. And considering the very indie nature of Lightsmith, like, putting a shitload of keys in people's hands, I thought was a smart idea. And then, you make that money back when it comes time to sell the Sacred Acorn. And Lightsmith basically works as a pseudo-promotion tool. The Depths. In the bomb! It just, I've worked for companies in the past who really, who were really against uh, key giveaways and, you know, giving away key to, keys to like journos and content creators in the ilk, and I, I just never understood that logic. Yeah. For those people that would never have heard of your game otherwise, it's not a lost sale in the slightest. And yeah, Robin, you are correct. No weapon is too big. The piracy discussion is an interesting one. Because sometimes your game getting pirated to hell can be feckin' great. But what kinds of titles is another matter. And uh, we have to remember the Apple situation, which is it should always be you. It should always be easier for users to purchase your game than to steal it. That's uh, that's the kind of the that's the hard and fast rule when it comes to to PC games and like piracy prevention. Obviously, systems like De Novo and stuff like that are really a step too far because that shit gets patched and infuriates paid customers, so no one wins. But. 
the problem whenever it comes to discussing things like key giveaways or piracy or like anti-piracy stuff is you're always kind of at the mercy of whoever's whoever's Mr. Business. Mr. Business. Well, that's just rude. Just club me in the back of the head. Yeah, see, Hookshot, you're entirely spot on. The people who aren't affected by systems like De Novo are the people pirating the game. Uh, I believe, like, was it Final Fantasy? Uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, Resident Evil, I want to say The Village, um, had some early problems at launch with De Novo that were solved by pirating the game. Now, obviously, we do not condone piracy here on the longship, nor are we for it. It's just, there are things you can do to stop your game being pirated that don't involve incredibly intrusive software with a very, very, very bad name. Um, but one of the things that people have discussed is that when it comes to piracy, if you're an indie title, those pirates wouldn't have bought your game anyway. It's not that you're not losing a sale because they wouldn't have bought it. And I understand that. Right, this might be the way to go because it's got a little bit more reach if I'm fighting people one on one. Um, so Hookshot says, remember, Command and Conquer 3 had a five activation limit to stop piracy. Yeah, that sucked. Oh, okay. So CMC, let us not mistake um, DRM for like anti-piracy measures. Uh, and this is not to, to pick on yourself. It's just when this discussion comes across, it is important um, because like systems like Steam uses Love Steam, despite what uh, a few curmudgeonal PC uh, PC enthusiasts said. Steam did not kill video games, and digital rights management software is been pretty good. It's actually done... See, Steam is the example of making it easier to pay than to pirate. That, that is something that I think is um, important. Um, focusing on making a good product, I mean... <sighs> make game good better is a tricky statement to make because often what results in poor games is either mismanagement or lacking of money or yeah. Mm. Oh, and CMC, I'm not saying this to like pick on you. It's just like De Novo is bad. Steam is good. Um, we have the data to prove it. Uh, numbers, Watto and welcome. Ah, piss. I need... Uh, how's it going, Numbers? Sorry, the R piss was because I realised uh, I didn't contact the um, the PO box today. Because both you and Quasi have sent things, and I, I should go pick them up. Uh, or get them sent over. There we go. If I'm going for a strength build, then let's just glass cannon it. I'll just crush people's faces. But yes, CMC, your initial point was correct, that the whole five activations limit thing meant that pirating a copy of Command & Conquer 3 was superior to purchasing it. And that's the thing that we have to avoid. And it's weird to see that still happening, but as we all know, like things like de novo deals happen at a, a such a business level.
Oh, Numbers, I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Um, I, I hope I haven't contributed to it. Things been... God, like, up until really, like, I guess now, uh, nothing stopped moving. <laughs> you know? The, uh, the jaunt down to uh, LA was lovely, but it was full on before we left, and it certainly remained full on after we left. Uh, so CMC is saying they work in music production uh, VSTs, and plugins used dongles and weird anti-piracy schemes as well. God, I remember that. Fucking Avid used to have used to be so expensive with dongles and the ilk. Uh, what we've learned from this situation here is that um, defense is for nerds, and by trying to block things, uh, I have been... <laughs> and I was like, Will, why are you slaughtering these peaceful miners? Well, I tried not slaughtering them, and then they kicked the shit out of me. Uh, because the, um, the weird, like, bald monk-looking creatures, they're kind of like the foreman, and so they can command all of the kobolds to attack at once. So if I leave them, like a nice person, they fucking kill me. Yeah, that was a good idea. That was good advice. Um, and if I try playing cautiously, they two shot me. So I take big sword, I swing big sword, I murder with big sword. Okay, no, but so long as it was a joke. Because the thing is, you took the time to, to send something to the P.O. box, and that's really fucking cool, you know? The fact that I even need a P.O. box so people can send things is still... A re I yeah, it's still mind-boggling, and I don't want you to think I take that shit for granted, you know. Like that guy, he took his butt for granted, and then I cut it off with a two-handed sword. It's my butt now. Uh, but yeah, so the way it works is like if I leave these uh, peaceful miners. Uh, they will all gang up on me at once. But yeah, so to those of you who just joined us, uh, this is the last hero of Nostril Gaia. A satirical Solzian type title. How did I describe it earlier? It's like if Terry Pratchett got to make a Souls like. It's very pithy, it's very funny, and it's exceedingly sharp. Um, oh, that's something great. Your message is bad. So my current philosophy is to hit them much harder than they're able to hit me. Wait, did I kill everybody up here? Hmm, guess we'll find out. Oh yeah, so you see the little chain icon above their head. That means one of the other NPCs has told them to attack me. Jokes on them. Sword says no! Oh god. Very hard to judge distance in here. But yeah, so uh, jumping back to the conversation. So, Hookshot, I'm really glad that the giving away keys has paid off. that person something fierce God, I tell you friends got some more coffee in my system took a breather now kicking ass okay what's the shelter uh, shelter weight stability uh, this memory lingers in an undescribed region a pixelated carapace from a road crossing beast Shelter. 
The full spectrum of magic was used to add colour to the hero's journey. But that feeling is lost from our world. But yeah, so this is a really good Soulsian type game with this excellent like meta narrative hook. The narrator was so offended by our very existence that he refused to do the introduction. Try being evasive. That's bad advice, but... I thought I was extremely dead then. Oh man. Okay, now we're good. I was like, that guy had a glowing pickaxe. I thought we were going to get some cool shit there. Memory of an insignificant NPC. What the hell? Oh, okay. This is one of the... Um... Oh, J-Post, you're right. It's the blue shell from Mario Kart. Remember, heavy weapon. Because uh, we got Gordon Freeman's crowbar there, and we uh, we remembered it. Yeah, so for those of you who have just joined us, these are little, like, uh, NPC staging areas. So the uh, the world of Nostragaia was once a successful, thriving, uh, Solzian video game. Until four players decided they didn't want to continue the cycle anymore, and decided to become the rulers of this world. And they have corrupted it beyond... Recognition. Ninja Star, chop, 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 chop. <laughs> Take it. Remember, friends, it's only a cheap attack if you lose. Otherwise, it's fair, balanced, and good. Oh, well, aren't, they, aren't you interesting? Quickly see what's through here, but now we know how to progress a little. Okay, so this just leads us back into the NPC room. Alright. Um. Oh, cool. Another hand touches the beacon. Oh, cool. Tracking board, current hero, last seen in the wilds. Kill on sight. Um, and there are zero items that can be remembered in this place. Alright. Uh, if any of you want some poorly pixelated coffee, we've got some goodies. Ah, okay. So we can come in from the top and murder a little bit easier. Let's, let's spend some points first. <laughs> Alright, so what do we need? Uh, Stamina's doing good. Equip load would rock so that we can get some heavier armor later. We'll get dex up. Because I'm pretty sure once we hit 10, uh, with dexterity, that gives us some extra goodies. As much as it kills me, the cultist shield is actually better. Yeah, the cultist shield is actually better and lighter. God darn it. God darn it. 
I'm curious as to where um, uh, our other friendo managed to find the big heavy uh, heavyweight mace. Uh, the blue shell shield. Oh, this person. That person was respawning. That's not good. Also, feckin' dig the, um... The glowing pixel art skeleton giving you this kind of, like, rad Under Armour style. What about that? Ruined Nimble Padlock. I once saw Ruined Nimble Padlock open for uh, Incoherent Screaming. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> I think I'm funny, even when I'm not. Right. currently going according to plan. But, that's the great thing. Plans change. New ideas. Meet new people. Smash them with your big sword. Shenanigans. Shenanigans! More points in strength. I'm gonna get violently bitter now. Um, but yeah, so jumping back, jumping back. The piracy discussion is an interesting one from an indie standpoint because there is a school of thought that says if your game is very easy to pirate, that people who may not have played your game in the first place will pirate it rather than buying it. That's, I wouldn't say an illogical stance. It's just... If it becomes known that your game is extremely easy to pirate, that can result in users... Well... Oh, are you fucking me?! Okay, so we can't backstab Big Barry. <sighs> Alright, whatever point I had to make about video games piracy is completely dropped out of my head. I need to murder that big chunky fuck now. I'm gonna slay you like a pint of ice cream. So Hookshot says, Dear Reeve... DRM free games exist. They do. Uh, they're super easy to pirate, and they rarely get pirated. Well, this is the other problem: is that when we start talking about video games piracy, we kind of get a little bit into the the heavy shamanistic because it can be hard to know just how much a game is getting nicked. Now, also, I'm going to get the cheapest win on this bad word. Because, feck them, they know what they did. Go on, stand still. And throw daggers in your face. Cha! 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 Daggers in your face! Daggers in your face! Daggers in your face! Daggers in your face! Old dynamic entry. All right, let me just uh, handle this situation. Play whack a cobalt. Uh, 
try, you will fail. You know what? Fair. Fair. I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah, numbers. It was really nice of them to come single file. I did make a polite request for just that, and uh, it's always nice when those get um, uh, respected. So yeah, so Hookshot, I'm not dismissing what you're saying, and I hope it doesn't come across as, Oh, I know better about piracy. It's more a case of we don't have solid numbers when it comes to these kind of things, and in the AAA space, the concept of lost, rev uh, of lost revenue gets weird. People, people, get, people get real weird when that gets banded around. And it's why companies like De Novo make so much, ma it makes so much cash is that it just takes one executive to get a bee in his bonnet about lost revenue. And things start going the way of the pair. But that's not to say that piracy should be ignored completely. Uh, we all remember Demigod. Well, actually, no, we don't remember Demigod, and I guess that's the problem. Hey, I remember this part from Dark Souls. Um, if you're wondering what the bloody hell I'm talking about, Demigod was a multiplayer proto-moba. Uh, action RTS with infinitely spawning creatures um, that sold very, very poorly at launch, but had an order of magnitude more people log into their servers. And this has kind of served as a cautionary tale that you cannot rely on the uh, altruism of people pirate of people not pirating your game if they can. Wow! Look at that armor. Leonard's Lounge Shorts, feckin' yo! What do they do? Weight, defense. Memory location is known by an undiscovered relic. You're also missing an ability. Alright, so I can't wear... Apparently, I don't have the correct training to wear boxer shorts. Read into that how you will. Oh, and Hookshot, you should absolutely do that. Um, let us remember that the... Uh, not only did users like the Invincible Pink Scorpion, uh, that is not a euphemism, by the way, that is an anti-piracy measure put into um, uh, Serious Sam, but it became like its own fun little challenge and did inspire people to pick up the game. Uh, what a lot of teams will do is create very specific bugs that are only available in the pirated version. So when people come onto like uh, the forums and stuff and complain about X and Y, then you know for sure that person pirated the game. It is, I mean, it is cheeky as hell that people will go onto things like the Steam forums and complain about, uh, excuse me! I can die! So rude. Uh, Neo Shadow, I know Thor does uh, the... Uh, Thor does the uh, the error message. I think something really heinous happens to the characters at one point. If I remember it correctly. Oh, so uh, apparently one of them is it plays super loud music all the time. And... Oh, yeah, Mirror's Edge had... The pirated version of Mirror's Edge had one gap that was just ever too slightly too long. Though capable of oh. besting the victims of Nostalgia's decay, the stick figure had not yet faced a hero. A great one. Such would reveal the futility of everything an old man and some sticks sought to prove. That seems bad. That's bad, isn't it? If it gives me a save point beforehand, I know I'm in the shit. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, the textures have come back in. The crystals are no longer like flat billboards. No it. Merkel. 
help me with this fight, Merkel? No! Hero and Merkel Bond. We help Hero. Insane laugh. <laughs> we know Hero. Go forth together! Together. Oakshot says uh, there's a bug they're introducing, which is a my, uh, music slider that doesn't always work. Oh, hero and wood together. Oh, here we go. The grinder. Uh, excuse me. Nope, don't like that. Merkel, give me a hand. I'm fighting players here. PvP no likey. This is not good. Oh cool, it's made up of everyone it's ever killed! Oh, and it's super quick as well! Love it, this is... Oh, my face! It just broke my face! It was big and made of corpses and it broke my face! Alright. Here we go. Remember kids, don't hit too hard. So we're gonna try and just blitz past these peeps just head for the boss. Because I don't wanna do that. So many of you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, I am so smart. I am so smart. But yeah, sorry, um, I, I'm half telling you stories because the game keeps interrupting me. Uh, TLDR, for Serious Sam, there was an invincible immortal scorpion who would slowly track you through each level if you're playing the pirated copy. But the thing was, as you progress further, the scorpion gets slowly faster and faster uh, until you can't outrun them, creating this, actually, this wonderful, fun little experience. Oh, here we to get. Like an impossible game, certainly. But all right. So if these fecos get close enough together, I can go hop. Right, I can almost hop a char there. Alright, Warcraft villages. Let's freaking go! Alright. So they're down. Now here comes the grinder. I seriously love the concept of the grinder. That being someone whose strength is built on the back of just thousands of small kills. Becoming this horrific amalgamation of everyone they've slain. Yeah! 
scientific! What? No! What? Oh, that is bullshit! Fuck you, video game! <laughs> So proud of myself. I even started like I was I was about to say first time every time. The game had other ideas. Okay. I don't know what you talk about numbers. Confidence is a surefire path to victory with no downsides. That's the quote from Darkest Dungeon. Overconfidence. It's a really good idea. See that I remember him saying that. D circuit just showing up just to just to laugh at my grand failings. I'm trying. Yeah, well, because of the bleep bloops, you know, it's not like someone suddenly starts belting out Latin in my ear. I can't. I can't always know. I'm sorry, little cobalt. It's nothing personal, mate. Did not judge. I will fucking kill you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what noise that was that just came out of me there. It was meant to be. I can't believe you've done this. I'll kill you. Um, as thrown through about five effects pedals. Oh, I'm mad. I'm demon sword mad. I should leave someone else a note message that says beware slot three or beware the third. Honestly, a little quicker if I just... Excuse me. Ex fucking excuse me. I needed that health. I have to fight a fucking boss. You piece of shit. Alright. Let's just see if there's anything else we've got that does a healing. Slowly regenerates health. Alright. Green herbs. Uh, that's a trail marker. Increases discovery. Aggro range. Restore health and status. Apply source to a weapon. Yeah, it's like, as we come round this corner here... And it just goes into, like, full... Full 3D. So this is the point where I should realise I'm in trouble. Okay, okay. Oh, can't place a message right here. Bastards. Here we do. smart. Not wasting resources. Shit. 
Alright, have some salad. It's good for you. Hey kids! Wanna see a dead body? Alright, so one swing, two swing, red swing, blue swing! Go. All right, now it's Grinder Mark Two. Wink. Remix. Oh, you little shit! Oh, you little bastards joke! I'm, ha I'm, gonna I'm having so many drugs. What's for dinner is the good kush, my friends. Oh, you stepped on my feet! Oh, this little... So I need to murder the little gobshites first. I can't handle that boss with the ads. Alright, you've got this. You've got this, little dude. You've got this. And Blue Abomination, a good evening to you. Watto and welcome, friend. How goes it? Uh, I'm getting my ass handed to me by a player character. How are you? There we go. See that? That, my friends, was deft footwork. Affect those boxes. All right. So there's no time to heal in that second, second, in that yeah, that second form, until I clear out all of the the wee baboos who look like level one World of Warcraft characters. Shit. So I'm gonna murder the little shits whilst also dodging big, angry, and corpsey. Here we to to get hit <laughs> heroes. Alright, so if I can get the, the little shits together, that sweep wipes them out. Hello! And seriously, that thing is nightmare fuel. And then there's the big jump. Oh, it's supposed to fight the other guy. Oh no! Decided to swap it around, huh? No, I'm getting cocky, I'm getting cocky! No! Don't get greedy. Alright, now where do those little shits show up from? Shield up. Where are the little bastards? All 
Right, so I've just got to listen for the- OW! Jump. Roll! Dodge, 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 dodge! <laughs> My face! It's the only face I've got! Ninja stars! Ninja stars! Ninja stars! Don't you dare have a fifth form! Yes! Get fucked in a bin bag. Unta, 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 uh, unta, uh, unta, uh. Finished them. I do like that. Uh, also, pray slaughtered. But I guess that's what the other friend I was talking about with this thing. Pure strength. Uh, the lethargic. We once. We were once dis. Distinct weapons. Our heroes grouping up beside the tavern's hearth. We know where that is. Harpist of Char. Alright, so for the moment it's not stronger, but uh, if we can get it Sorted, then jobs are good. Rage! Good work, friend. We watch how we hate hero. Why? We we. Ah, but we were friends. D so absolutely masterfully done. I can't believe I was able to beat that boss the first time without even trying. Like, uh, frankly, it's amazing. It's it's really hard being so good at video games all the time. It really is. Not a lot of people know that. Try patience. Wow. Owen Wilson style. Wow. Giving everybody good ratings because that's what friends do. Yeah, Agonetiki, it's almost entirely unbelievable that I'm... <laughs> stick figure ground they who grind. This does not fit my narrative. What are you gonna do? Doesn't fit your narrative. What are you gonna what are you gonna do about it? I right, one, I'm gonna go spend my points. Two, I'm gonna see how the travel system works, because I actually haven't used it. I forget where we set our tether. Uh, return icon. Uh, the grinder's withered icon. Uh, increases heroic icon uses. Blech. Is that good? Is that bad? Shit, let's see, let's see what it does. Return this icon to the world. Your heroic icon has gained another use. Yes, I entirely understand that. Hang on. There we go. I keep forgetting that luck unlocks abilities, which is really feckin' useful. Uh... So tether set, tether warp. Let's see where this takes us. <laughs> it might be a chat and backtrack a clock if I affect this up. This should be the blacksmith outside of the mines. Fingers crossed. Nope, I fucked up. I have fucked up now.
<laughs> so to activate the new boss weapon, Gnostic Guy's heart is constricted. Okay, still barely any memory, but it's slightly better now. Uh, oh, and uh, Agonanarchy, you were spot on. It's Estus. The good old uh, delicious Fanta of healing. So I've got to murder my way back to the tavern to unlock the boss weapon to see if that's better than what we have. Feck off, mate. And then... Shit. I don't know if there's anything else we unlocked. Now, on the plus side, we should be able to take the, um, the ladder up, so it's not going to take us too long. We've got most of the shortcuts unlocked. But... These poor souls. They were never meant to fight one such as I. Yeah, go on. Run off and tell your mates. I got nowhere else to be. Ah! Uh. Damn, this game's good. Okay, so five of your relics can be remembered ahead. That was just rude. Okay, so we just got to keep keep. Uh, we got to keep checking our inventory to see if anything starts uh, vibrating again. And we can hit up the shop, buy some of the other stuff. Because again, for those of you who might have joined us late, there's kind of a meta leveling system in this. So you level by the standard thing, you know. Instead of souls, it's memory. But you pour, you take those points, you pour them into the good stuff. But one of the other additional leveling systems is by the more of the weapons that you unlock, the more that the weapons remember themselves, uh, the more that gives you in kind of like overall like meta boosts. It's real fucking cool. All right, two items that can be remembered by the rem by the market. All right. So back down the road, there was five. All right. I forgot that I uh, rested, so I just re-unlocked everything. So, listen here, you wibbly wobbly nonsense. What have you got for us? Oh, okay. So, there's still areas we can't go to. Okay. Right, let's head to the pool. I'm the last hero of Nostra Gaia. It does annoy me that um, the best shield for what I'm doing currently is the cult shield. But thankfully not too, too many of the, uh, the usual miscreants are here to remind me of my failings. Well, I didn't know he could do that. Ninja Star! And sadly, once again, we cannot open the just an unassuming and insignificant house. 
Sometimes I feel this game is actively heckling me. And I appreciate it. Knowing my luck of late, my luck and the fact that I keep uh, been repeatedly playing like a bit of a dingleberry. Um, I do think the tether system's interesting. That rather than being like a quick travel system, you have to choose one place that you want to be able to like quick return to. Uh, oh, it was across the road, wasn't it? The the ladder up. Oh, shut up. I want somebody else. How do you think this is going to go for you all? Oh, look at Mr. I've got a shield that is apparently special. Not so special now, are you? Pixels for days. Yeah, we already unlocked stuff in here. That's what you sound like. I'm trying to unlock stuff. I'm so sorry, friends. You know, you know how it is being in this part of town. Like people just yelling shit at you. So it's, frankly, it's just it's stuff puddings. More than a little sad. <laughs> but yeah, fellas, your this is the the cultist's shield. Although the memory on it's quite sweet. You know, it's one of the things that I do really enjoy about... Um, fix, sweep, stab. Interesting. And it's one of the things that I'm really enjoying about this game is how, at least prior to whatever the corruption was, like this was a functioning game world. We're all like the the people had like uh, the people would pretend to be kidnapped and the cultists would run around being like oh oh we we're, we're going to get you oh and every people were like no please don't get me I'm an innocent civilian wink okay apparently I can stand on those guys which for billboards is impressive. Bam, bam, bam. Sorry, and I'm still legitimately I I mean the design makes my skin crawl, but conceptually the grinder feckin' brilliant idea for a boss. I kind of like money no question um like anything potential sorry anything is possible money no question i think i would have liked to have spent some more time seeing those particular entities and how they interact in the world now while it wasn't a particularly brilliant game uh shadows of the damned uh did a great job in all right so we should be able to activate this Beside the tavern's hearth. Alright, so we're in the tavern. There we go. And by the hearth so we can remember it. Okay. An incomparable mass of amalgam of legendary treasures sought by those who grind. So this is literally a weapon of all the loot you get from grinding melded together. All right, after all of the protagonists from these self-contained stories had been exhausted, our heroes spawned in droves. They were not what Nostagaia had been imagined for, but they were still closer to the heroes than the Neros who came after. The grind was fun at first. Our wielders fell upon the mines as early quests dictated, but more and more loot. Um, okay, as early quest dictated. But as they sw uh, swung us for more and more loot, 
we felt them drifting into an autonomous synchronization. The grind was usurping the fun. Yo! This game's not pulling any punches! The pipe layer and his lieutenants acknowledged the terrible power, but rebuffed our masters as willless rabid beasts. By the time we smashed the extraction operations of the consumer, we had already amalgamated. No one sane entered the depths after that. The domain of the unstoppable slave with an unfulfilled need. Shit. And I think that's more powerful than what we're wielding right now. Yeah. Even with no upgrades. Yeah, check it out. So yeah, it's a fucking... There's like knockoff Frostmourne in there. Knockoff Ragger's Hammer. I think that's meant to be knockoff um, Ashbringer. Hey, so when was the last time you got called out by a video game this hard? When the grind usurped the fun. Uh, I have... Alright, come on kids, I need to chest out my new power. Alright, so let's see what the overhead smash is. Woo! That's fun. Alright, so we've got swing. So we've got bonk. Super bonk. And then in two-handed mode, we've got swing, big swing. Alright, so it's kind of the opposite of what we've been doing. Whereas the sword was one-handed swings, this is two-handed. And it was two-handed down smash. Alright, cool. I get it. I get it. Simple. And we can pay to have this upgraded. I guess the question will be where we go from now. Oh, though I am going to be thinking about, like, what the effects of, like, an MMO grind would do to, to the reality of. Like, in a world where the heroes are worshipped, even when they're the people you're fighting against, that they become these, these legends. Like, someone like a grinder would be so disheartening. You know... You and the townsfolk are all part of this, like, intricate society designed to create fun and make sure that heroes get to be the most they can be. And then you encounter someone who does nothing but just take to the mines day in, day out. Fucking love this weapon design, though. It, it, this weapon design is literally what if every legendary weapon from uh, from World of Warcraft smashed together? Sorry, um, my. Apologies for going quiet for a second there. We're just kind of having a ponder on the whole concept of legendary weapons. The, originally, when World of Warcraft first dropped, legendary weapons were just that. The weapons of, of yore. They were, you know, legends of their time. Only achievable by a handful under extreme circumstances. Usually things that had big story hook elements or were referenced in previous games. And then as the series went on, legendaries be kind of became like the toppest of top tier. It switched from it being... Oh, uh, Fearless, this is absolutely evocative of Mogworld. But told from the perspective of a new player and with a narrator rather than the perspective of an NPC who can't die. But yeah. Um, but yeah, with... I can only really comment on World of Warcraft right now because... That was the last, like, fantasy MMO that I really threw myself at. After, wow, I was determined to play anything that was different. Which is how I got into EVE. That's another story. But yeah. When I was starting out, I was obsessed with the Corrupted Ashbringer. Not a legendary weapon, 
but a corrupted version of a once legendary weapon. And last time I checked in to actually play World of Warcraft, uh, every character class was given a an evolving legendary weapon all their own. Like, it was like Paladin Academy and everyone got an Ashbringer. And one of the forms was the corrupted Ashbringer. And I was like, wait, but hang on. And if you're wondering why I was so obsessed with that particular sword, it had a really neat uh, quirk that if you walked into one of the early baby dungeons with the corrupted Ashbringer in hand, it used to proc this whole cutscene. Everyone in the dungeon would be friendly to you. And when you walk towards the end, it would start what would have been like uh, a proper quest line about stuff. Uh, that was taken out and... Growl all you want, mate. I have every weapon. But yeah, um, sorry, and the reason why I started thinking about it, and I'd love to hear your uh, your thoughts and feels, friends, is because weapons that are legendary, legendary weapons, are thusly usually more because of narrative reasons than stat types. And when you have something like an MMO with an evolving power level, how do you maintain that legendary status? Uh, I mean, Destiny kind of finangles around it by calling them, I believe, exotics. Uh, and then limiting you to one armor piece and one weapon. Which is okay, but I don't know about you lot, but when I'm playing, like, um, raids or what have you, I usually have about five or six exotic weapons in my pockets, and I just swap them out as is needed. Um... Yeah, and Fearless, I think that came from uh, a change in direction that early World of Warcraft was probably looking to be more like a traditional MMO, where there were going to be long, lengthy, complex quest lines for specific classes. And, oh, the creepy thing's gone! Where are you, you sphere of weirdness? It was like a pink Pac-Man with a butt. It was unsettling. You'll miss nothing. Um, oh, I forgot to go shopping. Why am I Dingleberry? But yeah, it definitely felt like World of Warcraft had initially intended that some of the weapons would be these long, drawn-out storylines, elements like that. And they had one of those later on with, I think it was like the Ash... No, not the Ashbringer. It was... Oh, it was some icy sword hilt that propped a quest that got you doing a dungeon where you would then pull the sword out of a dragon's face. It was real cool. But... Oh, well, Fearless, have a lovely rest of your evening. And it's always good chatting with you. I just... I think about this a lot. Going back to our earlier conversation about ways in which we can enrich our friends' games. The idea of a weapon that is yours, named by you, styled by you in some way that can be found by others, I think is really cool. But the problem being, how do you balance that? How do you balance a weapon of legend in those kind of spaces. Sure as shit ain't easy. I, I know a, a few things. All right, can we... Uh, we can't at the moment. And we don't have any... Yeah. If you find another anvil, especially with a master smith, remember. Okay. Oh, sorry. Completely losing my train of thought there. Goodwill. But yeah, suffice it to say, it's it's something that I ponder a lot because. When you consider the significance, narratively, of some legendary weapons in... No, right way! Sorry! 
the significance of some legendary weapons in some storylines of certain games, and then the player can wield multiples of them. It's kind of... It's kind of like an unacknowledged... Bizarrity. It's like in Skyrim, where you are already head of the Mage's Guild and the greatest assassin in the world, and then you stumble back across the Thieves' Guild, and they're like, hey, we don't know you. I'm like, are you, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. We don't know you. We need you to just steal this jar of honey from this person's house. Right. Maybe you can't... But are you... Do you have a, a sight thing? Because I'm currently decked in... In Daedric armor. Which I crafted myself. And... These are my two Daedric lords. They come whenever I ask. Isn't that right, boys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you want me to steal... A jar of honey to prove that I'm... I can eat you. Not metaphorically, I could literally cook and eat you in this square. No one could stop me. Uh, Fallows, you were saying they like how Guild Wars 2 does the legendaries. Interesting. Um, it's more flashier than standard weapons. Got some background lore story. Uh, with only a minor stat boost from standard weapons. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Hookshot says they want to add um, a a hidden renown stat that affects conversations. I like that. Um, I know it was more a survival game, but in terms of renown, I always appreciated... Um, this is my thinking face. State of Decay 2... 2. Yes, because 3 got announced. 3's not out. Uh, in State of Decay 2, you have your kind of... Your renowned and your reputation. Reputation is how much people think you are worth helping. So people will give you free shit if you have renowned. Or more the idea of like, your renown is a number that you can spend. So if you go over to somebody and like, hey, I need a can of fuel. They'll be like, actually, yeah, you've helped out loads of people. You can have whatever the hell you want. Um, but then your uh, overall reputation is how well you are known, which gives you access to more stuff. The idea of, like, you wouldn't tell people about your secret booze stash if you didn't know them. Oh, and Orzine add, goes on to add that Guild Wars 2 legendaries are special in that A, you can switch the stats on a particular type at no cost, and B, you can change their look without using up cosmetic charges. Love it. You send the kobolds at me, and I've still got to do the thing. But, frankly, I'm disappointed. Oh no, Orzine, you have nothing to apologize for. I've, I've not put proper hours into Guild Wars 2. Um, it's just, I haven't had the chance. <laughs> They're gone! This is the hammer that just makes people disappear. It would be funny if it weren't so sad. Um, but no, I think that's a pretty elegant solution. Um, Diablo 3s is probably one of the, the worst in that you end up just rolling for legendaries and specific legendaries with specific stat bonuses. And I understand that it was an overhang from the... Uh, the open marketplace where there was going to be more of a... Alright, come on kids. It's murder time. Cool, way to make me feel guilty there. Next contestant on this, whack Agon Anarchy was just adding that Guild Wars 2 is a delight, and if they had infinite time, it would be back on their list of things to spend time on. Ain't that the feckin' truth? Um, there is a distinct possibility you all will finally get, uh, will finally get me doing, um, 
Final Fantasy XIV, so that's likely my next one to foire into. No way, that's going to eat my time. How cute! It thought it was people. Oh, okay, so we haven't been through here yet. Alright, so I'm still squishy. Alright. Alright, kids, single file! Here we go, single file. Single file murder time! And he's gone! Although I have underestimated these nulls several times and they've made me regret that. Um. Uh, Orzine says they finished the Claw of the Khan U recently. I'm taking a short break from the game. Uh, understandable. It's very hard not to burn out on MMOs. And coming all the way from downtown, it's this guy! <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's no way I'm not using this weapon for a good long while. It's a club made of every weapon. I'm... I'm probably gonna find out... Ow! Not cool. I'm probably gonna find out that I somehow time travel suggested this weapon to the dev team. And like, I'm somehow tangentially involved. But yeah, I don't have a solution for it right now, friends. Again, there are a few games that have done the custom weapons elements with, like, legendary stuff. The one I probably had the most fun with was Way of the Samurai 3. Because it let you make ridiculous weapons. And the, the move set was separate from the design, which I thought was really cool. So, you know... Uh, I know we talked about it earlier, but the uh, the system that came from Fable 3 was meant to be more of an organic system. Your legendary weapon was based off of uh, whatever you've done. So, like, if you killed a bunch of wolves, it would take on, uh, like, a wolf hilt or something along those lines. If you had, I don't know, stabbed a bunch of skeletons, it got a skeleton handle... Um, the problem was is that most people used it off the bat because it was really cool, and sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not dropping into that. That's what I was trying to avoid. Um, the problem with that weapon system was that most people used it from the get-go, so everyone had the same wolf skeleton combo because those were the earliest enemies that you would encounter, meaning that you didn't really get a cool custom weapon at all. You just... Oh. Hello! How did you survive that? Alright, alright. Time to squish gnolls again, I guess. Alright, I have... Thankfully, there's a save point right around here. I've got to focus, otherwise I'm about to get mighted. Okay, Orzine, when you say I'm about to take a sensu bean or two, is that your own personal reference to edibles? And if so, that is the coolest thing I have heard in so long. No! You little shit! I can't. It's like falling on your own sword. <sighs> uh, so Avrik was adding that when something that's super rare becomes commonplace, it loses its weight. Absolutely. 
you know, when you're in Ogremar and there's five different uh, feckin' Thunder Fury, blessed of the what's it's kicking around, you know, two Ragus Hammer and like eight Frost Morns, it doesn't quite have the same. Oh no, it wasn't Frost Morn, it was the Frost Axe thing, I forget. Um, okay, so Avric, I promise I'm not just being contrarian on this. I would say the Titans in EVE Online were very special, but the difference with Titans is that they're such an undertaking not only to acquire, but also to keep and maintain. They are only viable to big active groups operating like in, god, I mean in Nullsec. You can't take them through wormholes if I remember correctly. And I wonder if you could build one in a wormhole. That'd be sweet. Uh, sorry. But you can't uh, take them into high sec. You can't just dunk on other people with this massive, massive piece of hardware. You've got to actually plan and maintain it. Otherwise, you lose it. But the thing with, like, Ragus Hammer... Uh, sorry, the Hammer of Ragnaros. Uh, it was a weapon that I was and still am obsessed with. Uh, I never got it in-game. I was slowly hoarding all the materials for it, but, you know, as gold became more and more expensive in-game, it became harder and harder to get. And I still hadn't gotten the eye of Ragnaros, so... Although, here's the thing. I would solo grind uh, Blackrock Deep or whatever Ragus's uh, initially 40-man raid was. I would solo that repeatedly on weekends. Okay, I really... I've really got to stop paying attention now. Because there's like 11,000 souls on the line here. Um, yeah, I would repeatedly run that same feckin' raid by myself again and again and again. Trying to get materials to build this thing. Trying to get feckin' that one rare drop. I got both the braces for Thunder Fury in one run. In one run! An unspeakable act of luck. But... Feckin' yo! But yeah. So again, Avric, I, I, I hope I wasn't just sounding like I'm being a contrarian knob-end about Titans. But they have something special to them, you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, the the super duper rare swords. Knife. Knife again. Nice to see you. Knifely done. said knife one, brother. You know what? Yeah, you don't even deserve to get smashed with my weapon. Ooh. Parable of balance. Well, that's fascinating. Used for weapon upgrades. Um, this can inspire confidence with a smith to reforge the weapon. Uh, moderately increasing strength and dexterity scaling. That means more murder. I'm gonna do some bullshit later. Yeah, Avric, it is a fascinating design challenge. And the thing is, it's unlikely that any of us will work on an MMO at a decision-making level. So it's a fun little exercise we can talk about because it's super low stakes, like, theory crafting, right? We're just making our own cute little GD GDD of Moida. This is like super deadly uh, gnome golf. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's the question is like, how do you create and balance legendary weapons in a strange world? And can you do it in such a way that the player could be the one to forge that legacy? Because like weapons like Wabberjack and stuff like that were always fun in um, Skyrim. Because of the weirdness that it would bring forth. And especially 
because of its wonderful concept, it inspired a lot of people to do some wonderfully weird mods with it. Um, but I don't remember any of the other legendary weapons from Skyrim. I think there was a sun sword that I looked at for two seconds and went, that's neat. Um... For the most part, um, yeah, I I had a one-handed sword that was brutal, but hi, my name's Will, and I've got two Daedric Lords that work for me whenever I fucking tell them. <laughs> like, frankly, I felt more like a Pokemon trainer playing Skyrim than I did a, a warrior of ancient legend. So much so, in fact, that once I leveled up everything for summoning and, like, as basically a summoner battle mage... I started working on stealth, uh, stealth bows because I thought that would be more challenging. Not realizing, of course, that the stealth bow system uh, is incredibly broken. Oh, Mateus Razor and the Black Sword that apparently thirsted for battle. Now, one of the best legendary weapons in a game... Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It was the legendary gun from Borderlands 2 that was incredibly powerful and you could get access to it like early to mid game, but it was fucking obnoxious. And like, I don't know how many uh, people have seen uh, or read all of Soul Eater, but it was basically Excalibur as a gun. Our mess is bigger. And I loved that. It was just such a wonderful concept that the way you balance something that's incredibly powerful is by making it fucking obnoxious. Alright, I'm just gonna go get me souls back. Stop being a cocky little shit. Uh, and then we'll try exploring a little bit. Now, fool! It's three hour story time! I just, I loved that as a concept. Balancing power with obnoxiousness. But that's something you can only take so far. Like, there are loads of things you should do to your player during an experience, but being obnoxious never works as well as it's planned. The talking gun from the newest, um, oh, what are they called? It's not Squanch. Um, Justin Rollins' uh, games operation thing. Lucky! Critical hit! So many souls, so many souls. Oh, it's going to block away again, so you're going to get Duke into the face. Hadouken! See, that's what I should have done the first time. Thank you all for listening to my uh, story time so I could focus on not getting my face beaten in with a, with a club. Alright, so we can continue down the mines that way. And there's some places to check behind me. But I am absolutely going to go spend this buttload of uh, memories that we have. Not souls. Memories. Very clear. Uh, so yeah, so Falazir Skyrim does have legendary weapons. Um, usually unique stuff tied to the different gods and whatnot. And they're real cool. Um, if you haven't done... If you haven't done the drinking contest in Skyrim, I won't spoil it for you. But that comes with a wabberjack at the end. Okay.
Uh, Abrik says, uh, what's interesting that, in fact, historical weapons tend to have lineage. Someone else had uh, Glam Ring before it was lost and Gandalf found it. We need to find weapons that other players had lost, but very tricky and impractical to implement. Yes. Now, what you could do, what you could do is have it so it is the user's choice. The idea that there is a situation or a mechanic where you actively give up weapons and someone somewhere is going to is, is going to get that legacy. We've seen it a little bit with, weirdly, CSGO. Um, the idea that uh, stat trap weapons take the, the data from their previous person or the stickers implemented and stuff like that. Like, there is potentially a way where you could hand that forward, which would be very feckin' cool. How you would incentivize that and not let it be now patrolling? That is for... That is for mines uh, more comprehensible than my own to come up with. Okay, today at very least. But it's something that I've always loved. Um, back in Ultima Online, a mastercrafted weapon would have the name of its blacksmith engaged on, uh, engaged on it. Engraved on it. And I feckin' love that as a feature. Alright, so it's this way to new new stuff. But there's also some spooky weird shit back this way, which I'm gonna go check out. Shit. Alright, well, it was a good idea. It did not work. It did not work. And also, Avrik, I think that's one of the reasons why most of the time those kind of like weapons of lineage tend to be story beats. You know. Not to, to pick on Game of Thrones, but like, you know, the whole concept of Valyrian steel being this like almost like magical MacGuffin tier weapon. And then being distributed and reforged into two new swords and stuff like that. Like. It builds some story points. And in games, you can often create that magical MacGuffin situation quite well. You know, the Stormbringer... Not Stormbringer. The big storm... Okay, the big sword in Dark Souls 3, what does Hadoukens? That thing. Having that for the giant's fight to level the playing field is pretty inspired. feel bad if this person wasn't going to use them to wreck our day. Oh, another parable of balance. Love it. Like it. Love it. Whew. The one I always find myself thinking about was um, Knights of the Old Republic. The idea that you can have lightsabers that do more damage. wasn't quite quick enough. I'm just deleting these poor guys. This isn't even a fight. This is a massacre. In the words of a green-faced... Uh, ooh! Primal kit. Let's have a look. Looks fancy. Primal rosum. Pixelated helm forged. Uh, for 2,000 memory, we can do that. Okay, so my hero spawned in the primordial cycles before an unhunky peer abandoned the way. Before a maiden uh, appreciated... Uh, apprenticed to a warlock. Before brothers were divided. Okay, 
before a, an unhunky peer abandoned the way, a maiden apprenticed to a warlock, and before brothers were divided. Hmm. This is a this is a story of a character that I don't understand, but it's definitely a triple A character. I'm thinking an Assassin's Creed because of the colors, but I'm not recognizing. Anyway, she braved Nostragaya with purpose and conviction, a promise in the darkness, a gift from the conscious almighty. In an age of rebirths, heroes took, our, uh, took the gauntlet to make our world better, spawning on those accomplishments of those who came before. They served something more meaningful than themselves, and it was beautiful. Uh, what things were, what they are, and what they might be is inseparable. Inevitably, the future becomes the past. Let's check out stats. I mean... It's a little heavier than what we've got. But it is the only, like, fanciest... Oh, it's... it's Okay, it's the heaviest armor available, aside from... I'm sorry. Maybe we can beefcake up the hands. No, that looks weird. All right, well we'll keep we'll keep looking. We'll keep looking. Uh, the fact is that those unlocks will still get us goodies, even if we're not using them. Oh yeah, okay. There's something fucking heinous down here, and for some reason my dumbass wants to fight it. And oh, it's locked. I was about to say. I keep forgetting that this has that meta narrative of like the NPCs have like coffee rooms and stuff they can hang out in before they became pixelated, before they lost their way. Uh, this reminds me massively of that awful, awful uh, beheaded demon fight in Sekiro, um, which I think I only beat the underwater demon. Like, what the shit is that? Oh, Toad, mate, you don't look so good. Spoiler, it's not Toad, it's not Toad, it's not Toad! God fucking damn it, I couldn't get away! What the shit is that? don't think I'm ready to fight that yet. I'm just going to write off those few uh, thousand souls and we're going to go the other way. For now. Oh. But yeah, I haven't come up with a, a good solution to players being able to craft their own weapons and have that be not just a small side element of construction, but like a solid chunk of the narrative. So I can't progress that way. And that's the way we came down from the boss. So I guess we go this way. Oh, I know. I knew you were going to do that. Such a butt. Oh, sorry. Now, I guess I was half saying that, like, yeah, back in Ultima Online... You would craft a sword, and if you were a master crafts blackman, it would be in it would be inscribed with your name on it. And I always thought that was so feckin' cool. Uh, the server I played on, there was like essentially one like famous blacksmith, which was the dude that well, I mean I shouldn't assume, the person was always on. And it didn't matter what you needed smithing, they got you. Plus, they were famous for the fact that if you gave them stuff for them to make something, as so long as you paid them, they wouldn't rip you off. Which was very rare in Ultima Online. Meep! We are in a category meep type situation. Repeat. This is a category oh, my face! Alright friends, I think I should admit defeat at this point. Uh, I blinked and realised we've been going for like... I mean, seven and a half hours stream-wise, six and a half hours in-game. 
and I am half telling you the same story about Ultima Online like three times. I think, I think this is a good time to bring our adventures to a close. And that's all right. Um, I haven't even plugged this game in hours. I've been so enraptured by it. Um, so friends, in case somehow I didn't like plug you, plug you into this title. Uh, this is the last hero of Nostragaia. Um, if it wasn't obvious, I'm having a fucking great time with it. And as as meta narrative titles go, it just slaps. Like, friends, you should absolutely consider picking up a copy of this for yourself because it's fucking great. <laughs> I will probably end up binging this by myself. There's something about how the main voiced character, the narrator, actively hates us. Oh, hey, D-Circuit. Thank you kindly for the follow. Um, tomorrow is going to be a very different game, but um, hopefully tomorrow I'll be a bit more coherent and we can chat about video games and whatever we want. Tonight I gotta build a Gundam. Not gonna paint it though, because it's smoky outside. <laughs> Don't actually know where this song was going. Actually, let me let me let me jump out of this one just to make sure everything's saved in the ilk. Uh, so I haven't even tried to see what uh, what or how co-op works. That's another Kettler monkeys. So Twigum, I still love that. Um, God, yeah. Here's me falling apart at the end of the show. Now I've stopped playing, it's like... Boring dude. <laughs> Look, this game slaps. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I don't know if I'll necessarily stream my whole playthrough of it. Because I kind of want it for me? Is that... That's a bit selfish, I know, but... Like, I kind of want to just quietly sit down. Grind for ten hours until I'm so swole it hurts. And then just beat the hot snot out of whatever that feckin' part toad, part monster was. Uh, Fearless, thank you kindly for the offer. Uh, I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> I, uh, I've, I'm, I'm getting close to eight hours today. And I'm trying not to push myself too, too hard. Yeah, Avrik, it was kind of... I'm at that stage stream-wise, where I can either play the game or talk to you lot, but not both, and I'd always rather talk with your good selves. All right, where am I? Where are my chocobo tunes? Give me some. Give me some smooth jams. Oh, thank you. What, oh, that looked interesting. It really I'm glad was. I was able to catch the last little bit of this stream. Hey, I mean, Lyris, the fact that you only caught this bit means that you haven't had uh, the early game stuff spoiled for you, where we get introduced to the narrator and stuff like that. So. I mean, I know, I. <laughs> if you let me, friends, I'll recommend you a brand new game every feckin' day. But I really stand by this one. This was everything I was hoping it would be. Yeah, some smooth jams. <sighs> and the thing is, we've only done one of the four bosses. So we've... This was the grinder that we killed. Someone who was the personification of early level MMO grinds. A person who lost their way and became so obsessed with the rhythm and monotony of acquisition that they lost sight of their goals. Even their magical weapon was an amalgamation of everything they hoarded throughout their time grinding. Now I'm thinking like, okay, the pipe layer, lol, how funny is that? Because it's a joke about laying pipe. But what is it actually a deconstruction of? Will they be a deconstruction of like toxic gamers and their phallic obsessions? Or is it something more insidious? I have a feeling that all four of the main bosses are going to be in some regard a meditation on us and how we game. There's so much to get into this. Maybe, okay, if it, uh, maybe we've got to keep going with this. I'll tell you what, we'll see about doing another day next Wednesday, and if y'all don't want to see it after that, then that's fine. Yeah. 
And Lara, sorry, you can tell I'm exhausted because I didn't say a proper thank you for the 200s and the bit. Oh yeah, Stanley Parable meets Dark Souls is a fair assumption of this game. Oh, and yeah, I'm going to throw credits in in just a second, but... It's lovely to encounter a game at a convention, wait for it, finally get hands on with it, and it turns out to be as good as you hoped, you know? It also helps that it plays like a fucking great Soulsian title. I really appreciate that. Because we did, uh, was it Thymera? Thymeria? I might just be making words up right now. Uh, where was it? It was the one where you played as, like, Ninja Plague Doctor. There was, like, a little bit Sekiro, a little bit Soulsian, all blended up in this strange mass. And that was good. I don't think anyone who plays through that's going to have a bad time, but it didn't have any sense of who or what it was from what I played. Now, there was a theory that I had, which is that it is, in fact, taking place in dreams. It was, like, reconstructing someone's plague-riddled mind. And I was like, okay, that might be kind of cool. But... It never gave us enough grounding to understand our world. Whereas Nostra Gaia not only introduces you to the world very succinctly, but lets you know the world does not like you. At all. <laughs> That's feckin' powerful. Uh, Neostra Thymisa it was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Neostra Do, thank you for at least one of us having the feckin' uh, the werewolf. And that was a good game. It deserves its very positive rating, but this is just that little bit more. And from what I've seen of Steel Rising, that one feels like someone really wanted to make Bloodborne again and went for the kind of like the French Revolution automaton vibe. Again, great, but the sense of identity. God. All right, I promise we won't get talking about Bloodborne, but... Bloodborne does such a good job of setting the scene in Yharnam like you wouldn't believe. And friends, there is a very good chance that we will be doing some Bloodborne next month. Just, just gonna put that out there. Just gonna put that out there. Next month may involve Bloodborne and Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> It's going to be a good one. Right. Um, a lot of you have thrown in bits throughout the day. There have been some gifted subs and some good conversations. So I need to say thank you before I throw you to whomst ever is rocking it on this Twitch.television. I mean, Neo Shadow, I love Bloodborne as well. And I've been waiting for an excuse to go back. I'm going to get that big sword that turns into a bigger sword again. And I'm going to have a feckin' great time with it. It is nearly 8 o'clock at night. Why am I still drinking from my coffee cup? I'm gonna pay for that later. Right. And whoever put late dino lost flowers, you feckin' legend. Sorry. Multi-track drifty potato. Right. Uh, once again, friends, I do need to say a massive thank you to you all. I... I'm in a very unique position, both personally and professionally. I love doing this. And I am reminded when I go and hang out with my game dev friends, how much I fucking love this. So thank you, because this only exists because of you lot. So today I would like to thank Bacon Avenger, Favor6, Akira Zero, Mega Boss, Wolfcrad, Lyris Dragon, Quasimoto, Pun Spectre, a Saturday Green Fire! I don't know why I always do that. Uh, Vanderbeast and Shadows of Life. Bits are still one of the biggest, biggest things that keep this place afloat. So thank you. Your moderator today was Caffeine Rhymes and Moose, but we definitely saw Lizzie Tipau. And to D Circuit, Forsaken Stranger, Pope Griffin, uh, Mean Machine Dean, and Forsaken. Um, I hope we get to hang out and chat some more. Like, it's always cool to meet new people. And if you'll let me, I will talk your ear off about video games. Uh, to Favor Six, Forsaken, uh, Lord Raiden, Shadows of Life, Pope Griffin, Rhymes with Moose, Snuggly Burke. I miss Snuggly? Fuck! I hope I said thank you. Uh, Akira Zero and Rainier, whether you were hunted by House Carl or Summon yourself, you feckin' legend. And Mean Machine Dean, not only thank you for bringing in a raid, which is a big old compliment, but. <laughs> 
Proud of yourself, Lyris. You proud of that? <laughs> Feckin' terrors. Not only do I want to say thank you to Mean Machine Dean for bringing it a raid, but also, by crazy random happenstance, reintroducing me to a friendo from my old... From, from areas I used to frequent long before I was even in video games. So... Feckin' lovely. Right! Let me cast my eyes into Twitch.Television. Oh, don't make me choose. Alright, you know what? There are too many cool friendos all kicking it all at once. So go... Find some peeps. Um... <laughs> go spread some love on this. Twitch.televisione. Um, right. I'm going to go stick my face under a tap for two seconds. Uh, remember how to be a human. And then I'm going to start uh, clipping and putting a Gandom together. Because I've seen the quality of some of the entries for the Gundam contest. And I'm not ready! <laughs> so... Friends, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we may be doing Eternal Threads, but if you want, we can swap out to return to Infra, which is a game we were playing last week. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Have an excellent rest of your evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, have a good night, friends. Harper